Yo. I got distracted there a little bit. I saw the dragon helm on Reddit. How do I get it? You don't. It's gone from the game already. Nah, you gotta do the gotta do the festival stuff. You have to be festive. That seems pretty good. Anyway, gamers. Um What are we doing? I don't know. I don't know what we're doing. You know, we're gaming, that's for sure. We are definitely doing that. I love salad. Honestly, it's a, a good thing to love. Nothing wrong with a little bit of salad. But anyway, here we are. You know, I'm, I'm kind of done with the, the leech investigation. Um, you know, we were the leeches the entire time. It's a humorous stream title there. That's what we've got. But um, yeah, in my opinion, not really anything. It, it's a closed case. You know, it's over. Uh, leeches, irrelevant. AFK farmers, also irrelevant at the same time. It's time to move on. Time to move on to the, uh, the next meme. The only leeches are people who don't see C in pugs. Yeah, I think that, um, I don't know why people don't do that. You know, they, because I, I've seen you talking about this a fair bit in, in my Discord, Nike, and it certainly is true. There is a lack of CC in pugs. It's one of the things that, I don't know. I don't know why people are so lost on it, um, to be honest. Why they don't use their CC abilities, uh, to be honest. Uh, they don't understand the value of CC. But, I mean, how can you not understand the value of CC? If you... It, it, it's... It's unbearably obvious. I feel like there's no way you can miss that. It's just, you know, it's unfathomable, even. Yeah. My peepos uh, today failed CC on Ceres three times. Well, I mean, I guess that's unfortunate, because I guess that it doesn't just, like, reset the boss's health if you fail. So surely people learn. I feel like Ceres is a good boss to, you know, to educate people on that, at least. Yeah. Interesting. I don't agree that it's obvious to a new player. I mean, how, how is it not? Like, if you don't break the bar, you lose. And if you CC the mob, it can't even attack you. I feel like if, if new players aren't capable of grasping that, then honestly, there's no hope. And all there, there's just no way. There's no way to, to salvage that. Yeah. At that point, it's completely over. Let's see what we got. We have a Ceres. The Virtuoso essentially didn't CC. Okay. Um, interesting. So, let's see. All break bar. Let's see. We're... <laughs> What the fuck? What did nobody is he seeing actually? So the Virtuoso did 250, the Berserker 900, so that's a couple of headbutts, I guess. The Firebrand 1000, I guess that's one sanctuary. 1050 is exactly one sanctuary, so maybe that's what they were using. The Hollow 632, okay. Um, then we have the Bladesworn 432. We have the other, that is, that is, that is, what is that? 464 on Herald. That is not weird. Wait, Reaper? 150? That is insane, actually. Although, well, the Elite Shout doesn't show up, but they were probably using Golem, so that doesn't count. Tempest 100. Yeah, Tempest CC is actually a bit meh, to be honest. Uh, and then Firebrand 900 as well. I mean, there's not really a lot going on here. Yeah. It's uh, not exactly ideal. A little bit unfortunate. Uh, check the last phase. Okay, here we go. Phase three. Boom. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Zero. This is so interesting. Like, some people are just not using any CC. Like, literally zero CC. That's quite interesting, actually. I have a crush on you. I mean, are you the second boss in Dark Art Thicket? Like, uh, that sounds, uh, sounds good. Moa told it doesn't say break bar damage. That is true. Um, although, wait, doesn't it actually say that it does? Doesn't it? Doesn't it actually do that? I didn't. Does it not show that? I think they made it so it does. No, I'm actually gonna check. Hang on, I'm on my way because I'm pretty sure that they actually modified it so it does now. 
but I can't actually remember. I have no recollection. Uh, I thought it said something about doing extra damage to defiant enemies. Ah, uh, yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah, they... It, uh, nope, it, uh, I, it, it does, it does, it does. It says, transform your target into a mower bird. Defiant foes will have their defiant bar reduced instead. That is what it says. Yes, I am correct. Look. So, it, it doesn't say exactly how much. I guess technically the duration here is saying that. It, six seconds, meaning six seconds of CC or defiance bar reduction. So, not the clearest uh, tooltip in the universe. But to be fair, this was something that actually was a nice modification with End of Dragons when they added all the CC numbers to it. It's actually really interesting. But you know what's really funny about this, guys? This is fascinating. And, and um, really old Guild Wars 2 players will know about this. Um, ArenaNet have had like the CC tooltips for ages they just didn't add them to the live game they had them on the test client their their test client for ages but they simply didn't um add it to the live game it would show up in live streams when they do demos and previews and stuff uh but it just it, it wasn't in the in the the real guild wars People think my DPS uh, is enough until it's not. Well, I mean, DPS is pretty good, so I guess I can forgive them for thinking that, I suppose. Not too bad. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what happens. I don't know what... Uh, I don't really know what goes wrong here. I definitely feel like a lot of... Um, a lot of new players really struggle to learn the game. I, I do think a big part of it is because there aren't enough good people in public groups. Um, and and look, like back in the day, guys, in when um when raids came out back in Veil vale Guardian times, you would join pugs and you'd see QT members, SC members, fucking oh what was it? It was like IVT members, ES members, HP members. You'd see these players a lot, and you'd see them in all areas of the game. You'd see really good dungeon pugs all over the t all over the place. R you know, very good raid pugs, all this kind of good stuff. Um. And you'd have good fractal pugs as well. All this kind of stuff. These days, that just is not as common anymore. I think that's like a really big thing um, that's kind of... That it prevents us. I think um, knowledge transference is actually quite bad in Guild Wars 2 right now. Which I think it actually really sucks. Like, I'm not even like memeing the game. I'm saying this is actually kind of a feels bad. Oh, this is, this is bad, isn't it? Fucking hell. Fortunately, I was able to hit the F1 key and survive. Yeah. Soul Beast, man. But yeah, knowledge transference is very, very low. So I think a lot of um, new players end up in this situation where they don't really have anyone to learn from. They don't really ever ever see good players in the wild. It's Because, it, it, look, it's very uncommon to see good people in pugs. I think um, uh, the, it's only like... I think CND still pugs a fair bit, actually. I have seen them, actually, in Strike CM pugs and stuff like that. But you very rarely see good pugs. Very rarely. Uh, whereas it used to be extremely commonplace. They don't know what to learn anyway. I actually disagree with that. Um, I don't think that's the case at all. I think uh, you'll find. I think you'll find actually that new players are actually the most likely to learn out of anyone. Like the the. I, I actually think new players really get uh, tarred unfairly here. Um, people think that. Uh, it's new players who don't want to learn, but actually it's veteran players who don't want to learn. You know, all the crybabies who say, oh, you're gatekeeping me. That's not a new player. Oh, no, 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 no. That's a Guild Wars 2 player who's been around for years. That, it's not a new player. New players don't have that. Because bear in mind, new players are very likely either they've never played an MMO before or they've come from WoW, right? So they are go they're not going to, you know, f from WoW or another game. They aren't going to assume that they're entitled to join your group as a new player. Like, that's not a new player mentality. That's a Guild Wars 2 veteran mentality. You've got to bear that in mind. Yeah. Yeah. New players are going to be some of the most likely to learn out of anyone in the player base. Yeah. Yes. Um, with, you know, you attempt to casual players and casual players do not do uh, instance content. I actually don't think it's anything to do with the sub fee. That's, well, I mean, it's kind of part of it, but I, I don't actually think so. Um, because that wasn't always the case. Man, you, you, oh my god. Th this, 
this is interesting because I. It's so weird to me how history can just not be real. Um, no, this isn't how it always was um, in the game. It really, really wasn't. Like, you know, it's really interesting. Like, if you go, um, I recall seeing this Reddit thread a very long time ago, multiple years ago, and people were talking about how Guild Wars 2 was originally a PvP game, and people outright denied this. And that, to me, is so interesting, because that is flat historical revisionism. Like, Guild Wars 2, from day one, absolutely was a PvP game. Like, 100%. Specifically structured PvP for esports and world versus world. Like that is what the original vision for the game was. It pivoted um, basically in the first, not even, it was realistically before the first expansion, but really big in the first expansion with HOT. But I feel like I'm seeing the same thing here as well. Like the, the idea that Guild Wars 2 was always this kind of meme, hyper casual, zero effort, nobody even tries to learn game. It's, it's just wrong it, it, it's it's incorrect like it's it's there's no other word for it it's ahistorical um it's not how it was um but yeah it's, it's really interesting to me like how how the past gets lost to be honest yeah. and they left it to die yeah until guild wars 2 shut down you know i had a guy come in chat yesterday and they said what's up with guild wars 2 and i did start i, I did say the game is shutting down and they actually believed me, uh, which I did find funny. Do not worry, though, my friends. I, I did uh, let them know that the game was not shutting down. Uh, this is not a meme question. I've just been checked out. Did they give them an alliance in the world versus world? Alliances, yes. Looks like that's not really on the cards anymore. They're going with world restructuring instead. That is this concept of um, basically instead of being attached to your server in world versus world, you're going to be attached to your guild instead, which kind of lowers the barrier to entry for joining a world versus world uh, group without having to pay for transfers and stuff like that. But yeah, the alliance system, that's probably not on the cards. Um... In my opinion, not the end of the world. Alliances was a bit redundant, given that the cap was 500 and the guild's cap is 500, so a little bit pointless. The only thing that really sucks is it looks like we're not going to be getting like a proper competitive architecture um, for World vs. World, which actually is a bit of a feels bad, man. It looks like it's just going to be same old, same old, but you've got guilds instead of servers, which I think actually will be a substantial improvement to the gameplay and the systems of World vs. World. However, I think it does still leave World vs. World very very sorely lacking some kind of competitive objective um, for players to actually care about um, when they're uh, playing the game mode. What exactly is a new player? A completely fresh player? Yeah, completely fresh player. Yeah, for sure. Completely fresh player. And I don't think there are very many completely fresh players who are the kind of loser um, who isn't going to learn. I, I don't think so, actually, no. Uh, and by the way, this is not just a criticism of Guild Wars 2 players. If you actually look, uh, and I imagine this is a very well-known psychological phenomenon, people who are new to something have like a bendy, malleable mind. It's the people who are veterans and ingrained. They're the guys who won't change their mind. Because, I mean, ultimately, what, what would be the, the word for this? It's, it's not exactly the sunk cost fallacy, but it's like... Admitting that you're wrong after you've committed for such a long time is pain, uh, to be honest. Um, I always tell this story because it does kind of give me a little bit of a chuckle. But I, I was, um, one guy a very long time ago asked me for some help in PvP, right? This guy was a big veteran, 4,000 hours in the game, 5,000 hours in the game. And he asked me for help in 1v1s, right? And we did some 1v1s, did a bit of practice uh, in PvP, uh, and I was able to kill him within about 5 to 10 seconds uh, every single time. And unironically, like 5, 10 seconds, dead, over. Um, and it was like, oh man, like, you know, th this is crazy, this, this is absolutely wild. Um, and... And he was like, oh, well, you know, like, I guess it's like a really hard matchup. And I was like, no, 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 it's actually perfectly winnable. And then I dueled another player who was really good. I brought in a friend and we did some 1v1s and it was some good duels, right? Like, you know, they went pretty back and forth. And 
this guy who had 4,000 hours in the game had this epiphany. He was like, oh my god, I've got 4k hours and I'm terrible at the game. I can't handle this. Quit the game on the spot. Broke. Psychologically destroyed. Quit instantly. Uh, never saw him again in game. Ever. And that's why people don't want to admit that they're wrong. Because that realization is, uh, it's pretty rough, to be honest, right? Like, it's, um, it's not good. Because, yeah, that this guy pretty much couldn't handle, um, that it was, uh, it was, it, this guy was that bad. Yeah. Was your friend Summit? Oh, you know, people, I, I hate it when people bring up Summit like this, okay? This is, this is cancer. Like, this is, this is really annoying. Um, because people always say Summit quit because he was bad, okay? This is not true, okay? Um, <sighs> you know, this has got to stop, guys. I, I fucking hate you, okay? N <sighs> Summit was looking for a casual game that he could just kind of get in there and blast, you know, play competitively, and then move on to something else. He had that impression of Guild Wars 2, okay? Because that is kind of how the game presents. But it turns out the game is actually pretty hard to get good at, right? Uh, and there's, there's a lot of depth to the game. He thought, he thought Guild Wars 2 was a fucking mobile game, okay? Like, that's what he thought. He, he, he thought, um, you know, he, he, he thought it was a, a mobile game, basically. And it's not, right? It's not a mobile game. Um, and also, this thing has got to stop. This thing of saying, like, being very derisive of anyone who doesn't stick with the game is some of the most cringe, cult-like shit ever. It happened with Stay Safe, and it happened with Summit, and I know it's not a lot of people, it's a minority, but that minority of people makes everyone else who plays Guild Wars 2 look like a complete desperate loser. And unfortunately, I'm unwilling to be marked. Uh, I'm unwilling to bear the mark, right, of that particular, uh, of that particular type, so I'm not having it. Yeah. That's how it is. How about that one guy who lost a Dagda recently? Well, to be fair, Peon's video was pretty dumb. Um, so, not, no, that's not the same thing. Peon's video was interesting to me, but for a different reason. Um, like, it, the, the way that he views games is very interesting. Uh, and the way that he interacts with MMOs is very interesting. Was there a spicy pee on take? I mean, it wasn't really a spicy take. It was just kind of a, 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 a I, don't, I don't know. I don't know what it was. I wouldn't call it spicy. I would call it like lazy uh, and misinformed. Yeah. Yeah. Cultists and stay safe chat. Wait, wait, wait. wait what We're playing it? multiple games. We're gonna play. We're gonna keep playing Guild Wars. I love Guild Wars. We're gonna play World of Warcraft. We're gonna keep raiding. We're gonna do Tier Five. We're gonna play New World. We're gonna play D Two Resurrected. If you oh wait, dude, you know this guy is an actual. Uh, it's this guy. This guy is. Who unhinged. don't like that? If that pisses you off, get the fuck out. I am so fucking sick. Maybe. <laughs> Jesus. A little fucking oh yeah, what, dude? The funny thing is, is that this guy is actually an unhinged lunatic. This is a fun one, guys. Check this out. I'm gonna tell this story because this one's really fun. Um, so this guy actually used to be kind of in, in my community a little bit, um, and, um, he, he, we, he was like a, 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 you know, a terrible, agonized peepo, right? He was like, I hate kill proof, I hate the LFG, and check this out, check this out, guys. Um, he would openly grief kill proof LFGs. He would say horrible things like people who should use kill proof need to suffer, basically. And, and honestly, just all kinds of like really abhorrent, unhinged, like genuinely deranged stuff. Okay, so this guy got perma banned, obviously, complete psycho. Um, and here's the good part, guys. Now here's where stuff gets interesting. This is where the content begins. Um, I'm actually, dude. dude. <laughs> I don't think I can find this guy's DMs because 
I haven't spoken to in ages. But on Discord, he comes back. You know the whole rat again guy? He comes back and like starts spewing lunatic stuff. Yeah, he, that's him. Um, but he sent me a bunch of messages on Discord saying that, oh, you know, you fool. You've activated me now. You, you banned me. I will now do everything in my power to sabotage everything that you love and hold dear, right? He unironically said this, guys. Oh my god. It, it is just, uh, it's big. Yeah. It is, uh, it's content. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the stay safe stuff, he, he definitely does have some political views. I would say, though, probably view the Discord stuff with a little bit of a grain of salt because Alex Central was involved in that, and Alex Central is basically the WoW equivalent of, um... <laughs> of of the guy who makes the PvP videos in Guild Wars 2. Uh, but... <laughs> So, uh, you know, like, yeah. But the alternate YouTube channel, it definitely is some pretty interesting stuff. Yeah. But that's how it goes. He didn't see me add that much power. I mean, no, he, of course he had nothing. He was just like some fucking random on the internet. Yeah. 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 <laughs> L.I. is KP is dead. First nail on the coffin for raid elitists. <laughs> that is true. Although, that's not true. Like, KP is, like, more active than ever. I feel like everyone's using KP. Although, actually, someone posted the... Someone posted the stats, actually, um, on KP.me. And it was actually kind of low. It was only, like, 60,000 accounts. Which is actually kind of surprising to me. I was expecting them to be actually a little bit more accounts than that on KP.me. But I think uh, uh, there's not much going on in A. The EU versus NA stats is really interesting. It's like 80% um, EU and 20% NA for KP.me. Which, I mean, to be honest, that says a lot. That What that probably means, um, we can infer there, is that the pug scene on EU is probably about five, uh, well, four times bigger um, than the NA pug scene. Because basically, th there's going to be like a pretty direct link between the activity of pugs um, and kp.me, right? Because kp.me is how you make pugs work, right? Uh, otherwise, you're going to use statics, right? And that's why NA uses statics. Um, so we can't really say so much about... Um, we can't really say as much about the NA raid scene in total. You know, it's, there's probably not as big of a disparity. But we can absolutely say that the NA pug scene is minuscule compared to the EU pug scene, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's how it is. And no, it doesn't mean that NA is 20% of the players. It, it just means the pug scene is uh, a lot smaller, right? Yeah. That is what that means. Also, Delta, tier 1, 61 billion years. I've seen zero groups that use KPM on NA Pug regularly. I don't think it's a population thing. I mean, I, I think it absolutely is. Like, uh, like they, of course, it's not going to be like exactly 4x, but it's a very big indicator that it's minuscule compared to EU or like significantly smaller compared to EU uh, just because of that, right? And I'm not saying you can't Pug on NA. It's just that, I mean, you, you don't disagree with this. And I, actually, I don't, I don't really want to quibble. You don't disagree with this. Um... The fact that KP.me is used on EU is going to correlate directly with the fact that there's a significantly bigger pug scene. That's the statement. And you agree with me. Like, you don't disagree with that, um, to be honest. You, you don't. Yeah. Let's get these guys. Definitely some interesting numbers. Yeah. Get them. Hmm. Are we getting them? I think we're getting him. Onwards. Yes. Like twice as small at least. Probably in terms of pugs, yeah. In terms of overall players, not so much. 
Uh, I, I think looking at efficiency, and efficiency is probably like a pretty decent gauge of this. I think it's like 55, 45. Yeah. In that sort of region. Yeah. There's like four times, um, I'm saying it's not like there's four times less groups that uses KP.me on NA. Um, there are zero. I mean, yeah, it's just, it's not as commonly used because, like, people don't, people don't pug as much. Uh, if people pug more, it would be used. But some people obviously do use it. Like, about 18% of people use it. <laughs> Ish. Let's go. It's the same Maguma is destroying plebs in World vs. World. Ah, yes, Maguma. Lumber Synthesizer. 22,000 accounts uh, so far. That's... Hmm, yeah. If you think about it, that's not actually super high. Because bear in mind, right, like, uh, a lot of people who raid probably raid pretty regularly. Um, so you're probably kind of soaking up a lot of the accounts immediately there. Like, I, yeah, I guess that's about what you'd expect. The raid scene's pretty small. Pretty small. Garrison Waypoint. Finally. What do they mean by that? It would be really cool if there were actual um, full stats on this. Uh, like, for example, there are actual full stats on dungeon completions in World of Warcraft. I would love to see this for fractals, actually. This would be really interesting, I think. Um, but here you go. Like, uh, check this out. Uh, let me see if I can find the little graph um, for the Mythic Plus stuff. Because this would be cool for Guild Wars 2, I think. And it would be, it would, this would be really interesting to actually see how, um, how player behavior works. Actually, but when you're kind of going in between patches and going, you know, all this kind of stuff. Like, I, oh, I'm trying to find it. I mean, it's probably just on Raider IO somewhere, isn't it? Let me see if I can locate it. It is, ah, here we go. M plus the most successful thing it ever had. Oh yeah, this is kind of an old one. This is an old one, but it'll do. Um, you get like a weekly update on how many uh, Mythic Plus runs there are in World of Warcraft. So for example, in the first week of se uh, the first week of the season, you had three million Mythic Plus runs. Then you can see it goes down, right? And what's really funny is, is that when there's like really, really bad uh, instabilities, basically, it, it goes down quite a lot as, as people just go like, fuck that, I'm not playing. And then it will kind of go back up again sometimes. And when there's like a patch happening, right, it goes up again. It's very interesting to see the player behavior, but you can, you can definitely see that like, as you might expect, right? When a patch drops, Everyone goes crazy, then less and less people, and it kind of uh, falls off there at the end. But yeah, th this would be cool stats, actually, because we have uh, approximations, you know, some estimates from, uh, you know, from efficiency, from wingman and so on. But yeah, there's like actual, just like actual stats uh, that come out from, uh, from Raider IO and WoW. It's pretty cool. Boon Ball. I could beat Mag, but I choose not to. I just don't like the playstyle. I'm protesting until Maguma is in tier two. My server is higher skill than Mag. We don't beat them because it's not fun. Very true, actually. Very, very true. Although, actually, considering that Scourge has been nerfed quite a bit, uh, I feel like the Cloud has also been nerfed a fair bit. You can still do it, obviously. I've overcapped, guys. I've overcapped on my wizard coins. What should I spend my wizard coins on? I guess it's probably just. I just get the. Well, I should get the laurels, I guess, huh? That's probably the uh, next order of business. I don't really want... I don't need legendary weapons. What ones can you even get? I, mean, I guess I should probably get it because it is good value, I suppose. And I guess I could make legendaries or something. I think I still have the first one, don't I? I don't think I ever opened it. It's... I. I oh, yeah, look, there it is. Legendary weapon starter kit, set one. Okay, I'm going to get the... I'm going to get the legendary weapon starter kit. Here we go. Boom. Now I can collect these things up and just make a bunch of legendaries. Yo! Check that out. 
That's what I'm talking about. Obsidian shards, obviously. Yeah. Honestly, I'm just going to say it, guys. That caffeinated dad video was incredibly based. Yeah. That's all I've got to say. One of the greatest troll videos of all times. Uh, all right, I guess I got the laurels now. I think it's laurel time, guys. Let's go. Boom. Oh, I guess the clovers are good, but I have uh, infinite of those. So that's not really uh, a huge problem. Very good. Very, very nice. It's kind of crazy how much uh, Guild Wars 2 depends on third party. Um, I'm not sure if that really is crazy. Uh, almost all games, not even MMOs, are very... They're not exactly designed around third party, but they kind of are. Uh, realistically, no, in fact, no, they absolutely are. Um, Guild Wars 2 is designed around the wiki. Um, World of Warcraft is designed around the fact that, um, you know, people are gonna min-max and look at Raider.io. Hell, they even run their tournaments through Raider.io, right? Like, all of these games are developed knowing the fact that there's a huge amount of third-party, um, software and information that will be created around the game. Like, they're, they're, they're designed around the fact that these things exist. Uh, because you'd have to be an idiot developer not to. Like, that it just wouldn't make any sense. You can't just, like, pretend that Discord doesn't exist. Um, you know, you have to design your game around that. An in-game DPS meter? I mean... I mean, they, they could do that. The thing is about an in-game DPS meter is that it would actually be bad. Uh, and uh, let me explain what I mean by that. Uh, and this is why WoW doesn't do this, by the way is that handing off stuff like DPS meters to the community is, is better for basically everyone. Um, and the reason for that is that the player gets to decide what they want, as opposed to the developer creating a one-size-fits-nobody. Um, here's a great example. Build templates. Build templates are one size fits nobody, right? They don't really. They they are they're, they're they're nearly there, right? But the the problem is is that for me they don't work, right? Like they they screw me completely because I like to change weapons a lot. I like to play one character for I play multiple game modes, right? They just don't work. Uh, I can't prop look. Why can't I put a name here instead of a number? Why can't I do that? Um, why not? I could with an add-on. I can in World of Warcraft. Um, why can't I do it in the game? And that's annoying. Uh, and that's why kind of putting this on a third party actually works out better for the company and for the consumer. Because the company doesn't have to develop it. Lovely. That's saving our, you know, we don't have to pay our devs to do that. We can focus on other things instead. And secondly, the consumer can actually customize the experience that they want, which is going to be very different depending from player to player um, in this regard. So to be honest, I actually like the third party. I think it works out better for most people. Like the, the only thing you could say is maybe have both, right? Um, is have both. So have like some in-game baseline functionality for that. And then also allow the user to customize. And that's that's kind of how World of Warcraft does it, at least now. Is that it has like a base UI that you can customize a fair bit. And you can also completely say, I don't want to use any of that. I'm going to mod it myself. Um, that's, yeah, okay. Uh, that's also another way you can go about doing it. But yeah. Are there any other options? I will tell you a, a, a really big secret here. If you, if you wrote your own DPS meter, I'm not going to lie. They're probably not going to ban you for it. I, I don't think Anet really care that much uh, if you run a DPS meter. If you hack, they'll ban you. But if you run a DPS meter, I'm not going to lie. I don't think they really care. Um, because because who cares? It, it's, it, it doesn't matter, right? Um, at the end of the day, it, it's... It's not really damaging to the game. Yeah. 
A lot of restrictions and features they've asked to be um, removed uh, from Ark. Uh, yeah, sure. Didn't some staff use Ark themselves? Yeah, Grouch uses Ark. What about gear check? I mean, pff, look, I know a lot of people who use gear check and they don't get banned. Right, um, because uh, pff, who cares? I mean, if if if, if Anet catch you, they'll ban you. But I don't think they're going like, oh boy, we've got to hunt down all these gear check users. Yes. Um, I wouldn't want something a huge chunk of my community uses to depend on one dude who's not even a dev in my community. Art DPS. I'm not gonna lie. So there's two things here. One. If Arc DPS disappeared, like, a lot of people would say they're going to quit the game, but almost none of them actually would. And two, the amount of, the percentage of people of the Guild Wars 2 community who actually use Arc DPS is actually extremely low. It's probably saying like, 2%, I want to say, like, in that sort of area, like 2% of people use Arc maybe. Um, of the overall Guild Wars 2 population. So, it's kind of like, whatever, uh, from Anet's perspective, in my opinion. Yeah. It's higher? Do you think so? M maybe. M yeah. Yeah, maybe, maybe like 10%, I guess. Maybe a bit more than 10%. I think a lot of people play Guild Wars 2, right? Um, I, th I think a lot of people play Guild Wars 2. I don't think the game is dead at all. Um, you know, quite the opposite. I think, I think it's very alive. I, I don't think that many. I don't think that many people are using Ark. Yeah, like it may, may, um, two percent is probably a little bit low. Like ten percent, maybe fifteen percent, ten to twenty percent. I, I can give you that. Although twenty percent is way too high. There's no fucking shot. It's twenty percent. Yeah, absolutely no shot. Yeah, Guild Wars Two is dead. That's true. Anet should endorse Ark. I mean, Grouch uses it on stream. That's implicit endorsement. Not written it well. Not really. And and Ark kind of is semi endorsed. Like, I think Anet work with with um, Ark a little bit. Yeah. Yes. Ark DPS. Fast load DLL. Honestly, fastload DLL is good. They ain't it should add their own version of fastload.dll. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Yo, thanks for the Prime, I appreciate it. When you finish the Master of EOD but sell some locked, will you get spirit shards? I believe you will, yeah, they fixed it, so that does happen now. What is fast load? It's basically like a hack that you know like the loading screen? What the loading screen actually does is it actually waits until the, all the assets have loaded, pretty much. Uh, and that means you can basically make the game look a little bit ugly, but load the game way faster. And start playing way faster. Yes. Very nice. Do you think Guild Wars has something like WoW's Lua engine built into the game? Um, it's actually a really good question. Um, it is a really, really good question. So I would say that the way WoW's stuff is, it's probably actually a little bit too far. Um, if I was actually in charge of... World of Warcraft, I would probably remove a huge amount of the combat hooks um, that exist. But in terms of like the UI stuff, so basically weak auras, absolutely. Like weak auras is single-handedly, it's pretty much the fucking greatest thing uh, ever, right? Like if you could get weak auras in Guild Wars 2, Oh my god, that would be fucking sick. It is an unbelievably good piece of software. Uh, it is it is actually so good in terms of what it can do for you. The fact that, basically a layman, right? Th so let me explain why Weak Auras are good, guys. Because Weak Auras is basically like Legos for UI. You can do pretty complex stuff with zero coding knowledge. You can say, right, when I've got this buff, I want this ability to glow for this long. I want this scale to get highlighted three seconds before it comes off cooldown. When this trait is about to be ready to activate, I want this button to pop up. And you can do that with zero, zero coding knowledge. It is a amazing piece of software and it would make Guild Wars 2 
far easier to play and far more accessible. Because again, you don't need to be a coder. You don't need to do anything complicated or anything super crazy. It is Legos, right? Like you just throw it at the screen and you can make your own UI. Um, and that would be amazing for Guild Wars 2. Because some of the problems that I think new, new players in particular, new players specifically struggle with, is actually how poorly a really important information like this, like this, is communicated to the player. The fact that um, players are going to have a really hard time um, checking your opponent's buffs. Also, why are they in the same bar? What, what, what's that? Why are they in the same bar? Sounds like autoplay to me. If moving these icons on the screen or separating out special effects like um, unique mods, boons, and conditions into different things sounds like autoplay to you, then you're beyond help. Um, and yeah, you're insane. Yeah. Um, why is the target bar up here? Why can't I move it here? Why can't I separate boons, conditions, and unique modifiers? Why can't I do that here? Why is my HP bar here, right? Why can't I move my HP bar up? Why is my ability bar here? Why can't I move that up? Like, all of this kind of stuff. Why is my squad UI here on the left? Why do I have to move my eyes to the left to look at squad UI? Why isn't it moved in the center? Or why don't I not have the option to do that? And the thing is, that is a huge obstacle for a new player in Guild Wars 2 to overcome. Like, being kind of learning the ability to be able to track the bottom of your UI, the top left of your UI, the top of your UI, simultaneously, it's actually really hard. Um, it's really hard to do. I don't know why people pretend that it's not. Um, uh, it, it is. Yeah, why can't I- why can't I have a little icon that says if I've got stability or not? Why do I have to look down and look in the boon bar to see if I have it? Yeah. Ah! Relics can't sort like they need to be needed. Yeah, relics are actually really bad for this. Um, very difficult to track, I think. It's like an extra little icon that you have to track here. And sometimes it's a, a hidden internal cooldown, which is super annoying. Is Girls Who Cloudy still a thing? Uh, it does exist, yeah. Yes. There's an old Preach video about setting up your WoW UI, where he says, um, uh, the exact same things. Well, I mean, yeah, obviously. That's definitely one strength of WoW. Now, in WoW, it is a little bit uncontrolled, and realistically, they probably can't rein it in. Like, the combat hooks are definitely a little bit too much. They're trying to wrestle with it now um, a little bit to, to bring it back in line. Got a little bit out of hand in, like, Warlords of Draenor and stuff like that. Um, although, to be fair, the potential is always there. Um, Guild Wars 2's API is actually really powerful. Um, it's a lot more powerful than, um, than people realize. If people wanted to create DBM, they could in this game. In fact, they could create old DBM. Bear in mind, guys, I can write a piece of software that draws a line in 3D space from my character to where I should walk. Okay? Yeah. Um, there's a mod. This mod exists, by the way, guys, for Blish. You can get a mod on Blish that literally tells you and draws an arrow between your character and the green you need to walk into and when. Yes, that exists in Guild Wars 2. Uh, the only reason WoW add-ons play the game for you and Guild Wars 2s don't is because God, nobody cares enough about this game to make that happen. Or rather... People don't take this game seriously enough to actually make um, uh, make add-ons like that. Like, people simply do not take the game seriously enough for that. But yeah, you can make add-ons that are just as powerful as WoW boss mods in Guild Wars 2. Arguably more powerful. Because fun fact, guys, Blizzard got rid of that. You used to be able to do stuff like that and, like, draw in 3D space and use positional data to do some really crazy, like, abusive stuff. Blizzard got rid of that relatively recently, actually. I think it was even this expansion. But yeah, that's gone. You can't do that. Um, you can do things with the Guild Wars 2 API that you literally cannot do in World of Warcraft with add-ons. Yeah. So, yeah. Yes. 
There you go. You have to manually mark phase change for some reason in that add-on. I think it's because the the Arc DPS, um, the Arc DPS API, um, it doesn't work very well in certain situations. I think it doesn't work on uh, HTCM, for example. Yeah. Um, because like. If the things that it can detect is like when stuff dies, but I think HTCM, the mobs don't really die, they like despawn, which is not the same thing, or well, they, they kind of like go away and get replaced by another one. Yeah. Uh, to the important comments, we'll go in the middle of the screen. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the default WoW UI, um, Honestly, it sucked because for for I don't know why they did this, but in vanilla WoW, like the UI, you have your little icon up here on the left, and um, then the target on the right. Now, to be fair, you could move those around even in the original vanilla WoW, but yeah, the default UI is very questionable. It is very, very not good, uh, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. But that is where the add-ons come in, guys. The week Aunt Deuce never went on vacation was the best week in Guild Wars 2 XD. Wait, why? <laughs> why why was it? <laughs> what do you mean? Yes. They were breaking through this gate. There was a build though and people couldn't track their DPS. Well, I mean, what, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with tracking your DPS? Very good. Yo, Lord Finner in the chat. Boom. You know... Here's... Here's an interesting thing. I get, I get what people like Nick Oz are saying here. Um, because what is Nick Oz saying here? He's saying that he, he doesn't like people being able to check their DPS. Why? Why is he saying that? Well, he's saying that because people being able to check their DPS affects culture. It means that people will value this, and ultimately, people will exclude him if he doesn't meet their standards. So people being able to um, check their DPS affects him indirectly. It affects culture. And he wants to preserve the culture that kind of Guild Wars 2 has. And this makes a lot of sense. Because here's the thing. It is a zero-sum game, guys. Um, in World of Warcraft, people like Nick Oz lost. Um, if you don't perform well in WoW, you aren't getting into any remotely good groups. If you don't want to put the work in, you aren't clearing the content. That is how it is in World of Warcraft. You can buy, I guess. But in Guild Wars 2, people like Nick Oz 1, right? Like, um, you, you are kind of looked down on a little bit, right? Like, if you, uh, you know, you want to put effort in and have high standards, right? Like, you know, in a way, the culture of not caring is the dominant culture in Guild Wars 2. And essentially, Nick Oz doesn't want Guild Wars 2 to be like World of Warcraft, whereas many of us do, right? Um, yeah, many of us actually want to have the, oh, put effort in, get better. They, they want, like, the get good attitude, right? In the game. Which I do. I think uh, the get good culture is good. Getting good is good. Yeah. Yes. And just dealt with it. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, people like Nick Oz are scared of a ghost. But they aren't really. You've kind of missed the point here, Narsen. It's not about, like... It's not about... Will you get kicked... It's almost like how people perceive you. 
Um, it's like, do you feel alienated from the game, right? So I, I see this from the other side. I feel very alienated um, from Guild Wars 2 because I look around and I see loads of people who, who agree with Nick Oz. And I go, oh yeah, I'm not wanted here, right? Where in the same way, Nick Oz would probably look at World of Warcraft and go, holy shit, yeah, these guys really don't want me here, do they? And he's right, they don't, um, by the way. Like, this is actually important. This is the, a really important insight. He's correct, actually. In the same way that I'm correct, um, too, actually. Like, it, like nobody's wrong here. Like, that's kind of one of the, the more interesting uh, facets of this particular conversation, um, is that nobody's wrong here. People are actually correct. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think there's Guild Wars 3 in development? No. But that's how it is. Nerf Woolbender and Dragon Hunter in PvP. It's a skill issue. Get better at the game. I will never call someone out for having bad DPS anymore. So in Final Fantasy XIV, since that is reportable there. Um, to be honest, I would. But you've just got to do... Well, it depends, honestly. It depends if I'm feeling like putting in any effort. Um, but I mean, I'll say, yeah, you know... You might want to get Arc DPS. It's the thing is, it's very difficult to give feedback like that without sounding like a massive asshole, right? Um, yeah. I mean, you've just got to go in and say, like, hey, man, do you want do you want some feedback on how this was going? Like, you basically got to go that route, and then if they say no, then you don't say shit. That's how it is. Yeah. Yep. The people who care about performing will perform as well. The people who don't aren't worth the time. The thing is, is that a lot of players actually might not know um, actually, especially in Guild Wars 2. In, in World of Warcraft, less so, realistically. The, people probably know if they're not doing well, uh, most of the time anyway. But in Guild Wars 2, people might have no idea. So, you've, you've got to understand. I do put in effort, I don't make, uh, meta DPS. Uh, probably subpar. I mean... <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, realistically, that probably means you aren't doing very well. That's fine. Um, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't really care either way. Yeah. It's all good. Because, like, here's the thing, guys. Imagine, 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 imagine being a, a fresh Guild Wars 2 player, right? A fresh Guild Wars 2 gamer. And... You play through the story, and you play through open world. You probably play through the story without dying a single time. You demolish all open world matters, they're free, everything falls over within microseconds. Okay? You, you're probably thinking, bro, I'm doing really well. This is hype. This is Pog. I'm like destroying everything in open world. I'm like destroying everything in, um, in, in open world. This is great. I'm pumping, right? Like I'm blasting. You probably have the impression that you're doing well, whereas in reality you might not be, right? Because the, the trouble with uh, Guild Wars 2 story and open world is that performance doesn't matter. It, it's really, really not. You don't really get a lot of feedback on how well you're doing just by playing the game. I actually think this is kind of a bit of an issue in a lot of MMOs, actually. Like, a lot of MMOs go for, like, the really easy story content. Uh, World of Warcraft is definitely like this. It's, like, very hard to die. It's almost impossible, in fact, to die in the story. Almost impossible to die in the open world. Um, I guess there's like some elite areas that can kind of kill you in WoW, but honestly, not really. Um, uh, but yeah, like, they're very, very easy. And that means that players don't really know how they're performing. When they try and step into anything that's even remotely difficult, it becomes very, you know, they, they struggle a lot. Very nice. Wait, the Scruffy took you like 30 deaths? Wait, I, honestly, I saw a post about this. And I, wait, why is it hard again? I think I, I did it on like Ellie, uh, on like full Zerka Ellie, and it, it, it just died. I had a legendary difficulty campaign after years of storms being made out of paper. Honestly, that's very based. I like that. Yeah. Let the first mission takes forever, your build sucks ass. What's the first mission 
In living what? Is it what's the what's the boss at the end of it? Is there like a boss or something? How much DPS would you say is enough for the average LFG pug conscript? 20k, 25k, 30k? Uh, take your build's benchmark, get about 80% of that on the golem, and honestly, you're alright. 80-85%. If you can do that, seems pretty good. You'll be fine. The objective is not clear. Isn't that the one where you gotta like collect the little orbs or something? And you gotta you gotta like um like slam them onto the boss in some way or something. I, I can't remember what you do on that one. I know there's like loads of fire that you have to run around with and stuff. But I was just playing my Tempest, man. I'm playing my Tempest, bro. I love Tempest. Are there DPS checks and endgame content? No. Um, you will never get an actual DPS checking in um, in any Guild Wars 2 content. It doesn't exist. Uh, it's always a case of you need to live the mechanics until the fight dies. Like, that should always be your mindset in Guild Wars 2, is live, and then the boss will eventually die. Um, there are no DPS checks in the game. Even HTCM is not a DPS check. It is a mechanics check, ultimately. Especially now with power creep, it is absolutely not um, a DPS check. Gorsival Ghosts? Gorsival Ghosts are, are not a DPS check. That boss fight uh, fails way too much to enrage. Yeah, but only if you have like really bad DPS, no? Like it, it, you can you can fail you can fail the enrage on COCM, but only if people are really not pressing anything. Like the DPS check is not in any way strict. Like if you have even remotely decent DPS, you'll have like three minutes left. Yeah. yeah. Even if the uh, threshold is easy to meet. Well, okay, every boss has a DPS chip by definition, but in the English language, we use context. Like, when uh, when this player was asking me about DPS checks, they weren't asking, do you have limited time to defeat the encounters, or are there no enrage timers? They were asking me, do the DPS checks actually become relevant um, in any of the encounters in the game? That is how I understood that statement, because I was reading into the context of what they're asking me, given my knowledge of how people communicate, and also given the type of question that would come up in another MMORPG. I therefore then skipped the subtext and then get, went straight to the direct answer. Hopefully that's useful. Yeah. That's how it is. That actually is true. I would say that an actual DPS check in the game is um, uh, 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 like a Anka CMCM. That's probably the closest one, actually. That's probably one of the harder DPS checks in the game. Although, yeah, you know, you can you can definitely you can get around it a little bit. Uh, it's not super strict, but that that's like a proper DPS check. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Very good. Lagos twins are a slight peepo DPS check. I mean, yeah, yeah, but the thing is, if you have if you have like really bad damage, then yes, there are DPS checks in the game, guys. But but not if you don't. <laughs> that, that this is what this person was asking me, right? Like and he even confirms it, by the way. Jinzo TV even confirms that that was um, the the question. Do you play Guild Wars One? Uh, yeah, I play Guild Wars One. It's a good game. I'd actually recommend it. Yeah. Yes. There is no fight in the game that you couldn't do with four healers. That's that's the deal. Low man COCM hardest encounter in the game. I'm not gonna lie, that probably would actually be the most annoying thing to low man. Well, not even annoying, it would be like I guess you'd actually run into a hard limit probably earlier there. It's like a stricter DPS check than something like HTCM even. So yeah, I guess you'd probably run into the limit on COCM. Um could you do it with six people? Maybe? May I don't know actually. I don't I'd have to think about the numbers uh, for COCM. Oh, it would take so long, holy shit. It'd be painful. Yeah. Yes. It would be painful. 
I got Legendary Defender of Ascalon. Ah, very nice. Very good. Yeah. Can you do Anka CMCM with four healers? Yeah, yeah, 100%, yeah. Um, but So, when I was doing it with Fungus, we would fail the achievement by killing it too fast. Um, so what we would what we were doing was is that it would die before the second intermission right before the second set of um, What are they called like uh, spites right? I uh, would spawn so we would literally fail the DPS check by having too much damage um, So yeah, you could 100% do it with four healers Yeah, 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 yeah I mean, yeah, don't get me wrong, guys. Like, are, are you going to enrage COCM in pugs? Are you going to enrage some fights in pugs? Absolutely. But that doesn't mean that it's a DPS check, right? Look, guys, I did a I did a looking for raid Sarkareth in uh, World of Warcraft, which is like baby mode, story mode. It took fucking 11 minutes, okay? It doesn't mean that the DPS check on that boss is tight. It just means that nobody does any damage. <laughs> Yeah. It's not quite the same. 11 minutes, Sarkareth. Let's go. <laughs> Big. Are we going in? I'm going in. I would not count an enraged timer zero check one to one. Exactly, yeah. That That is because I understood what you were saying. Have no fear, my friend. I knew what you were talking about. I knew you meant, like, are there, like, relevant DPS checks that, you know, if you don't, like, burn or burst, fix them, or just do enough output over time, you will fail. I think the really big notable thing, actually, uh, that's missing in Guild Wars 2 is actually heal checks as well. Um, this is something that's very noticeable in other MMOs, is that there's survivability checks. Um, those just don't exist at all in Guild Wars 2. They, they're actually non-existent. Um... And unironically, those really don't exist. There's nothing where you really have, like, very high sustained damage output or, like, a really big burst of damage that you have to survive. Yeah, kind of on Junkyard CMCM, actually. That would be the exception to that because of, like, the healing debuff. And it just kind of, like, fires loads of shit at you that's going to pew-pew you down a little bit. Isn't that how they didn't want to make heal classes? Yeah, but then they changed their mind and then they did. Um, you know, with starting with HOT, so you know, the first expansion. Yes, the best encounter they've ever made in terms of design. Anka CM is very good, yes, actually. It is definitely one of the best ones they've done in terms of design. It's just easy, that's the problem. It's just very undertuned, um, uh, and like, I, I'm really interesting. Uh, this is really interesting to me. I, 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 w I don't think Anit would ever talk about this, but I think they have some tech issues here. One of the things that they really struggle with is making bosses, like, do multiple things at the same time. Like, mechanical overlaps are really hard for Anet. I don't know why. Bosses are slow. They're very slow. And that is interesting. I don't know if it's a technical reason or if they just don't design encounters that way like it, it's really hard to tell I, I think we can only speculate we can't really give an informed position on this in my opinion but yeah guild wars 2 bosses are slow very slow um compared to other games and they don't really do more than one thing at the same time and because they don't more than they don't do more than one thing at the same time that inherently limits the difficulty of how hard something can be because it's like one mechanic one mechanic one mechanic one mechanic the most extreme example of this was the recent fractal right this was silent surf it's literally one mechanic five seconds one mechanic five seconds one mechanic five seconds and that is a problem for making a good encounter for making a difficult encounter in my opinion it's like a really really big problem Fix the horribly simplistic squad system before uh, boss mechanics. I mean, it would be nice if the squad system was improved. But, I mean, I don't think it's that bad. Yeah, I mean, it works. I think there's a couple of things they could do to make it better, though. This is all the gadgets in HTCM. This is why they uh, can't make them uh, overlap. I mean, <laughs> that's big. You know, it's a uh, lot of little question marks, little, uh, little cogs there. With complex encounters in mind, so technical side is lacking. Could be. Again, I actually think it's a little irresponsible to speculate there. I think we should say that's 
possibly the case, but I don't think we really have a lot of evidence to suggest that's necessarily the case, and therefore we shouldn't. Because that if, if we say that, oh yeah, it looks like they've got tech debt here, that's misinformation at the end of the day. We don't know that. It's um it's not fair to claim that. It could be for any range of reasons. Like, I think one reason is they're simply, they don't have encounter designers who have experience designing encounters in that way, um, and therefore that's why they don't do it. That seems to be a perfectly plausible explanation that would be um, a, you know, a, a potentially a less severe issue than, yeah, they literally can't because of technical issues. Yeah. What's wrong with the squad system? Uh, I would say the really big one is that you need the tag for it, to be honest. Um, the fact that you need the tag is bad, uh, I think. Yeah. Uh, if you fix that, it becomes better. Like, the baseline squad system kind of sucks, to be honest. And also, I think parties are bad. Parties should just be replaced with squads straight up. Like, no questions asked. Um, parties suck. There's no actual leader. And honestly, they need to replace parties with squads just so... There's a couple of people on the Guild Wars 2 server, I'm sure you've seen these people, who get really big mad when you ever suggest that it sucks, that parties um, don't have leaders. And they will go, well, actually, I think parties shouldn't have leaders. Because otherwise, you know, it means that ego commanders ruin the game. And to be honest, I would probably not stop smiling for a month. Seeing these people's reactions uh, to this system actually being fixed and um, parties having actual leaders in it. I, I think I would print them out. I'd print out all of their little comments and frame them. I'd change my desktop wallpaper to a, a collage, a montage, if you will, of all of the salt from this change. Yeah. And it feels good. It would feel good. Yeah. Let's have a leader in a party. Yeah, I think it's one of the kind of things that sucks about parties is that there's no leader. Yeah. Bit of a feels bad. 10-man squad's free. I think they definitely should, yeah. Uh, they don't even need the tag. Just make, like, the 10-man squad functionality good. Make it so the 10-man squad has a leader, uh, can do markers, can do ready checks, all of this kind of stuff. There is absolutely no reason why that shouldn't be the case. I mean, it, yeah. Nice. Can't set roles, can't identify roles. It's a chore when people leave and new ones join. Um, you're not going to like this answer, but that's just a skill issue. Uh, you need to learn more. Like, um, the way Guild Wars 2 works is, is that there aren't really defined roles, and characters can basically be any role. There's no real way to tell. This is just a skill issue. Um, it's... If you just learn what does what, it's trivial to replace this. If you see a Herald leave, QDPS. Firebrand leave, QDPS. You see a fucking Druid leave, a Lack heal, whatever. Um, this is a skill issue. I don't think this should necessarily be fixed by the game. Um, this should just be fixed by players learning and becoming more competent, uh, I think. That's not the answer that a lot of people want to hear, but I, it is the answer that I think is correct. Yeah. You might not know who left. Well, how can you not know who left? Just look at the squad UI. It's right there. Like, who's not there anymore? Nowadays, a druid could be uh, DPS, uh, for all you know. If you made the squad, you definitely know, right? Because um, like, you, you, know, you made the squad. You know who's who. You put the squad groups together. Yeah. I want numbers people on buying gems to acquire a commander. It has to be pitifully low, right? Um, I mean, I mean, I think Bill will buy gold a lot. Uh, maybe not specifically for the tag, but yeah, I think buying gold is probably one of the best sources of revenue for Arena. Net. UI improvements are good. Yeah, but I actually don't think these ones would actually be that useful. Like any system like that. Look straight up, guys. Um, any system like this would be so fucking cumbersome, right? It would honestly be more trouble than it's worth, right? I, I would say it's more annoying to, like, go through and, like, mark people and then do that every single time than just, like, I don't know, kind of YOLO it. Uh, I, I think people are a little bit over-concerned about stuff like this. It, like, look, 
When I put together a squad in open world, I don't go, oh yeah, everyone in sub two quick, everyone in sub three a lack. I just put people in subgroups that like maybe make sense a little bit and assume that people are going to give boons, right? And you know what? It works every single time. Like that has never let me down. It's never failed. I'm not going to lie. You can basically kind of like semi YOLO it in raids as well. Like, oh, we killed Veil Guardian and one sub didn't have quickness. Oh my God, the horror. Well, I guess we better fix that for Gorsaval, huh? Right? Um, it, it's really not that important. Um, realistically, like, just, just play the game. Yeah. 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 I never have full boons, uh, in Dragon's Engine squads. That's why you get the protocols, and that is why, uh, you play the boon class. Yeah. Play the boon class. That's always my solution. You want to have boons? Be the boons. Giga Chad. Yo, this is a crazy fight. You guys see this? What's going on here? Yeah. Uh, that's why play Herald in open world. Public service. Do your part, guys. If you don't have a Herald, make one right now and play it in open world. At least once a week. Do your good deed, guys. Log on to a Power Herald and go and, like, solo carry Dragon's End. You know you want to. Or maybe play a nice firebrand. Or maybe even heal. Having like one or two healers can actually solo carry a 50-man squad in open world. Especially if it's a heal scourge. Do your part, guys. Play a lack heal scourge. Or I don't know, play heal a lack condi scourge. Boom. Plague doctor. Easy. Hit that shit. Yeah. Playing support? I mean, playing support is probably the freest rewards that actually exist right now because of the new system. It's probably better to play support in open world than it is to play deep. Well, maybe not actually in terms of... Well, I'm not gonna lie, it's pretty OP to be honest. So you just pulse boons on a heal herald, you're gonna get giga loot. It's, uh, it's pretty damn good. Yeah. Boom. More mechanic than anything. Heal boon chronomancer. I'm not gonna lie, that build... You know, don't tell Emmy this, that build is... It, it, it's not that good. Um, I was very disappointed with it when it dropped. It's it's all right, uh, but it's not it's not amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Incredible. Boom. I'm selfish. I'm gonna play Woolbender. Well, it's fine. You're playing Guardian. Just take, uh, stand your ground, and you're in business. Like, you're more value than basically everyone else in the group. Enjoy. Healing feels very delayed on heal chrono. Well, they fixed it now, right? It's when you use the mantra charge instead, so it's definitely way less delayed. Uh, so I think the delay is less of the issue. I think it's more that the radius sucks. You have no range potential whatsoever, and rifle isn't really going to fix it that much. Um... Yeah, it's, it's just it's just not ideal. You're st the only th the thing that's good about that build is its stability is insane. Um, it's really good in world versus world for that reason. But in PVE, the thing is, like, times have moved on, guys. Just giving boons isn't actually good enough. It's it's almost like weird to say that, but it's kind of true. Like, if you want to be a, a really competitive healer, just giving boons isn't enough. Uh, unless you're really extreme and you can do some kind of crazy stuff. Like, Druid is... Druid in certain situations is, like, Giga Broken, because you can do, like, 10 mana lack with Druid if you play your cards. You see that in some of the record runs. But, um, just giving boons in pugs isn't enough. Like, you have to also be a hyper carry as well. And that's where stuff like Druid and Scourge come in. They, they both have hyper carry potential. Um, and that's enough to actually be a good healer. And Chrono just does not carry people. It just doesn't have, um... Hyper carry. Fungus squad is permadead. I mean, basically all of Fungus has quit the game entirely. So, I mean, yeah, it's it's not... It's over. And, yeah, I mean, Fungus doesn't care about... Um, fungus only does CMs anyway. Uh, doesn't do normal mode. Yeah. Yes. So there it is. Yeah. Incredible. I, mean, I guess uh, Heal Chrono is really good for speedruns, right? Because you can package your Mesmas in all the time. That's pretty nifty. Yeah. yeah. Uh, would you recommend somebody learn the game who doesn't... Wait. Would you recommend the game to someone who doesn't enjoy the leadership position? Um, 
yeah, sure. I would say this is probably one of the easiest games to play. Well, it, well, it kind of depends. Um, well, yes, yes. I think any game is better when you're in the driving seat, but that's just my personal opinion. Um, so you've got, okay, I, I need to give you my perspective. If I'm not in the driving seat, like if I'm not um, basically the one running the show, I'm going to fucking lose my mind. I hate it. Um, so I would never play any game if I wasn't in a leadership position, like ever. Um, so that's my perspective, but yeah, like I, it's fine. Uh, I do think you get better results if you're in leadership position, though. Obviously, it's over. We're fucking dead. It is over. We have been annihilated. As level fifty, how can I level up faster? Do the adventure guide things. These thingies. This character hero panel. Achievements, character adventure guide. That is what you want. Yeah. Boom. Incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you can't really expect them to do stuff that you want them to do. I mean, look, here's the deal, guys. Uh, support is the hardest carry role in this game. If you want to carry people, you play support. That's the end of the conversation. Um, boom. If you want a hard carry, you play a healer in raids and strikes. In open world, you play like a boon DPS. If you play a... The best build for open world. Straight up, the best build in open world is Power Quickness Herald. Like, by far. Um, if you play that build, you are carrying. I would also say that a close... Another really sick build will be Firebrand, uh, like a Quickness Firebrand build, because uh, it has stability, and stability is really, really good on certain boss fights. Uh, Herald has that as well, but it's like a little bit less consistent because you have to put the road down on people, and you only have the F2 for some like really big AoE stability, whereas um, Firebrand has like Omega Stab AoE, which is really good for carrying people. Herald is 10 times less effort than Firebrand. Ah... I think they're both pretty chill. I, I wouldn't say... It's just just camp um, Axe Torch, no? And then it's fine. I guess it's got more buttons. The rogue can hit more people than stability. It can, yeah, but again, the, you know, if, if peepos are kind of like scattering all over the place, then the stand your ground 600 radius can really come into play. That is very high value. Can you rate the Matter Matter Turtle? Uh, I mean, like, is like the plush one? I mean, Matter's like the plush ones, yeah. Uh, I'm not interested in carrying noobs. Supporting people who press one skill per minute does not feel fun. Uh, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, I mean, look, uh, all of the advice I give is always going to be what generates win rate, what makes you win. Um, and if you want to win, play support. Like, that is the advice I would give anyone. Um, in Guild Wars 2. If you want to win, you play support. Uh, if you don't like support, that's fair enough. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Yeah, World vs. World is pretty high tier, to be honest. It is a uh, good quality game mode. There's nothing in the MMO industry that matches this. This, in my opinion, is like the, um, is the most special thing about Guild Wars 2. Uh, and the open world. The PvP as well actually is really good in this game, but it's dead, so whatever. It's uh, not, doesn't really count. I actually just want to stop saying that, because I feel bad saying it, because in a lot of ways, me saying it's dead makes it worse. Um, it, it is true, unfortunately, but I, I don't, I'm going to stop saying it. Yeah. Because, you know... The, it's it's a sick PvP game. It really is. Like Conquest is exceptionally good. It's a very good game mode. The people who designed Conquest had like uh, very wrinkly brains. Very wrinkly brains. Yeah. You must like pain. Many wrinkles. I can't make it in. It's over. Dude, Blood Bank is uh, busted.
Hit a little water, just auto attack. Exactly why quickness builds um, hard carry. Well, it's just like so. If you play quickness herald, right? You are cranking out like 30k DPS, which is pretty good. A full DPS build is going to do like 40k ish. Um. If you, as a Quickness Herald, then give everyone around you, so five players 25 Might, five players Fury, um, five players Quickness, the actual DPS contribution you have there is colossal. It is absolutely huge. And that's not including the contribution you have from keeping people alive. Because when you're playing Herald, you're also contributing to protection uptime as well, and stability uptime, which is going to be generating more DPS for your team indirectly. So it's it's very, very good, because you're doing really good damage on your own. Um, you're also then buffing everyone around you by like 50%, like you're giving everyone like 50% more damage conservatively. It's likely more than that, to be honest. Um, uh, most of the time in a, in a squad situation. Because 25 might is insane. Uh, quickness is insane. Uh, Fury is insane. Uh, stability is really good. So the amount of damage you're adding to a squad by playing Herald is crazy. It's going to be pretty much like one of the best things you can do. Uh, and that, you know, playing healer is also really good for that reason. Because you kind of do the same thing as that. Uh, except with more of a focus on making people not die. But, you know. How much DPS is Herald doing? It's like 30k. I think it's a bit more than that. Uh, 33,000, I think, or, or something is the benchmark these days. So it's pretty good. Um, not the highest quickness DPS in the world, but it has really strong utility, really strong like uh, boon access and so on. Yeah. Very hard to get into, most from a UI uh, clarity perspective. I think one of the really things, the really things that sucks about PvP right now is that. Um, when you first start playing PvP, you won't... Hmm, it, it will be very difficult for you to understand if you're improving. Um, oh boy, I'm about to make the ELO hell people really happy uh, by saying this. But because skill disparity is so whack in Guild Wars 2, if you queue into PvP, the skill disparity in matches is going to be so high that... To affect the outcome of a game, you have to actually be quite good. Um, because you need to carry very hard to move your win rate very much. If you want to move your win rate up to like 55, 60%, which is where you want to be if you're climbing the ladder, you actually have to be very good to do that. Because a lot of the time, games are going to have a very wide MMR range. So, you know, the, the lowest end might be, let's say, 1300. The highest end might be 1600 even. So, like, a low gold player with a middle plat player might be the skill range in a game. That is actually very difficult to influence um, if you aren't quite good. Uh, because your contribution basically doesn't matter, right? Like, it's just... It just gets lost in the noise, right, of a, of a PvP match. And because of that, if you want to actually carry, you have to be pretty damn good um, in order to have any impact on the match you have. So basically, new players, and, and this is the difficult thing, right? New players, their contributions are just not relevant uh, in a lot of their games. And that's really bad. That makes the game really hard to learn because as a new player, it's extremely difficult to understand if you did something good or not, right? Because... In a lot of ways, it doesn't matter what you do, right? Like, the game is going on around you, and you're just a passenger. And that is a lot of the new player experience in PvP, uh, which is very problematic. Um, for for the new player in, in, um, in Guild Wars 2 PvP. This is true in a lot of um, competitive games, especially old competitive games that have lower populations. Uh, but yeah, just to say it's not like a Guild Wars 2 specific thing. It's just an old PvP game with a low population is always going to have these problems for new players where match skill disparity is too high. Yeah. Which is obviously not ideal. Yo, we got the castle. Let's go. Uh, I've queued into legendary players. Oh, yeah, you will. You absolutely will. Like, if you get into gold, you will eventually queue into legendary players. And in that game, that sucks because you just don't matter. Um, like, in a game like that, 
um, the legend rated players are just going to farm all of the gold rated players uh, and platinum rated players and, and just, they're, they're just irrelevant, right? You just, you're just not important um, in a game like that, really. It's going to be two legend players on each team, like farming everyone else and they're playing their own little mini game, right? Like they're, they're playing, they're playing their own little side thing, right? That's going on. Yeah. Uh, they absolutely farm. It's a good job. Well, I'm not saying it can't be useful. I just think it can be really difficult for players to to understand if they're doing something good or if they're doing something bad, right? Because winning or losing should be the feedback mechanism, right? Like if you lose a PvP game, you should go, ah, okay, right. That you know, I, I messed up basically. But when when you have really wide skill disparities, it can be very difficult to understand if you did something wrong or if you did something good. Because it doesn't matter if you did something wrong or something good. You'll win or lose the same, right? So let, let's say that, um, you know, if you if you queue into PvP um, and you've got two legend players in your team and you feed all game, you might win anyway. Uh, in fact, statistically, you will. Uh, and that's where things get really, you know, really messed up. Is that, you, you know, let's say you, you queue into PvP and you've got Boyce and Syndrona on your team. They're duo queuing. Boyce is playing some kind of crazy untamed build. Sind on Thief. They're just going crazy. They're farming, right? They're farming the fuck out of everyone, right? Uh, the entire game. You could literally go like 0 and 7 and you'll probably still win, right? Like you're still going to win that game no matter what. Because Boyce and Sind are going like 25 and 0. Uh, just like spawn camping the enemy team. And, and that means that you as a player, you don't know if you did anything wrong, right? You don't realize that... Um, Oh, I went Norton 7. That was bad. And you might go, isn't it obvious? Well, not necessarily. Like, sometimes dying isn't... Like, dying in Guild Wars 2 is bad, but there are definitely situations where <sighs> taking a fight and eventually losing can win you the game. And that's kind of where the complexity of Conquest definitely kind of bites itself in the ass a little bit. There are definitely situations where winning a fight does not mean winning a game, and losing a fight does not mean losing a game. And that, with the fact that you might play really badly and win anyway, this really muddies the waters, I think. Yeah. Yeah. It would be better to only have PvE and World versus World in the game. That's a really good question. Um, you know what's actually funny? I, 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 I in some ways agree with you. I think Gil... Guild Wars 2 PvP would actually be a very good um, uh, standalone game, right? So you know, like uh, you uh, like um, like a MOBA, right? It would be very good if Guild Wars 2 PvP was the entire game. That I think that game would do well, to be honest. Um, so get rid of all the RPG bullshit. Get rid of all this crap. Um, all of it. Like delete all of the shit uh, from the game and just have the PvP experience. I think that would actually, that would be successful, I feel like, actually. I think that would actually do well um, uh, in the in the gaming market. Like, it, it's just that um, it has all of the, when people think Guild Wars 2, they think MMO and that's PvE, right? Like, that's just the reality of how MMOs are in this, this day and age. Um, so, yeah. Dude, I've been ignoring the YouTube chat. Yo, YouTube chat, I'm sorry I love you. I, 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 I just got distracted. Is Sally Herald an acceptable replacement for open world? Yeah, Sally Herald is fine too. It's a pretty good build, actually. Um, if you play like the, if you play the, the, like the quickness, um, Sally Herald is good. Um, new player, don't necessarily you push a uh, quick start to 30, 40k. My division rates is about much lower, about 10 lower than average on wingman. I wasn't the bottom of my group DPS wise. Well, I mean, yeah, you will be. Um, if, if you as a quickness DPS are, if you as a quickness DPS are doing more damage than dedicated DPS players in your group, something is not going well, um, to be perfectly honest with you. You don't want that. Uh, yeah, you should be the lowest DPS in your group if everyone's playing vaguely okay as a quickness DPS. That's normal. Uh, and to be clear, Quickness Herald does not do 40k DPS. Like, pure DPS builds do around 40k DPS. Quickness Herald, I believe, is, is, is a little bit over 30,000 DPS. Of course, in a real encounter, it will be lower, because the boss is going to phase, the boss will go invulnerable sometimes, right? Like, the boss might force you out of melee range. Um, so, 
you're not going to get that 30,000 DPS unless it's a boss that doesn't move and does nothing, right? And doesn't have any kind of invulnerability phases. Let me... Where's a boss where... Oh, yeah, for example, on, on Mursart Overseer, that's where you have 100% DPS uptime and no anti-melee mechanics. That is a fight where you can get absolute benchmark numbers. So if you go into Mursart Overseer and you get around 30k DPS on Quickness Herald, that's where you want to be. Uh, that's pretty much a good... Yeah, that you, you know, you're, you're doing the correct amount of DPS on an encounter like that. You should do more DPS than the bench. In certain situations, yeah, absolutely. If it dies within, within like, very early on and everyone's bursting really hard, yeah, you can even get higher than the benchmark number. That's one thing that people actually forget about this, by the way. People forget this. They do. Um, power builds can actually do more damage in an encounter than they do on the golem. If the encounter is very, very short then power builds can literally do more than benchmark damage on an encounter uh, just because of the nature of how burst works. And if something's dying basically within one or two burst windows, your DPS won't have dropped from your initial burst and you can even outperform the golem in some situations. Yeah. Indeed. Having PvP and PvE because balancing issues where one thing might be bad in PvE because it was decent, it will be broken in PvP. You can actually fix this. Um, you can fix that by balancing around P or designing the game around PvP first and then playing with the numbers in PvE. Because here's the thing. If something is if something is not ideal for PvE, you can make it good by slapping boons on it and increasing the number. And what's my source for that? The last three years of balance updates. Notably stuff like Spellbreaker, right? Um, however, if something, if something doesn't work in PvP design-wise, the only way is to rework it. Uh, example, Scourge and Mirage. Um, these builds just break those game modes. They, they just, it just doesn't work. Like, you can't have stuff like that in Guild Wars 2 PvP without it fundamentally breaking the game, uh, pretty much. Um, and that's why they, they had to, like, hit them with a hammer, right? And just destroy them, pretty much. Yeah. Is there something with armor and defense effect, uh, effect numbers? Uh, so basically, th this is one of the weird things about the game. So armor is your toughness plus defense. Defense is a stat that you get from your armor. And this is where it gets interesting, of course. So light armor, so if you're a necromancer, for example, has a lower defense score compared to, say, heavy class, like a guardian. So your armor is your toughness plus your defense score. Uh, and then the, the armor is the calculation, is the number used in the calculation of how much damage you take from power attacks. So that's how that works. Yeah. Or Virtuoso, which is just shit in PvP. Um, it definitely wasn't. Uh, Virtuoso was actually very problematic in PvP, in fact, actually. Um, so what was going on with Virtuoso is that it was able to chain invulnerabilities and also have unblockables that made it unbelievably obnoxious to actually play against uh, in PvP. Power Scrapper is good. Yeah, Power Scrapper is amazing. It's uh, It did get nerfed a little bit last patch, but it was OP. Uh, it's it's Dude, holy shit. World Bus is so broken. I have to make a video about this. There are... Dude. Okay. There are so many gamers who are coped out and are like, Yeah, bro. World Bus Wars aren't good, bro. Oh my god. I get Z gold, bro. These people are imbeciles. They're insanely coped out. Like, you get... The reward tracks are ridiculous. Yeah. I see two bots and character users. Can I ban? I mean, you can just leave them. There's like a billion bots, right? Like, aren't there like a whole bunch of bots that just are like everywhere? Like all the time? Like in, in like every chat? I, I, I don't think it's a, a huge deal, to be honest. I think there's like a, there's like a Reddit post on the Twitch subreddit that lists off like all of these bots that like infest and stalk everyone's channels. 
And they're just like gathering data or something like that. It's kind of weird. Yeah. Ah. Do you think a lack tends to work in fractals? Yeah, sure. Let's see why not. Bot number 380 reporting in. Indeed. Reward tracks aren't bad. Pips, though. I guess the thing is, I am 8k rank, and that definitely does change my perspective on this. They probably should rework the system a little bit so you can kind of get some more pips. I think it would be pretty cool if getting an extra pip was associated with achievements. So, in other words, when you get, like, um... They'd have to rebalance pips for this a little bit, obviously, but I think this will be cool. Like, what? check this out, guys. What if, for every level of Realm Avenger you got, you got an extra pip? Check that out, right? So, you know, um, look, you get 1,000 kills, boom, extra pip. 3,000 kills, boom, extra pip. 10k kills, extra pip. 50k, extra pip. Um, Realm Avenger, boom, extra pip. Um... Same thing with all the other shit, like, you know, a thousand keeps, boom, get an extra pip. Uh, you, you could maybe balance this by making it a buff. So in other words, making it like a, a reward track gain instead, because that might be too many pips. It might just get confusing, to be perfectly honest, if they added that many pips to the game, uh, because you just have loads of them. But um, yeah, I, I think it'd be really cool if, if like um, doing the achievements in World vs. World, like by playing the game, like increased your progression speed as well. Something like that. Ah, Jester, my queen. Yeah. Yo, I'm in. But yeah, World vs. Wards are actually pretty good. They are fat guys. Because you get so much world XP these days. I, dude, I'm not even running boosters. Here's the thing. I'm, I'm putting zero effort into gaining rewards here. I'm not even... I can't even be bothered to use boosters. No joke, man. It's actually insane. It's crazy. Yeah. Leveling from rank zero for about one pip a tick. Yeah, yeah, honestly, it is rough. I will say that. Uh, it's still a little bit not good um, when you are very, very new. But once you get a couple of pips... It's really strong, I think, actually, because you just get so many of these things because they it, it did feel a little bit bad that the you know, you don't get the dailies anymore for the world versus world potions. But what you do get is these chests now accelerate your reward track a lot. So if you actually get up to like gold, platinum and, and all this kind of stuff, you get so much reward track progress. It's kind of ridiculous. Uh, to be honest. And these things are worth a lot of gold, right? Like, they're very high value. Uh, and how many, of the, how many of these things do I even have? I must have so many of these gearboxes. Amnitus. I have 27? Bro, I haven't opened them. And yeah, look at this. You can um, get all the skins and stuff. I don't think... Can you, you can't sell these, right? I think, yeah, these are... Wait. Can you sell, like, these? Uh, they're only... They're only yellows, so they're no good. They're just... Re uh, you can get any relic, though. This is nice. Look, I can get any relic I want, guys. Check this out. Look at that. I can get all the relics, guys. Check it out. It's pretty epic. You did Amnesty that often? I've just left it on for ages. Right? I've just left it there. I haven't... Pl I haven't, you know, changed it. Because you've got to... Th you've got to see, guys. My account is just maxed um, at this point. Look at this. I have 1,100, that's a nice number, 1,111 Mystic Clovers. I, I just have infinite resource. Um, I can't, I can't spend this. I, I'd, I'd have to like delete it, right? There's just nothing, I, nothing of like any kind of value that I could really buy. Yeah. How many gifts of battle? Um, I think I have a bunch in my inventory. Uh, I don't know where I put them though. Let me see. Gift of battle, I have 40. There you go. That is the number. Yeah. Yeah. Do you play too much or does Guild Wars 2 have too little content? I mean, I, uh, it's, ne it's neither of those things. It's just that in a horizontal progression game, the game is eventually finished, right? Um... The game is over, and, and and but that's not a bad thing. I, I don't I don't really care about that. I'm not a player. In fact, if anything, I actually like it. Um, I like that I don't have to care about any loot in this game. If Arena Net, if if Dark, you know, Darkbringer, like came and cursed my account and made it so I could never get loot ever again, 
it wouldn't be important. It wouldn't change my gameplay experience in any way. Like, if, if, all, of my, if all of my items got deleted, it would be irrelevant. Uh, that's good. I like it. For the Tundras, honestly, I was a little disappointed we didn't go back and do the Everbloom. I actually think we could have got a top 25 finish pretty easily. Um, but at the end of the day, not qualifying is not qualifying. We will be back, and I will actually be going full tryhard next time to attempt to qualify for MDI. Yeah. But yeah, 48th is it's pretty bad, to be honest. Not happy with that at all. Um, you know, I would have liked to do the Everbloom again. How far from qualifying uh, in minutes? I think realistically we would have had to find um, about another seven minutes. I think uh, if we actually did the Everbloom correctly, we would have got it in uh, under 18 minutes. So around a 17 minute Everbloom 23, I believe. Uh, which would mean that combined with our rise of 21 minutes, it would give us about a 39 minute overall time. So just below 40. Uh, to qualify, you need 33. So we'd need to find another six to seven minutes. That's a lot. Yeah, it absolutely is. But we were not playing a good comp and we also didn't prepare whatsoever. Uh, I think that uh, it's very doable, actually. Uh, next time, I'm planning on being fully prepared and fully tryhard and everyone's re-rolling to the absolute giga meta. Uh, and I, 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 we're really going to go for uh, TGP next season. We're going to try and qualify for the Great Push, which I think is actually a little bit better for our skill set. I think we're way better at pushing keys than we are at speedrunning because we've never done speedrunning, but we push like every day. Um, so yeah, TGP will be better for us, I think. And yeah, I, I will 100% try and qualify um, for that next season. And we're going to be playing meta, uh, whatever that ends up being. Rated and Vivi have both said they will play Augmentation Evoker if necessary, which it very likely will be. Any other qualifying teams have surprising comps? Um, I wouldn't say it was surprising. It was just that... I mean, a little bit, I guess. Because um, basically the meta was not what people are running on live. Uh, it's because people aren't speedrunning on live. But it was every single team basically ran Vengeance Demon Hunter. That's not a surprise. Uh, Resto Druid, honestly not really a surprise either. And then the DPS, I guess, was a bit spicy. You had Fire Mage, Destruction Warlock, and Shadow Priest. All of those builds, though, especially Shadow Priest and especially Fire Mage, make a huge amount of sense um, because they're both uh, prio damage. So you can kill bosses while killing trash very efficiently and also get rid of high-value targets gets very very fast which is exactly what you want to do for a speed run so not super surprising i guess if you think about it um but you know a, a little bit i guess how do you qualify for tgp exactly the same as the mdr you have to be the top 16 i believe in terms of highest keys pushed and then if there's a tie it's based on that the time Which is better for mental health, WoW raids or Guild Wars 2 raids? I mean, I don't, I don't think there's any answer to that. It, it depends, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm not sure I can really answer that for you uh, in a particularly meaningful way. Uh, the good people of Lion's Arch couldn't answer this for me. Once I made a precursor for Ad Infinitum, can I just sell my stabilizing matrices? Um, uh, you... You do need a couple more, I think, for the rest of the legendary. Um, I believe. Because all legendaries require some stabilizing matrices, but I don't think you need that many. Yeah. Boom! I saw a Gills one and, and Wiko. One of the things I'm still playing is good Zero to Hero. Hey, I'm glad you're enjoying the Zero to Hero. Yo! I watch it every night before going to sleep. Yeah, I've got that ASMR voice. Honestly, maybe not. Yeah. Yes. I was watching Andy do uh, 30 Yalnu on Everbloom. It was, uh, I believe, around 8 minutes. Based. <laughs> Good boss fight. Very good, very good. Incredible. Incredible stuff. Eight minute dungeon boss. Literally longer than Mythic. Very nice. That is the way it should be.
Can you turn the scourge into gold? Yeah, you absolutely can. So you can make gold out of Tessman's Desert Heroics. You can make uh, gold. You can save gold by getting exotic gear with badges of honor. And I guess you could do unidentified dyes as well. And you can save gold by getting transportation charges too, if you need those. So one thing that's really important actually with um, thinking about this, when, when you're thinking about making gold, in your mind, you need to be thinking that saving gold is the same as making gold. I think the expression is a penny saved is a penny earned. And that is very true, both in real life, by the way, and of course, in video games. So if you can use a currency to not spend gold, that is the same as making that gold um, in most situations anyway. That is very important to uh, a really important thing to grasp when you're looking to generate some revenue. Yeah. I wanted to ask, you kick your legs like all the time. Yes. I even do it in my sleep. I move in my sleep a lot, actually. Yeah. There it is. World versus world propaganda. Indeed. <sighs> Axe three there. Boom. Got him. 100 bits. Calling all Guild Wars 2 players. Hop onto the Downs' meta bus. Make at least two gold per hour. Invest all your money into waypointing. Join the meta bus. It's not a train. He's not that fast. Every day at 11 p.m. Chilean time. Not every day, though. Nice. I like it. Dude. You know, Darren's is doing some crazy shit, like 35 gold an hour. About 35 gold an hour or something, dude. The guy's insane on the meta train. Wait, why would you link Teapot Toe? Dude, Teapot Toe was really painful. I actually nearly um, went to the, like, I nearly went to go see a doctor actually over that. The, it was actually so unbelievably painful and it wasn't hurting less that I thought, oh my God, have I actually hurt myself on stream to the point where I actually go and need, need to go and see a doctor? It, it was not good. Yeah. Basically what happened there is, guys, I kicked the radiator and it just peeled the nail on my big toe clean off. The pain was unbelievably bad. Um, not gonna lie. Not a particularly dangerous injury, so there's some mercies. Um... But it was real. It really hurt, actually. It was not nice. Fortunately, it did stop hurting after a while. Uh, so I just kept streaming and it was no problem. I just took some painkillers and then, then it was all good. Um, and it did actually heal okay. I didn't actually have to, like, do anything about it. It, it was able to, like, recover. Uh, but it, it wasn't nice. Is your nail healed now? Yeah, it was okay, actually. It, um, yeah, it, it recovered. Does it have a split? Uh, I don't know. I don't think so. I think it was able to, like, reattach itself somehow. Yeah. Yeah. There it is. Aren't toenails dumb? Like, what is the point? I mean... The prob I mean, they're, they're probably useful in some way. I mean, I... I don't, know what, I don't think we'd really use them exactly. I mean, fingernails are pretty useful, I guess, for, like, opening cans and stuff. I'm not sure if you really, uh, we really use toenails all that much. But then you've got to be, you've got to be really careful about this. Because you don't know what it's like to not have a toenail. Maybe if you didn't have a toenail, something would actually feel really weird and wouldn't be good. But we, we don't know. Because think about it, guys. You might go, man, you know, is it really a big deal if you lose a toe? Actually, yes. Your toes are pretty important. You just don't really notice them because they're always there. You take them for granted, guys. But if you were missing a toe, I think it messes up your balance, right? And maybe it's like, maybe if you lost a toenail, it would screw you up in some way. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and also, Emissy is a foot fetishist, so he wouldn't be into you anymore. So there it is. 
Big toe is the most important for balance. Exactly, you do need that thing. If you don't have that, it's probably not going to be good. Yeah. Yo, Gazaga, thanks for the prime. I appreciate it. Yeah. Tore my ACL last year. Tell me what legs you Oh, yeah, that's not good. You know, my most severe injury was a gym swimming injury. And I, I, I don't know exactly what it was. Uh, it, it was like ligament damage in my shoulder. It, you know, I, I did go see a doctor about it, actually. Um, it was by far... It was by far the worst thing that's ever happened to me. Which, in a lot of ways, is a blessing. Because at the end of the day, I'm alright now. Uh, it wasn't, um, you know, I didn't fucking die. So, you know, that there are, there's small blessings in life, right? But, holy shit. I, I appreciate all of my body parts so much because of that injury. I couldn't raise my arm above, like, here for six months. Seriously, I had basically no use of my dominant arm, by the way, um, for about six months. And I just had to... Uh, I couldn't move it laterally either. Um, or I couldn't move it up or laterally. So I had very limited use of my right hand um, for about six months. So annoying. Holy shit. Um, and now I appreciate my limbs. Yeah. Thanks for 100 bits. Scam train bits. Alcar gifting a sub. And A is also tier 1. Nice. Meme. Very good. The ground of it. Sansil Shroud. I don't think you can. No. You have to enjoy that yellow AoE, I'm afraid. But yeah, that was... Uh, it was not good. And, yeah. And the problem with injuries like that is, is that... I don't know. Maybe they can be fixed now. But when I went to the doctor, they basically said, Yeah, we can kind of fix it for you. Uh, but it will reduce the mobility in your arm. So maybe you don't want that. Um, <laughs> and I was like, oh, well, I guess that's unfortunate. Yeah. And that just, yeah, wasn't a good option, so I didn't go for surgery. They could have fixed it, though. Ah, P Flowerger. That's a good call, actually. That's one of my favorite, uh, favorite peepos. It's a good usage of that there by Melina. There we go. They take the shoulder off. I don't know exactly what they're going to do. I'm no doctor, but I think that they were going to like remove like some fucked up piece of connective tissue or whatever, and just like get rid of it, um, or something. Yeah. Uh, do we not have? Wait, do we not have Peepo Poppy? That's crazy, actually. Wait, how, why do we not have Peepo Poppy? That's a really high tier one. Got to add it back in. Does Peepo Poppy even exist? Maybe it doesn't exist, actually. Yeah. On 7 TV. Let's see. Why do we not have Wise Tree Gathering? I mean, that's a good question. Yeah, I don't... I, Peepo Poppy doesn't exist on 7 TV. It's actually crazy. We're talking about the plant here, guys. I'm not talking about League of Legends. My left wrist broken, reattached of an off position, so I have a semi-wonky arm. Works normally, though. Oh, that's interesting, actually. That's like uh, some some bone magic there. Do you live in the US? No, I live in the UK. This is a long time ago, by the way, guys. Uh, this injury that I had, it, it does still actually bother me to this day. It's un regrettably kind of a permanent injury I have to my, my arm. Um, but it is, it was ages ago. Well, I can't, you know, dude, you know, I know I'm getting old, but I actually can't even remember stuff like this. I actually don't know when it was. It was at least, it was seven years ago or more, though. I, I think, I think it was like seven years ago. It was a long time ago. Yeah. Yes. There it is. Ah. Oh, it's Peepo Flower. It's called Peepo Flower. Interesting. And there's uh, two Virago. I'll, I'll enable Peepo Flower. Here we go. Wait, there's a conflict though. Wait, hang on a minute. We already have Peepo Flower. What is it though? Oh, interesting. We already have... Uh... Oh, wow. This one's quite nice actually. Look. Peepo, he's got a little top hat and it's got Peepos on the, the top of the top hat. Did your shoulder heal completely, or do you feel the injury from time to time? Uh, the injury is always there. Um, it's... 
I don't know how to talk about this from a medical perspective, but it is... I, uh, I, I don't know how to describe this. Like, it's fine and I can lift heavy on it, but um, if I do something incorrectly, it hurts. So in other words, if I do bad technique, I get pain. Um, it, but if I do good technique and I'm activating muscles correctly, uh, it's absolutely fine. I can, in fact, I've lifted my heaviest with this injury, so it hasn't, like, reduced my performance. I mean, it probably has in terms of theoretical limits, like, because I think it is weaker than it would otherwise be. Um, but it hasn't impaired my ability to improve, but it is susceptible to, uh, pain if, uh, and, uh, weakness if I do something wrong. Yeah. Or if I overdo it as well. I, it, it's, um, I, I need to be, very, I'm, I'm very careful. Um, so yeah, there you go. That's the situation. But yeah, broadly speaking, it's fine. It is fine. I broke my arm. I had to quit violin. Do the robust to my left arm. Oh no. That is feels bad. Not ideal. What is your lifting more strength or bodybuilding emphasis? Um uh strength. Particularly application in swimming. So explosive power was like the big thing, right, that um, we would go for. Uh I lifted relatively light weights, uh, but with an emphasis on high numbers of repetitions. And explosive power. So I haven't benched any more than 100 kilograms. 102.5 in particular. And we wouldn't do one reps. We would do fives. Right? With, again, an emphasis on power and speed. Rather than necessarily just lifting as heavy as possible. So um, we would very commonly do five to ten reps of a particular weight. Uh, and a lot of explosive power stuff. So like Olympic lifting. Uh, jump squats, for example, with weight. Uh, a lot of chin-ups. All that kind of thing. Right, uh, lots, lots of jumping activities, like jump, weighted jumping activities, uh, weighted pull activities, uh, and weighted pull activities as well, but with power. Yeah. So yeah, high reps, three to ten reps, um, depending on like how heavy um, we were going. And then the fucking cardio, man. <sighs> yes. I saw more just like above my shoulders when playing football. More than still semi fucked. Yeah, it's definitely one of the most um, annoying things to uh, injure. That's for sure. Uh, shoulder injury is not good. Not good. Uh, not conducive to power because higher ups are more fatigued. You can come and explore some exercises with um, other than the velocity curve. Well, that's why we didn't lift heavy, right? Like um, the the goal wasn't to lift until fatigue. Or, like, not super heavy. Like, we all lifted heavy to build strength. Like, for hypertrophy, obviously. Uh, but we didn't lift, like, mega, mega heavy. Uh, yes. Um, I broke my funny bone as a child. It wasn't funny. Yeah, I mean, that doesn't, that doesn't sound very funny. Laura in the chat. Cute gamer girl's leader. One of those powerful guilds on the EU server. The only thing they fear is 10-man convergence. I've got one gold. Thank you for the one gold. I appreciate that. Boom. What distance do you run comfortably? I'm not much of a runner when it comes to cardio. Uh, I did a lot of stuff on the bike. In terms of running, I actually don't know. Uh, how, how far can I run comfortably? I don't know, about like 10 meters. Uh, then I start like going, this, this is terrible, this sucks. Uh, <laughs> I used to run quite a bit. I'm not sure how much, how long the runs were, but we used to do, uh, like, especially when we were kind of getting back into the swimming season after taking the break for summer, we would just go and run around the park, right? There was like a park nearby to the swimming pool, and we'd just go and run around that. I, I don't know how long it was. I want to say we would, we would do like, um, I want to say like five miles, right? Um, not at a crazy pace. We weren't we weren't runners. Some some people did triathlons. Um, not me so much because I'm fucking shit at running. Uh, but 
<laughs> uh, but yeah, there's a little bit of running. But nothing too crazy, uh, to be honest, in terms of distance. I can, I'm pretty good on uh, rowing and the bike, though. Like, um, like, I can crank out, you know, like 40 miles, 50 miles on the bike. That's not really, you know, we can go pretty hard and do that. That's pretty chill. Haven't done like super long bikes, like really, really long distance. Because I'm not gonna lie, I that just that just takes too fucking long, right? But you know, go out for a couple of hours on the bike. That's that's no problem. And I prefer that actually. Um, I prefer bike rowing, swimming to running a lot. Yeah. Yes. But you can't do it like 20 times under here because of the temperatures. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it like, really cold? It's gonna be rough. Um, it's yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Try if you don't think I'm actually die if I go in colder than negative five. Yeah, I mean if you, I mean if you had like a really good thermal setup, but man, like honestly, what gets really dangerous there is you've got to, you need like the the stuff to keep your head warm, right? And if you're gonna go out and it's that cold, if it's like negative five or something like that, or if it's below zero, you've got to make sure your head's warm and your hands are warm, otherwise you're, you're actually gonna turn into an icicle. You don't want to be an icicle. Incredible. Yeah. Yes. Jester is talking about his time holding a girl's hand and the cookies he made her crumbling. Well, um, I mean, honestly, probably worked out pretty okay. It's the, it's the thought that counts, you know? And that's a very sweet gesture, I think. Making some cookies for someone. Uh, I'm sure she didn't mind. There you go. Negative 30 is when it's actually cold outside. Yeah, I, I haven't been in really, really cold temperatures. Um, not really, really cold anyway. I've been, I've been skiing a couple of times um, in uh, France and Switzerland. Fucking Switzerland's expensive, by the way. Holy shit. Um, and... Um, it was pretty cold there, but not that cold. It's also like a very different type of cold, actually. It, it's like, um, I don't know how to describe it. I, I, I'm, I'm a noob, right, in terms of uh, temperature descriptions. But it's kind of like a weird cold. It doesn't feel that cold, even though it is really cold. Yeah, it's like very dry, and that's like a bit more bearable, I think. Plus 15 is when it's cool outside. Yeah, I mean, look, I live, you know, I, here in the UK, uh, if it goes above, like, 16 degrees, we start to get worried. Start to have a panic attack. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Very moist, it's cold as, uh, is it actual hell sometimes? Yeah, I can imagine that. That's for sure. I'm going in. Dude, I'm missing this fight, and I'm pretty sad about it, to be honest. This is bad. This is not good. Incredible. Moist. <laughs> Wind chills are born measuring the cold. The wind is blowing. The heat blanket already avoided the cause of the most issues. That's true, actually, yeah. And if it's not windy, then it's not going to feel nearly as cold. Yeah. Chill. I mean, chill in Guild Wars 2 is rough as well. You know, if you have chill, you're not happy. Getting out of snow. Yeah, it hasn't snowed. It hasn't snowed where I'm at for so long, actually. It's fucking global warming, man. Unbelievable. But yeah, no, like, I, I, we don't get snow. Where I'm at. You, you do in other places, parts of the UK, but just not really where I'm at. There's Z snow here. And it's not good. It's low tier. Low tier. My current town actually feels a lot colder because it's on the coast. Ah, yes, yeah, so you got some, uh, got more wind in then, I guess. Wind. 
Having really bad droughts here in Canada, dude. No snow. Oh, no. That's not good. Reminder to stay hydrated. Mm. Wait, why did the exclamation mark Guild Wars 2 command just not work? What's up with that? What's the bot doing? The bot is dead. It is over. Wait, exclamation mark meme is also not working. What the hell? I guess it got disconnected or something. Give in. Those that live in Australia get snow like once every 40 years. Speaking of Arctic air current that moves in a particular pattern. Whoa, that's pretty cool actually. Would you recommend WoW for a brand new player in 2024? Would it be too much to catch up? You, no. No. And this is true for any game, by the way. It's, it's never too late to start any MMO. Yeah. You know, like, it's a good game, yeah. I'd recommend WoW. Especially if you're looking... Actually, well, to be, we need to be more specific here. If you're looking for basically like a dungeon simulator with a story attached to it, then yes. WoW is a dungeon raid simulator video game uh, that has a story as well. That is basically the deal. Yeah, the only, um, the only MMO that is... The only MMO that is too late to get into is like an MMO that doesn't even exist. Um, and doesn't have a private server. Because you could say it's too late to get into Wildstar, but... I don't think that's even true, uh, because uh, I believe, and this is where stuff gets really crazy, guys, um, Delta has actually made a fully working Wildstar private server that operates in, Gil in Guild Wars 2 called Nexus. Oh, wait, maybe it's gone, actually. Wait, does it exist? Oh, yeah, it's here. Look, here you go. Yeah, look. Nexus forever. Wow, look at that can play this game right here. Or in some sense, anyway. Yeah. Yeah, private servers are uh, pretty good. I actually used to run a private server um, for World of Warcraft way back in the day. Yeah. It's a fun fact for you. Boom. WoW private servers. Indeed. Although we don't need WoW private servers now, because we have a Season of Discovery, guys. Exciting. What if I want cold detachment from my games? Not a close-knit community. Well, honestly, I feel like MMOs are pretty good for that. Like, um, they're definitely not as social as they used to be. MMOs are uh, very solo-oriented games these days. Very good. Very, very good. I play WoW exclusively on private servers. I actually... Uh, man, this is kind of part of my, like, very extensive research I want to do on WoW. But I actually want to go and play... Um, I want to go and play some private servers purely because I want to play the old raids. I want to go back and do, like, the um, Mythic Shadowlands raids, Mythic BFA raids and stuff like that. And I, I presume there's, like, Shadowlands. I don't, I'm not sure if they have, like, m people raiding Mythic on them, though. They probably do. Are there, are there Shadowlands private servers on your shirt? No, that's just a hole, actually. This this t-shirt has a hole in it. <laughs> um, Shadows of only, only Nathria. Dude, here we go. Look, look, okay, here we go, here we go. What's this? Wait, is this like a gold buying website? Wait, what have I, what have I found here? Okay, WoW private servers. Um, Firestorm or a boss? One star. Well, I mean, it's not looking good. It's definitely not looking good, boys. Okay, here we go. Let's check out all the private servers. Mists of Pandaria servers. Stormforge, two stars? No rating on this one. Tori Wow, three stars. Helios Wow, one star. Anaconda Wow. Yo, let's go. 100 people. Warmane Frostwolf, one star. Raiden Wow, one star. These are fucking dog shit, I guess. This is just this is just not looking good, guys. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> Why are they? <laughs> They're not very, uh, not very highly rated here, guys. How about BFA? Okay. Oh, Firestorm. Wow. Uh, Sethralis. Three stars. Oh, not many people, dude. Not, not many people are playing fucking BFA. <laughs> One hundred to five hundred. <laughs> people playing BFA. It's not looking good, huh? Ooh. <laughs> what about Legion? I bet people are playing Legion, right? Oh yeah, five thousand plus one star. Hmm. Okay. You wow, two star. Anaconda wow, doing a little bit better. Population zero to one hundred. Three stars. Man, private servers are dead. I think the only one that's popular is like Turtle Wow. Uh, I guess stuff like that. I think uh, people like that one. Yeah, I guess the more modern WoW versions are harder and harder to emulate because the game's more complicated. So you have to... You, you have to, like, engineer more and more stuff to make all of the content actually work. Zero to 100. Yeah, nobody's playing Warlords of Draenor, huh? Can't you go out of the always get a feel for it? Nope. You can't. It doesn't work. Um... It doesn't work. You'd have to... I don't even know how you do it. Um, you'd have to... Do them under-leveled, maybe? Maybe if you had everyone at, like, level 50. You could do a level 50 raid in greens or something. I'm not, I'm not sure how that would work. Oh, no. Yeah, we're going to prog Blackhand or what's going on. Yeah, we're going to uh, Firestorm, One Star, Warlords of Dra <laughs> Warlords of Dra <laughs> Gul'dan Realm. That's where we're uh, we're going. Then lock the XP. Yeah, but would that? Ha uh, I, I guess you could. Would that? Well, does that work? Actually, Wow X. I actually don't know if this works. If you make a new character, and you get to, let, let's say there's a raid. I don't know how it works. Let's say um, you you go into a BFA raid at level 60. I, I, don't know, I don't know what level it would be, but let's say it's level 60. If you, if you play it at level 60, does that work? Will it actually be like playing it when it was level appropriate? I, this is actually something I, I, I am ignorant. I don't know if that would work or not. Project 80. Yeah, but that's the whole thing. It's not the same. Um, it's really, really not. And then that was actually bef was that I think that was before the level squish as well. Um, if I'm if I'm not mistaken. And also, especially in the old content, the game is like warped beyond belief, right? I, I don't think that um it really works. Um the tune the way they were bar borrowed power systems of the patch in mind, so the tuning will be uh, way off. There's no way to start your leveling. I know you can start your leveling, but that's not what I'm asking. I'm saying that if you, like, if you did a mythic raid at level appropriate, what would that experience be like? Like, that's what I'm asking. Oh, we're fucked. Wait, th are they really not getting me? That's actually insane. How did I get away there? That's actually crazy. Oh, <laughs> oh there you go. You've been outplayed, my friend. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> you guys out level already by more than 10. 11 plus will activate legacy scaling. Well, that's what I mean. Yeah, you need to not do that. You need to do it level appropriate. That's actually interesting. Has nobody tried this? I, 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 because I, I feel like people in the chat don't know what would happen if you did that. Uh, but I mean, to be fair, I don't know either, so. Because I was thinking, because I want to go and do, like, the old Mythic fights, and go and do some older fights on Mythic, right? But the problem is, is that I don't really know a good way to do that. Um, you, uh, I don't know if it would work in retail, or if you a private server or not. Out of all the games you like, play, like, WoW, Guild Wars 2, and Final Fantasy XIV, which one do you like the best? Um, it's a difficult question to ask. Uh, I think... And I, which one I like the best out of all the games that I play, the the actual answer there is 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 kind of a meme answer. It's 
probably StarCraft 2. If there was um if there was one game that I play right now and I had to play only that game forever, it would definitely be StarCraft, I think, um, overall. Uh, but in terms of MMO, uh, right now I like WoW the best. But um, historically it's been Guild Wars 2. So there is that. Uh, I think it might be hard to gear progress to the point where you have gear for the fight, as M plus for that level wouldn't be available. That is true, yeah. I don't know how you'd handle that. You'd have to... I think what you could maybe do is... Okay, you, you could be clever about this. Um, you could boost yourself, right? Someone could come in on an alt and farm the raid a couple of times to give you the gear to do the fight. So in other words, do a couple of rounds of mythic, um, a full mythic clear, right? With someone boosting you, feed that goal, or even one of your own ults, right? You could have an ult, you could have two accounts, right? And boost yourself through it and feed yourself all the gear from the lockout. And then, and then do the raid with that gear, basically. Boom. To be Algol on the Observer at level 30 without the raid having items level higher than 107. Yeah, the thing is, though, is um, uh, what I'm kind of asking here and it, it, uh, is, like, how is that, how does that experience compare to um, actually uh, playing Wrath raids on, like, uh, Wrath, for example. Like, Wrath Classic. Like, how does that compare uh, to that? Because my read on it would be that it's going to be way easier. Uh, I, I think, um... It would not be like that. Uh, it would be incomparable to the original experience, essentially. Oh, the map's full? It's over. I can't get in. Zero content, man. Boom. Any Titan gamers? Spin at your own private server and gather the boys from Jolly Cooperation. Yeah, uh, the only thing is it will probably be like busted as hell. I think it just wouldn't work. I think all the fights will be broken. A little of a crafty gear from the expansion of what you're trying to do. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. I, guys, I don't care about the gear. Like, I, honestly, I'm going to have to go test this. I'm, I'm asking, like, how would the experience compare to the original experience? Like, how, what, what is that actually like? Like, how does that work? How does the scaling actually um, modify it? Because my guess, again, would be that it would be completely distorted and essentially nothing like it. But uh, I don't know. I'm in, by the way, guys. Look, I'm in deep. You'd honestly be amazed, by the way, guys. You know the biggest mistake people uh, make in World vs. World? They're always way too timid. Look at this shit. Look, guys, I'm getting away with this, right? I'm not getting away with it anymore. It's over. Wait, I still am. Let me in. All right, people are way too timid in general. We can use this through the wall, get stability, and then go out again. Uh, in general, just get in there, guys. Like, a lot of the time, you can be right in the middle of the enemy Zerg, and they won't kill you. Yeah. Huge. Yeah. Because in my opinion, by far the weakest point of WoW is that insanely good content basically gets removed from the game. Like, I, I'm crying, guys. I can't go and do Freehold right now. And who knows when Freehold's coming back? They do so many fucking dungeons, right? Uh, they do like a billion dungeons all the time, and they've got a squillion of them in the game that maybe they'll never bring Freehold back into Mythic Plus. How am I gonna, how am I gonna live with th knowing that, guys? How can I survive knowing that that's the case, right? Um, and Amirdrasil is going away. That is so bad. Like, Tindril is temporary content. That is shit. It's so bad. You know? Like, Sarkarath is gone. Rashok is gone. Um, this it's terrible. This is lame, okay? It's a huge feels bad, man. Yeah, seriously. WoW removes more content in a single expansion than Guild Wars 2 releases in like five years. And that's not even a roast, that's just true. Um, and I hate it. <laughs> ah. 
It is so feels bad, man. Oh no, it's over. Oh, I'm fucking dead. The swarm, the defenders, the soldier ants have arrived. If uh, if Fate was all raids available except only uh, one tier set, it would be cool. Yeah, it would be way better. I didn't know it was like I didn't realize it was like rotating weekly. That sucks. Yeah. It's a feels bad man right there. I saw Commanders not use any skills while commanding in World versus World. I'm not sure about that one. I'm not sure if that really makes a lot of sense. Doesn't seem like a good way to go about playing the game. Dude, you know what's uh, you know what's the thing? Wait, are we keying today? I don't think we can, actually. There's no rated. Rated is over. He's gone. Uh, in WoW, they remove competitive content and in Guild Wars 2, it's missing. It's a price for regular new content. Well, no, it's a price for having the stupid bullshit um, uh, vertical progression system. That's the, uh, the trade-off. And it's not even really a trade-off, because those things aren't disconnected. Like, if WoW had horizontal progression, they could still release the same amount of content, right? Like, it, it wouldn't be like, oh, oh, we're changing to a horizontal progression game. Now we can't release content anymore. That's, no, of course not. That's not how it works. Um, it's not related. Yeah. Um, MO's, I know it's like set change. Well, that's the thing. I... They, um, like, um, uh, like, MMO players like it how it is, right? They, they like, um, vertical progression. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with being a vertical progression enjoyer. Yes. Down's going to have fun. Yeah, that's what they should do in WoW, to be honest. They should do that. But they probably won't. Um... There, there is this, man, it's, it, it's annoying actually. Um, WoW has this, WoW, do you know what WoW has? WoW has a slight complacency problem. Um, it's complacent because all of its problems are semi-irrelevant because it releases so much content. It's actually kind of annoying to me. Um, like we could say, oh, Blizzard. You guys should make it so you can play the old raids. And they're going to say, why? We're releasing, we're releasing another 10 boss raid in six months, bro. Like, what's the big deal? You're going to have new content. And it's like way more than any other MMO. Who cares? Right? Like, just, just play the new stuff, bro. Like, oh yeah, there's, there's like another eight Mythic Plus dungeons incoming. Just play that shit, bro. Like, this is kind of the de they're suffering from success here in a really annoying way um a lot of design flaws in the game um a lot of design flaws in world of warcraft are covered up by the fact that they just release a lot of stuff they just make stuff so it it, it just doesn't get changed like a lot of things that would make the game way better don't happen because in a way it's just not necessary um they don't need to do that uh, because they just release a, a loads of content, uh, and then people go, oh yeah, I guess I'll just play the new content then. Vertical progression? It's not vertical progression, actually. Um, it's not that, because they could still release the same amount of content if there was vertical progression, or it best of both worlds. I, I, I do really like what Final Fantasy does, where it like scales you down. It's a bit weird that it kind of um, time capsules you, and you don't have new abilities, but that's to preserve power creep, so uh, honestly, I like that, actually. I think that's kind of how it should be in a lot of ways. Uh, because of that, but it's definitely a bit weird. Will be a probably a bit jarring, I imagine. Um, but wait, what is happening to me? Oh yeah, I'm on, I'm on the gate. Uh, but that is a good system as well. It's just that WoW doesn't really need to implement a system like that, and, and therefore they don't, which is uh, annoying to me. Then being a vertical progression fan is the problem. Well, not not really. I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with like enjoying vertical progression and liking that fact. And also, the other thing is, is that um, 
there are some benefits to uh, old content getting way easier, as annoying as I find this. What's um, convenient is that it means that if you have, like, a really hard boss and, like, really hard to get skins and stuff like that, um, eventually anyone can get them, right? Because the content just becomes easier when you have better items and, like, more gear level and stuff. Yeah. Uh, doing a raid FC in WoW, if it was a, if it was a vertical pro game, if it wasn't a vertical pro game, they had raid full clip. How many raids are there in WoW? It's actually insane. There's such a disgusting amount. Um, it's ridiculous. It would be completely ridiculous trying to even attempt that. Yeah. Today is a good day. Let's check it out what we got. Whoa! Yo! That's big, actually, bro. Dude. Tainted raid chart with leech. Man, Snizzle, if Snizzle had that, I would be very happy. That's actually massive. That's a huge drop, actually. What a huge drop. Oh, we died instantly. Oh, I'm not in the squad, to be fair. That's, uh, it's left. Dude, the fucking gyro's rezzing me. Oh. Oh, I'm up. Oh, God. I giga corrupted, man. Whoa, do you see that? I, like, almost, like, uh, snaked around the edge. Oh, we got him. Oh! Woo! Yeah, just drop the raid shot. Is that for your vengeance, uh, Demon Hunter Vic, or for your paladin? There is no prestige in WoW since they introduced the store. Ah! Uh, kind of, yeah. Oh, uh, if you mean token, anyway. Store, not so much. Token, definitely. Um, because essentially with the it, the advent of the WoW token, it means that uh, it, it's, you can essentially buy um, Cutting Edge pretty easily. Uh, I think the real prestige is, is in the actual tournaments, like in the MDI, uh, the leaderboard for Raider IO, and obviously World's First Racing, and TGP. So there definitely is prestige, uh, but you're not wrong. Um, like, the ability to buy in-game services absolutely does remove prestige from the game. Absolutely, yeah. Um, like, it is it is what it is. You could always buy that. Yeah, but way less people would do it. And it was way less feasible unless you RMT'd. Right? Like, this is the, um, this is the deal, right? The thing about buying a service in a game is that before the WoW token... It would be prohibitively expensive to do this unless you bought RMT. Yeah, you know, like for example, if you want to buy Cutting Edge, I think Echo sells Cutting Edge for like 15 mil, maybe even more than that. Actually, I think I think they sold Tindril for th for third. No, they sold Smolderon. So the first seven bosses in the raid, I believe they were selling that for like 13 and a half mil. You aren't farming that. No, you're you're not farming that. Um, the only way people are getting that gold is by buying WoW tokens. And by the way, that's like 500 bucks. Like, they're, they're people who buy boosts, they are literally dropping $500 to buy a boost to get these mythic clears, right? Um, and yeah, the ability to do that and, and essentially to make that, the fact that it's so accessible, anyone with like a spare 500 bucks, which by the way is a surprising amount of people, we're all fucking poor over here, but actually you'd be amazed how many whales there are out there who are perfectly happy to spend $500 on a video game to get a funny title uh, or to get a, a little number next to their name that says they're 7 out of 9 mythic. A lot of people want to do that. Um, but back then you'd be risking your account with RMT. Uh, or you just wouldn't do it because of RMT, or it, you just wouldn't even know that you could do that. You're certainly not farming it um, to be able to get that. So, yeah. It, it, like, stuff like the WoW token. And being able to buy gold in any game uh, annihilates prestige. So anything like gems, anything like um, the WoW token. I, I don't know if... Um, I don't know other games. I'm sure other games have, like, similar stuff, right? I'm sure they do. Um, like, anything like that utterly annihilates the value of anything in game no reward in game has any prestige if it can be purchased with real money that is just a fact right there's no way around that now the question is is do you consider that inherently bad thing that's where things get more complicated right maybe you don't care about that maybe you think it's good that you can farm gold to pay your sub sure Maybe you think it's good that you can buy uh, buy gems with gold and therefore be able to purchase gemstar items, right? Yeah, sure. 
uh, there are upsides. There are pros and cons. The downside of being able to um, purchase gold is that all MMO rewards are worthless. No MMO reward has any value um, if you can buy it with real money. Simple as that. That's the downside. The upside is, is that it does make the game accessible. It allows players especially players where they have a currency that doesn't square too well against the US dollar to actually play the game in an affordable way. Um, and it allows people who don't want to spend money on the game to essentially play the game uh, relatively easily and then simply kind of basically someone else pays their sub. When you've got a system like Guild Wars 2 Gems or WoW tokens, someone else is paying for you. That's what's going on, right? Um, that's the deal. So when you buy gems, you are buying someone else's gems that they spent real money on. When you buy a WoW token, you're buying someone else's WoW token that they spent real money on. So someone else is paying your sub. Someone else is paying for the Guild Wars 2 servers. And th that is an upside, right? Like, you'd be a fool to deny it. Even the most anti-microtransaction person, which is me, I'm still going to go, yeah, there's some advantages to the way this model works. Um, especially in terms of accessibility. There have to be prestige elements in every game. Yeah, but the thing is, and this is where things get interesting. Realistically, um, the real prestige stuff is always the competitive element. And the competitive element is actually isolated from the in-game reward structure. Um, absolutely. Um, absolutely. Um, nobody cares that there's no, like, special thing, right, that you get for getting worlds first, right? People care about worlds first. Or even top 10. Like, people care about the leaderboard, the number. How well did you do? Who did you beat? Same as PvP, right? And obviously some of these things in various games have monetary rewards, right? Like, you know, win the tournament, you get you get a big payout, right? Uh, you know, you can get some sponsor deals, right? All this kind of stuff. So there is like a reward, like an external reward structure to this as well. But like the big thing is like, oh shit, this guy's in that guild. He's sick. This guy uh, won this crazy tournament, right? Like it's actually divorced from the actual reward structure in the game. Like that's where the prestige is. Like the prestige is how good are you at the video game? Who did you beat? How fast did you do it? Did you get worlds first? Did you win the PvP tournament? Like, and, and that's why in a way, like the in-game rewards kind of losing a bit of their value it's not really the end of the world from the competitive perspective, in my opinion, because um, the the competitive player has a lot of kind of third party things or even first party, right? Like games companies organize their own tournaments, right? Um, that ha ha implements that prestige in a better way. Yeah. Uh, before WoW token, people use PayPal to pay for gold on website. WoW token changed nothing. This is a ridiculous take. Uh, do you think more or less people started buying gold? Um when the wow token was it was was added like yeah obviously more right like way more people are going to buy gold when it's literally endorsed by the company right that, that's the issue here did people buy gold back then yeah hell yeah of course they did um do more people buy gold now because of the wow token absolutely yes yeah way more people Way more people. And hell, you can even see that mindset go into vanilla WoW, by the way, guys. Um, do you know do you know a big reason why so many people buy gold in vanilla WoW? It's because they're used to it from retail. And I'm I'm I think I'm serious there as well. Yeah, absolutely. Like buying gold in vanilla WoW is rampant because people wanna play um vanilla WoW like they play retail WoW. Uh, especially Season of Discovery, which is kind of a little bit like Wrath of the Lich King. And Wrath of the Lich King is a gold buying fiesta. I know multiple people who play that game who enjoy buying gold. They love buying gold. That's how it is. Does that mean, um, for instance, you don't believe that GM and SC2 um, has limited to no prestige through the existence of boosting services? I think... The thing is about GM is that GM has an anti-boost measure. Um, in StarCraft 2. And I, I think a lot of games have stuff like this. I imagine, like, MOBAs have stuff like this too. If you get in, if you get into Grandmaster in StarCraft, if you don't play, it just boots you. So, um, you can't... And the only way to kind of, quote, get Grandmaster is to actually get into Grandmaster in StarCraft 2 and stay there. For example, 
Um, if I waited until the ladder reset in StarCraft 2, uh, which is like every couple of months, the season resets, and I immediately just played 30 games, day one, I cheesed every game, so it's like five minute games, my account would be in Grandmaster, right? Because my MMR, it, it's when I last played, it was about 4.6k on EU. That's not Grandmaster rating. You have to be around about 5k, I think, is, is what EU is at these days, um, if you want to actually stay in GM. But my account would easily get into Grandmaster, because not enough people have actually played to where, you know, Grandmaster is actually populated. People don't, like, play on server reset, right? Like, what the fuck? Um, because people are asleep, right? Or, or they're just, you know, not everyone plays, like, 30 games a day. Uh, but I could do that. But the thing is, you don't get, like, the trophy of being in Grandmaster because it will just demote you, right? It's, it's just going to get rid of you um, very quickly. I, I would lose Grandmaster within days, um, either by not playing or by playing and losing and not being able to maintain enough uh, rating, right? So stuff like that in, in leaderboards, as long as they're designed well, it typically holds its prestige pretty well. However, you're not wrong. Um, just being Grandmaster, to be frank, isn't very prestigious. There's a loads of players in Grandmaster in StarCraft 2 or kind of around that MMR range that nobody's ever heard of, right? If you want to be someone in StarCraft 2, then you play the ESL. There's like an ESL weekly, ESL monthlies, and ultimately there is the tournaments, right, that you can go and play in. If you want to be someone, that's where you play. You're not playing the ladder, right? Like, nobody cares about your rank one laddering hero, right? People want to see you win the ESL Cup. People want to see how do you fa face off against someone like Clem, right? How, do, how about you versus Serral? That's what people want to see. That's where the prestige is. Also, Mela, my queen with the raid. Appreciate that, bro. Yeah. Yes. There are lots of people who are considered good. Frequent challenger players who don't finish challenger in a season. Right, right, for instance. Othnan doesn't bother uh, finishing challenger. Yeah, exactly. Th that's kind of my point though, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. I completely agree with you. Yes. Um, like, because the prestige is shifted um, a lot more. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Like, uh, and to... Okay, here's, here's another one, right? Uh, Boyce. Boyce is a great example in, um, in PvP. Boyce does not play ladder seriously at all. He, he really doesn't. He plays meme builds. He plays solo queue. He plays at 4 a.m. It's not uncommon to see Boyce in plat 2, right? right? If, he, if he's had a particularly rough set of games, you know, kind of in the 1600 uh, rating region. That's not uncommon. Uh, <laughs> but... Nobody's going to go, oh, look at this noob, right? Like, he's not finishing every season in Legend in, in the Guild Wars 2 ladder, right? Um, it, it's just that it, it's more than that. Like, if people know you're good at the game, people know you're good at the game. They're not looking at the leaderboard to, to see that you're good at the game. Pay uh, $400. You know... The... The gizmo thing annoys me so much because nobody cares if you have the gizmo. People care if you won the gizmo. And also, it is worth noting, by the way, the gizmo actually has held prestige really well. Um, it's only been sold, I think, in total, like seven times. And almost all of those illegitimate gizmos actually don't exist anymore because almost every single account has been banned, by the way. Um, so Arena's done a good job there. Oh, man. Honestly, you, you, you know one of like those drama channels or like commentary channels, guys? You could do such a good video essay on how the reputation of Guild Wars 2 PvP was systematically destroyed by misinformation and useful idiots in the Guild Wars 2 community, mostly on the subreddit and the forums. Oh, man, it's so fucking rough. It honestly brings a tear to my eye. Like, seriously, I, I really think that misinformation is one of the major things that damaged the Guild Wars 2 PvP scene. It, it really sucks. It really does. Um, but yeah, extreme misinformation is one of the worst things that's ever happened to the Guild Wars 2 PvP community. And again, people want to believe it. Because unfortunately, um, 
Unfortunately, Guild Wars 2 Plus, I guess this is, this is probably true, to be honest, in other MMOs. I don't know. You guys can probably call me out if I'm wrong on this. But in general, people don't like players who win in PvP games. I, I, I think. And it's very true in Guild Wars 2. People hate the top PvP players because they win. And they keep winning. Um, and I think it probably is because it is so stale. It's, you know, PvP is so stale and the same people win every single time. And I think that does build resentment um, over time. Like, if the same people keep winning and the same people keep farming the tournament. I think it pisses people off, right? Um, at some point. So I think it is uh, just a standard thing that happens. But people wanted to hate these Guild Wars 2 players. They really wanted to hate them. Um, they absolutely did. It's kind of the same with SC, actually, as well. Which sucks, because they're honestly really good guys. Um, and they, they do a lot for the community. But people kind of have this resentment against snow crows right like ooh, you know they're they're the the guild and they're they're doing all the records and they're they're rigging the meta and oh my god you know they just post the benchmarks and oh, all this kind of stuff right it, it, it happens in pvp as well yeah yeah and there is this kind of resentment that builds up i think yeah yes Very nice. Uh, we peasants can't verify the information. How do we check how many gizmos were sold? And doesn't post about it, so we'll live by the gossip because gossip uh, generates emotions. Uh, to be honest, I, I actually have to kind of take the L here, to be honest. It's because people like me don't challenge it nearly enough. Um, you know, because, you, you know what? You know what? I'm just going to say it. It ain't worth it. Um, the people who engage in misinformation... I don't want to interact with them. I don't want these people coming after me, basically, because they're fucking unhinged. Okay? Um, it's It ain't worth it. It, it ain't worth it. Um, if I was getting paid a lot, then maybe, but I don't want to wade into this stuff. If I wanted to, yeah, sure. I could probably have contested a lot of the bullshit a lot more, but to be honest, I just don't want to deal with it. Right? Um, and I don't think anyone does. I don't think anyone wants to deal with this stuff. Yeah. 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 Guild Wars 2 PvP should be deleted. Yeah. Still hasn't subbed. Agreed. I like that name, actually. That's good. <laughs> Remote tiles are no boosting or win trade? Nah, people would still fucking do it. It would definitely reduce it, but the thing is, that's no good. That's like punishing the vast majority of well-behaved players just because you can't be bothered to actually deal with the problem. That's not good. That's really bad. The worst thing to happen to Gilsu is CMC? Fuck no. Um, CMC knows what he's doing. I have my trust in CMC. Yeah. Yes. Very good. Without worry about Jake Quarry. Yeah, true, actually, true. Yes. The winter thing is cope. Nah. Um, good... Good players don't win trade. This is the, this is why it's sinister misinformation, right? Like, some people win trade, but it's not the good people, right? Good people aren't the ones doing the win trading. It's bad people who do win trading, pretty much. Yup. And regrettably, yeah, uh, like, I'm, I'll just say it. Like, a lot of the time, in a lot of seasons, I'm pretty sure a lot of rank 1s have been win-traded, but it hasn't been by good people. Uh, most of the time, anyway. There have been a few cases of, like, actual good people doing win-trading, but it's actually extremely uncommon. It's mostly mediocre players. Like, um, so, there's a really good saying. This is, um, oh man, I'll see if I can remember the saying. It's, I think it's what, um, it, it's something that Carl Yob says, right? In his videos. Um... 
People don't cheat to get a fast time. People cheat to get a time faster, right? Like that's, that's what motivates cheating. It's people who think they deserve rank one, but they don't want to put in the time for it or they, they haven't been able to get it yet. Like that is when people start cheating. Um, it is that type of moment. But it's winter for USD, for instance. The thing is, though, okay, I want to be really clear about this. Um, as far as I'm aware, good players, I don't... I, I'm actually not going to say this, because I actually don't know. But um, the gizmo stuff, that isn't win trading. That is account sharing, right? And this is going to sound like a little bit of coat, but I want to explain this. If Zan plays on someone else's account... It doesn't change the outcome of the tournament. It's not a win trade. If Zan had played on his main or his, or someone else's account, he's still winning because 55 is much better than anyone else. And the same thing with the USA. Helio, of course, did a bunch of this stuff, right? Um, he's really good. He's going to win no matter what. There's no win trading. Win trading implies that the outcome of the match was affected. It wasn't. Um, the outcome of the match was never affected with gizmo selling. That doesn't make it better, but it's actually really important to be precise here. Um, it's really important to be precise with what's going on. Um, the only thing that changed is that someone played on the wrong account, and then that account was then either sold to someone else or simply returned to the original owner, which is absolutely permaban worthy. Uh, both of everyone involved in that should be permabanned, obviously. Um, however, to be clear, that is not the same thing, uh, and the reason I am drawing this distinction is because the integrity of the event was not affected. As in, the winner didn't change. Uh, it was simply that, uh, like, no, no, no team threw, right, or manipulated the match. They manipulated the reward structure. That's not the same thing. It's both permabannable, though. But it's important to draw that distinction. Yeah. Can't understand how people can take Gilsey PB seriously in 2024. I mean, people don't really don't. Yeah. Or decision. Exactly. I completely agree. But th but those two things are totally different, right? Um, that's a really different thing. Um, because what's happened with Guild Wars 2 PvP asymmetry, and this really genuinely makes me sad, is that the way people look at Guild Wars 2 PvP right now is they go, oh. There's no point in even trying to win because winning is impossible. People think winning is impossible because players will manipulate the outcome. And I don't blame people for this. Essentially, misinformation has led to people coming to that conclusion. And it's not irrational. If you believe what people say about PvP, you would believe that, right? You would actually think that there's no way you can possibly win because players manipulate the outcome of every month the AT and of the leaderboard. Uh, however, this is not the case. Um, you, If you... Uh, start playing PvP, and you improve, you can win the monthly. It will not be cheated away from you. You can win the monthly AT. And that means the integrity of the event is still there. You have to be better than the other guy, but it's doable. You can win. The leaderboard, I will actually admit, um, it, there is some legitimacy to the idea that the, the leaderboard is not legitimate, because it is actually, regrettably, quite common for rank 1 to be win traded, which actually does really suck. But if you want to get rank 10, that's pretty easy, to be honest. That's doable. Um, and, like, top 5, probably, you can probably do. Uh, but, yeah, rank 1 actually might be difficult to get because of manipulation. That actually is true. But that doesn't mean that you can't get a high rating, though. I'm not sure if people actually win trade anymore. I don't know. I, what's going on in this season? Uh, oh, wait. Is it... Wait, is it... Is it 5v5 right now? Oh, it's... Uh, yeah, it is. Yeah, it's Conquest right now. Dude, the big worm. A spree. Eh, yeah, honestly, these win rates look pretty legit. 30, 33 and 2 is actually very possible. Although, yeah, it's doable. It's doable, to be honest. Oh, look, Boyce is back. Let's go. Thirty-three and two is very high, but it's you know not impossible. You can see boys thirty-three and nine, so it's. Wait, is this two v two? I thought it was um conquest. No, it says conquest here. 
I wonder what the ultimate cause of people not caring about PvP. One would hope it's something silly like reward structure, because most commanders have meaningless or noises and reward structures. It's mostly because the game was just left to rot. Like, very bad balance, very bad management, incomplete systems, and actually, um, competitive neglect. Uh, like, Aenor didn't really bother moderating it. Um, Aenor didn't really, like, do stuff like punishing AFKers. Um, dealing with bad behavior in PvP, that's not handled very well. Um, dealing with really bad behavior in Monthly ATs wasn't really dealt with very well. Um, but yeah, bad balancing, bad management. That's the deal. Do you only do PvP and Guild Do you play PvP? I play everything, pretty much. How is the leech hunting? I know we have a D command that systematically hunts them down and blocks them and tries to spawn fresh to avoid them. Um, can, can, wait, is that... Wait, can you find this? I... Here's the thing, awesomeness. Uh, and actually, I'm not, I'm not even, like, memeing here about NA here. Is it worse on NA? Because I've actually done quite a lot of investigations. I even played a little bit off stream. Yes, guys, I logged into Guild Wars 2 off stream. I did. Um, I didn't see anything. I, I simply haven't found this, like, infestation of leeches. I just don't see them. And maybe I'm looking in the in the wrong place. Maybe I, I just don't, I'm just not an expert yet. Maybe I've just been very, very lucky. All those things are obviously possible. But, um, I simply haven't seen this behavior. Like, you know, I, like, you know, I go in a map and there's like three people AFK. Like, whatever, who cares? Um, you know, but I haven't seen these like really big clusters. Um, you know, like this like really high amount, you know, it's just something that I haven't seen. Oh shit. We're in trouble. Oh, I think he actually might die there. Ah, uh, that was bad. I, I could have actually lived there with Shroud. It's over. I have been defeated. Five seconds of energies in the Su-1 platform? I, I haven't, though. That's the thing. I really, really haven't, you know. I really haven't. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it in Dragonstorm. Um, oh wait, we got a portal inside again. Yo! Oh, that's big! Fucking covert ops! How do you define leeches? I am including hard leeches only. And when I say hard leeches, I am specifically talking, um, about, uh, specifically talking about people who are fully AFK, are not participating in any way, uh, and simply wait either for the end of the event to tag it, or AFK with a turret build, a minion build, or something like that, which tags the event, giving them full rewards. I am not counting people who are kind of Netflixing and playing on one monitor like semi-AFK. That's legit, that's fine, that's whatever. Um, I'm not including people who are bad, right, and just don't do a lot of damage, or don't really know what's going on, right? All that kind of stuff, people who don't know what's going on. Um, I'm talking specifically about hard leeching. Uh, so, as in, they are totally AFK, not doing anything, uh, or they simply wait at the end and jump in, and then do what they're going to do. Content streaming? I believe that's the setting that kind of downloads the game while you're playing. So, in other words, you know when you hit the, you know how you can hit the play button, right? Like, before the game is fully loaded? It's like, um, how it, how it handles that, basically, is, is my understanding of it. Oh, shit, we've got to go defend this tower. Yeah, that's what I think. I just don't think there are that many people who do that. Like, and I think what you'll see is, is sometimes you'll see, like, really aggressive amounts, like someone multi-boxing or something like that with, you know, a bunch of NGs or whatever. But, yeah, in my experience so far, in pretty much every map, I I've seen, like, a couple of people doing it. Um, and I think the one where I saw the most, actually, was Kai Neng. I, in the Kai Neng meta event, uh, there were, like, five people who were AFK waiting for the boss to spawn at the end. My understanding is that's, like, a really popular one to basically skip the pre-event on because it's kind of boring and it's just whatever. Um, so that was where I saw the most severe thing. But I was really surprised. I didn't really see it in Dragonstorm. There was, like, three people AFK. Yeah, sure, who cares? Um, convergences are, like, three people AFK. Yeah, who cares? Doesn't matter. Um, there's, like, there's not, it's not that relevant. Um, so, yeah. My conclusion, actually, is, and, you know, I will always follow the evidence, just like AFK farming, leeching is not actually a big deal. Um, not in terms of, like, actual gameplay experience, it's, it's kind of irrelevant, uh, in Guild Wars 2. I will say that that doesn't mean it's not necessarily a problem, um, because I think anything 
that is really ruining the experience of players is a problem, regardless. Wait, why would you name your guild SARS, by the way? Okay. <laughs> I wonder I wonder if this is intentional, guys. Like this has gotta be intentional, right? Like <laughs> Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> SARS. As in severe acute respiratory syndrome, right? As in, you know, yeah. As in that. I think bots are making less gold than the average player. They're probably making more because they do efficient tasks than the average player, but a, a, a player who knows what they're doing, yeah, will make way more gold than a bot. Do you think Guild Wars 2 will have leaderboards and hard mode and all PV modes eventually? Maybe one of the upcoming expansion paths? Uh, extremely unlikely. They'll do challenge modes and raids and strikes though, but not for like open world stuff. Very good. Incredible. Yeah. Is leeching uh, not collecting the coins during the pinata? I mean, I guess so, yeah. Nice. The UK King has cancer. Wait, really? Is that like breaking news? Well, I mean, unlucky. 17 minutes ago. This is hot off the press, guys. Oh my God. What should bring for the next X-Pack? What do you like it to be about? I mean, I don't really have much of a preference on it. Uh, what it's about. I actually like the, I like the way they're going with the, the smaller stories with Soto. I hope they keep doing that, actually. Um, to be honest, like I don't want to see any big story arcs. I I think that MMO storytelling is kind of bad actually with big story arcs. I, I'm not impressed by that stuff. I like the smaller stories, and I think Soto is really good at that. Yeah, you know it's weird. I've I've got to play through all of WoW for this reason because I played through some of um, Battle for Azeroth, right? And I was really impressed with the story, actually. Like, th this is the the thing, actually. I was like, man, this is actually really good. This is this is actually highly competent. It, this is quite a quite a, you know quite a good storyline. Yeah. It's still uh, world ending in Soto. Well, something can be world ending in Soto, but not part of like a mega five expansion long storyline. Yeah. Good content. I like it. Yeah. Incredible gameplay, guys. Incredible content. Incredible juice. Legion was pretty good as well. Yeah, I haven't played Legion. I wish these mini acts were to be less like Soto and more like Winds of Change from Guild Wars 1. Yeah, Winds of Change was actually pretty good, yeah. Yeah, uh, that was nice. That was more of like the Season 1 kind of stuff, actually. But yeah, it was good. A lot of the Guild Wars Beyond stuff was actually really high tier, I think. All of it. All of it was kind of interesting. Because what you had? You had Warring Kryta, you had Winds of Change, and you had Hearts of the North. All of those actually very interesting stories. Very different and very interesting stories. Um, it was really good. Yeah, it was really good. Actually. Yeah. WoW story, the worst way you get into it, is very cool on the surface. Well, that's the way you've got to take it. I don't think the WoW story is supposed to be taken super seriously, to be honest. Like, does the lore really make sense? Honestly, probably not. Um, but does it look kind of cool? And is the voice acting pretty cool? Are uh, the cinematics pretty cool? Absolutely. They, they definitely are, yes. Uh, they're very good at presenting that. Like the the thing that Blizzard has always done really well, right, is that you can you can look at a WoW cinematic, have absolutely no idea what it means, and go, "Yo, this is actually pretty cool." Uh, you know, this is this is quite exciting. I mean, think about it. Like, 
one of the most popular and you know everyone always brings this one up right like the wrath of the lich king cinematic trailer it sh doesn't show you anything right not really um you know it's just the music is good the character design on arthur's is insanely good there's a giant dragon there's undead the dead king the father of arthur's is giving a um uh, what would you even call it? It's like a semi-ironic speech, right? Uh, uh, like, <laughs> regarding Arthas being a paladin, right? As compared to, like, what he's turned out as being right now, right? Is what it is. Yeah. The War Within and uh, Shadowlands and Matt trailers have been my two favorite. Yeah, I mean, the, the, I'm not gonna lie. The Shadowlands trailer was really fucking cool. Yeah, it's a contrasting speech, right? Like, it's like, ah, yeah, look, you know, look, look, look what's happening. Ah, what a meme. But, yeah. Um, yeah, Matt, I, may, I need to maybe call Man of Base, because, yeah, this is, he actually triggered me to investigate leeches, because I, he, I saw this tweet from Man of Base, um, about the, <laughs> Jesus Christ, what is this? Okay, wait, <laughs> ooh, is there a dragon's end going on right now? Let's check these spots, we're gonna use this as a guide. Okay, guys, get your little investigator glasses on, and your detective Sherlock Holmes hats, let's go... Let's get in there. Yes. Uh, following your zero here, one of the way you get ascended, gear is the best way today. It is the best way to go today, except now there's, an, uh, there's a way that you do first. So the methods I show in, in the series are amazing. However, good news, Anet gave you the Wizard's Vault. That allows you to get a free ascended weapon, basically, for 600 Astral Acclaim, which is ridiculously easy to get. That's super, super you can get that in like a day, easy. Um, and three armor pieces as well. Um, three armor pieces. Uh, and that resets, like, every every major update, basically. So, do this first, then do the other stuff. Uh, also, the Wizard's Vault is overpowered, by the way. Um, you should you should definitely do it. Yeah. All right. Okay, hang on a minute. I need to go to Dragon's End. I'm not sure if it's being run right now, though. But, yeah, yeah let's, let's see if we can do some investigations. Common hiding place in Dragon's End. This is at the southern waypoint, I think. Oh, yeah. Okay, we're in. We're in. Wait, is there actually a map, though? I'm in. I'm in. 300 Astral Acclaim Max. Ah, uh, it's just so you don't, like... It, it, so you expend it. It's to force you to spend it. They want you to engage with the system. They want the economy to flow. Alright, here we go. I will actually help this group, obviously, uh, when they get to the boss. Oh, oh, no. This guy's playing. And by the way, this is not my map. So leeches could already be infesting this map. Right, so where where are we looking here? Common leeching spots. This is here. We're, I mean, we're here, right? This is it. So it was like over... Wait, where where are they? It was over, like over there and over there. Leech. Leech and a liar based. Dragon's End Leech. Dragon's End Leech. 100 CM Leech. DE Leech. DE Leech maybe. A suspect. Strike Leech. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> the fucking block list. Leech. He, do he doesn't even... He doesn't even give them like a number. It's just all the same. It's just Leech. Yeah. <laughs> oh no that is just fucking tragic it really really is oh let's play heal i'm gonna play heal tempest yo let's go i am a heal tempest main I do this but with raid sellers. I'd actually really recommend not doing that. Uh, because when you block someone, any group that they're in will disappear from the LFG. By doing that, you are, uh, you're trying to make your LFG better. But in a cruel, ironic twist of fate, you've actually made your LFG far worse. Um, yeah. <laughs> Which is a little bit unfortunate. Because now any squad where those players are at won't show in your LFG. 
So you've uh, a little unfortunate there. They ever make normal progress? I really doubt it. Of course they are. They play the fucking game. Um, yeah, absolutely. But it's also, will they ever join groups? Because if they're in the group, it won't show. Well, they already got this one down. We will be ready. And so, will I. so yeah, if you if you overblock people, you won't see shit. Uh, you you will literally kill your own LFG. Um, bad game design? Actually, no, no. Good game design. That is working as intended. Why would I want to join a group um, with a player who I've blocked in it? Why do I want to join some fucking loser, like loser ass group that's got some asshole in it? I don't. That system is working as intended, my friends. No, 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 no. You are the ones using the system as it's not intended. You are blocking people who you don't actually have a problem with, right? Um, you are blocking people who aren't necessarily toxic or abusive or you've had a negative experience with. You're blocking just basically random people, right? If you block random people, don't be surprised when the game doesn't let you interact with them or, you know, doesn't, um, you know doesn't allow you to interact with them or tries to prevent you from getting into that situation again because um, the system is doing its job. It's preventing you from getting into a situation that you've told it you don't want to happen. You've told the game, I don't want to be in a group with this player. The game is saying, I will guarantee that won't happen or it will do its best to prevent that. It's it, correct. That's what it should do. Hey, you okay there, friend? I think it's a good idea to hide a group of 49 people because one of them uh, is a bad player. Um... Uh, in open world, there's definitely some argument for it, but in instance content, absolutely, yeah. So in open world, it's whatever. Doesn't matter. Okay. I think you're right there. So it, there maybe it shouldn't apply in like a 50-man squad, but maybe it should. What if it's the commander? Maybe it's the commander It would still do it. Um, pff, I don't know. Maybe. It depends. Where are they even coming yeah. from? Uh, so even though I blocked him. Yeah, it seems to not always work like that, but it, it you know, it, uh, it does sometimes. So watch out for that. Keep it up. Yes. Hide that player, um, from your client. Uh, problem solved. I mean... That, I mean, what, what, it, I mean, <laughs> that's kind of weird, no? Like, I mean, you can't do that in PvP and World vs. World. Like, that, that can't happen. I feel like, like, deleting that player just can't, uh, can't really exist. Yeah. Yeah. Keys. Are you doing keys or what? What are we even doing? Yes. But, um, uh, I'm not going to lie. Actually, no. I'm still going to hold firm on this. If you use the block system incorrectly, you're good. Um,. Okay. That's on you. Let's keep moving towards your base. There's not much time. That's on you. Boom. Uh, don't abuse the system. I don't think the system should be catered to people who are going to misuse it. Yo. Do you qualify for MDI? We did not. We did not play enough or prepare enough. And we suck. Feels bad. Why can't the search folder function? They have to win if it's... That would be nice, yeah. That would be good if there was a, an option for that. Yeah. Will be a misuse of the block feature. Uh, blocking someone who you... Um, blocking someone for no reason, basically. Or blocking someone because you don't like the type of LFG they made. Um, uh, and therefore kind of screwing yourself over because of that. Because you won't be able to see groups that that player made. 
It's actually really funny. Like, this this is so funny, guys. Poor Sneb. Like, seriously. Uh, st stuff like this is, is so interesting. Um, it's so interesting to me. Like, Sneb has been blocked so much on NA because he advertises his guild <laughs> that he can't pug because nobody can see any group that he makes on NA on his alt that he uses to advertise for his guild. That is actually hilarious to me. That is so funny. Yeah, he can't pug on, on that account because nobody sees the groups that um, he makes. Okay, let's start like, by clearing a path. That the equipment is insane that that's the case. That is insane. And do you have any wonder why people don't bother to actually invest in community building operations in Guild Wars 2 when that's the type of response you get? That's the reception you get? I don't know. Like, you get exactly what you paid for, right? I don't know. Like, what were you expecting to happen? Nobody's gonna bother if that's what happens. Ah. I'm talking about remaining Rage or Necromancer. I want to see if your opinion is going in some direction. Well, Necromancer, obviously, because Necro is badass. There it is. Uh, I was you should do it in Lion's Arch map chat exclusively. Oh, wouldn't that be way worse? Why would you want that? Um, that's not good. Uh, I use the block to make people vanish from my screen in open world. Um, I shouldn't get punished by getting a worse LFG experience than I wanted to hide spirit people. Um, uh, I don't like. I mean, it's hiding the person you don't like. I, I mean, I don't know. I, like, it's, it's hiding the person you don't like. Look, this is my perspective. I wouldn't join a squad that uh, is made by someone who... I think the way it works right now is that it won't... It will only hide it if the person you blocked made the squad, I think. Or that's how it's supposed to work anyway. I'm pretty sure if the person is in uh, the squad, um, it, it, uh, it will still show the LFG. However, I would actually prefer that functionality. I don't want to join a group that I've, that someone I've got blocked on. Fuck that. I, I wouldn't do that. And if I join a group where I see someone I don't like, I would leave, obviously. Um, I, weirdly enough, I don't really have that situation. I don't, I don't really dislike anyone, to be honest, uh, in, in the entire game. I, I, I'm just not, I'm not really... Not really about that life, but yeah, absolutely, yeah. Like, I would want that functionality. I don't want to play with some goddamn loser, right? Um, like, uh, in my squad. Hell no. Is this a meta I should consider doing every day? Which meta? I, I, this one is it's still pretty okay. It's, I think this one's good if you do it fast. If you do it slow, it's probably pretty mediocre. But if you can do it quickly and efficiently, it's still good, yeah. Boom. That's all of them. Clear the last area. Hell yeah. yeah. One more to go. Um, I mean, it would be good if there was like an advertisement area uh, for guilds and stuff. But I, I think it is actually extremely funny um, that the very people who try to actually do the most for the community end up getting basically fucked. Uh, by by the player base and disliked by the player base. That's really interesting to me. It's a big problem. Okay, you ugly bastard. We're coming for you. Um, if, if instance content PvP uh, and world versus world. Well, I mean, I feel like, I mean, <laughs> open world. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I, I if I don't like someone. I don't want to interact with them in any way. I wouldn't want to be in the same open world map as someone I don't like. Um, yeah, here's an example. So, here's an example, Chainsburg. Um, there is uh, a player called, um, oh, what's his name? Fucking hell. 
um, Atlan is his name. This player has personally harassed myself uh, and my guild for years without getting banned. Uh, he impersonates my guild. He griefs meta events. He griefs fractals. He griefs strike missions. I don't want to be on the same map as this loser. That's what the block system is for. Okay? I don't want to be on the same fucking video game as this loser. Yeah? That's what the block system is for. And yeah, I would actually want that person to not... I don't want to be on the same map as this imbecile. Right? Uh, in, in any way. I want zero interaction. But I agree, in open world, you, you know, it probably is a little bit impractical uh, for that. It, it's, it is a bit scuffed. Um, but not if they're tagged up, right? Like, uh, I, I don't think it works. Like, it will hide the squad if that person is in the squad. I'm pretty sure that's not the case. I think that was incorrect. Uh, but, yeah, if that guy's making a squad, hell no, I'm not joining that. Holy shit. Yeah, but getting our base back was a good start. Yeah. Thanks. Didn't exactly do without him. Um, Pilotists don't like cluttered, less useful system mechanics. You can't deny that. Just like someone's person. I think actually that's not correct. Um, people actually have a lot of resentment towards him. Like, the, people make Reddit threads and complain about him constantly. Right? Like, he gets bundled in with fucking raid sellers. Uh, and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, I, I, I no, I, I challenge that statement. I actually really challenge that statement. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Uh, in the LG, objectively worse to use for most people. I mean, it's objectively worse, but in such a trivial way um, that it's just not relevant, especially when there's, like, very little in the LFG. It's, like, such a minor thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It was a personal beef in you and him. He's just a beer from your uh, client um, forever. Um... But that is what the block system does. I guess it doesn't, like, hide the person in the client, I, I guess. Um, but, I mean, isn't that what it does? Like, if, if he's blocked, I, I don't even have him blocked, right? I, I only have this guy blocked. And, and honestly, this, this account's banned. I can unblock that. Um, isn't that literally what it does? You won't see the squad. You won't, you know, you can't get messaged. And what Ellie build you play right now? It's like it's like heel tempest. I am I am the heel. Oh, I need to go to the other side and help this side. Oh, I need to go check the leeches. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, sure. Uh, the solution to this though is making a separate category for this, um, rather than. Fixing it so people can abuse the block system, right? Or, like, use it incorrectly. I have zero sympathy if you see less squads because you block sellers. I'm not gonna lie. I, I have no sympathy for that. Um, or, or block uh, people like Sneb. I, I have, like, zero sympathy. Uh, the, the solution is not to fix that problem. The solution is to unblock those people and then fix the LFG. That's how it is. I don't see anyone. Dude, nobody leeches in this game, man. Uh, do people AFK on the airship? I need to go check the airship when the boss spawns. Look at the LFG right now. I mean, look, they're also at the bottom as well. Like, it's just such a non-issue. Shouldn't be uh, owning the squads. He makes a hint. Any squad is in his as well. I think, if someone, um, I think that if someone talks to others, they should be um, permabanned. Well, I, I didn't say that it should be that way, um, necessarily. I probably would like it that way, actually, to be honest. 
Probably even in open world. That would be my preference, actually. Um, but that probably is a bit weird in, in open world because in a lot of ways that allows them to grief you in reverse, right? By by joining squads so you can't see them. So they could actually, like, that that could actually be abused the, the other way. But, um, so there is that, I guess. We used to be a main person in Guild Wars 1. Played Elementalist. Uh, Blue Dot's in the north of the map. I guess there's like some AFK people here waiting for the boss to spawn, I guess. Let's go check it out. Yeah. But yeah, again, I'm talking specifically, yeah, not about open world. I'm talking about like instance content. Like, because that's where it's actually relevant. It's kind of like irrelevant in open world. But I also clarified that. Like, it, it obviously in open world, that doesn't work. How can they grieve you in open world if, they, if you don't see them um, and their skills? Um, well, no, no, I was saying that if, if it was like you couldn't see any squad there in an open world, they can inverse gr grieve you <laughs> by joining a group. So you can't join it, right? So that they, <laughs> they, can, they can inverted grief you. That's what I was saying. I mean, dude, honestly, if you could hide other people by blocking, then you could just block everyone and have, like, really good performance. That'd be based. Yeah. Uh, wasn't the class when I downloaded Guild Wars 2? Uh, I mean, I mean, Guild Wars 1 and Guild Wars 2 are just totally different, right? They are totally different. So that's not super surprising. Uh, people would use the blocks and go private maps. The end result, I see, if possible. People do that anyway. Uh, people already create private maps. Me a lack. I'm wait. What is group two actually? Why is it Firebrand, Mechs, and Reapers? What's going on here? Let's see what we got. I think people will definitely AFK. Uh, you know, I mean, I guess AFKing the pre-event is a little bit lame. I feel like it's not the biggest deal because the pre-event is, is whatever. Well, I mean, I guess I guess it is relevant. We're kind of running out of time, but not really, though. But again, you can see it's like a couple of people, right? It's not really that bad. What's this guy? I feel like this guy's gone for a hiding spot. I, this guy, he knows what he's fucking doing. Oh, what? This guy, 100% no. Oh. <laughs> what is that? What are you doing, my friend? This guy knows what he's doing. Yeah, he's caught. This guy's caught. He's caught. Wait, where are all these other ones, though? I think they're on other maps. I think, yeah, these guys, this guy's queuing. This guy's also queuing. This guy could just be just normal AFK. This uh, this is like regular regular ordinary AFK that happens. There's a bunch of people like waiting for yeah, they're waiting for the main event. They're waiting for the final one to get killed and then this one spawns. That's fine. That's perfectly innocent. Wait, I'm missing an element. Perfectly innocent. Pro leeches will join the squad and leave squad to avoid. Oh, so they're like going for a secret hiding spot or something? Yeah, that makes sense. Hmm. Rando people on the map to play along? Well, no, that's why you create your own map. Ah. Oh, man. Big stretch, boys. Kill that Void Brand Fang. Super profit in terms of Imperial Fate. It's not about profit, guys. Like, no one is saying that leeching gives you very high profit. It's more like leeching is an undesirable social behavior. How long would you say it takes to like level 500 world versus world? Honestly, I have no idea. Probably a decent chunk of grind, to be honest. It is time to join us. Yes. Yes, keep gathering. 
gathering that magical energy. Yeah. Hell yeah, let's go. Destroy, release Falcatorix's corrupt magic, and I will Yeah, when it comes to like, the LFG thing, um, yeah, guild advertisers will be good. They should do that. Although it would have to be an entirely different UI. I think regrettably, it's actually very unlikely that we actually see, um... It's very unlikely that we actually see anything like that in the game in the immediate future. Because even look at the Wizard's Vault. The Wizard's Vault UI, to be frank, it's actually quite bad. Uh, if I'm going to be honest here, guys. The Wizard's Vault UI is kind of cumbersome. Uh, look at this, for example. The way these rewards are presented, it's kind of bad, actually. Um, and honestly, the way, a lot, the way that a lot of the tasks are presented is also relatively mediocre, um, in my opinion. Like the, the UI here is not great. And I think it's because they're very limited in what they can do in terms of creating UI. I think it's quite difficult for them to make new UI, especially more complex UI um, uh, for the user. And something like... Uh, something like a full rework of the guild system that would include advertisements and so on, that would actually be complex. That would That is very non-trivial, uh, to be frank, actually, in terms of what it would take to make a system like that. So, yeah. What would be a great uh, main fire on a Scourge was more safe? Uh, Scourge, probably. Can you and the others protect the magic contained within the crystals? The vault is a web. Wait, the vault is a web page. Oh, I didn't actually know that. This is um like the the guild thing. Uh, then actually, I don't really know why it's scuffed in that case. Wait, why is it so scuffed then? Wait, what? That's crazy. That's actually crazy. <laughs> okay. But honestly, there's no excuse. Unlucky. Nice. My wizard vault bugged out and showed the main account, but I just said I was a bit clicking around. I I, I uh, managed to play inventory manager inside it. Nice. That's crazy. Well, there you go. How often does the uh, Ara event spawn? Um, oh, you mean like the one for legendaries and stuff? It's actually a little bit annoying to find sometimes, actually, because uh, it's kind of reliant on the event failing, I think. I think they did fix this, though, actually. So it hammers fairly often, just AFK there for a bit and it'll start. Uh, worst case scenario, just wait until, um, wait until like a new day. Wait until like the entire map resets, then it will fire. That is the way. Yes. But yeah, anyway, this is what I'm going to say. I would advise not blocking uh, raid sellers and guild advertisements because those people might make groups and if they make groups, then GG, right? You might not see their LFG and you will ironically kind of screw yourself over, uh, to be honest. Which is not really what you want. Unlucky. Oh, you, well, you could actually soft lock yourself out of the skins? That's weird, actually. I guess they just give you the boxes, so you buy the... Yeah, okay, yeah. I see what you're saying. That's actually a pretty major oversight, isn't it? Yeah, it's not great. Uh, so we still have a couple of AFKs here. Let me go and investigate. I'm going to go investigate the southern spot. Void corruption's getting stronger. Come in, Commander. I... Let's get over there. All right, let's see what we got. Fucking Tengu there. I see nothing, guys. No leeches. Am I seeing some leeches up here, though? Yeah, the, the, you know what? Okay, guys, we're going to do a very complicated operation. We're going to watch this guy. Let's see if this guy activates. Keep an... Oh, is it... Wait, do we have a... Do we have a deputy here? Is this guy the leech... Detective, wait, it's, holy shit, it's this guy. It's the Reddit post guy, holy shit. Okay. Yeah, the same guy is still here, auto-running. 
Does this actually save you from DCing? I don't- I, I feel like that doesn't actually prevent you from disconnecting. I don't know. Yeah, you guys need to get out your peepo detectives. This player is now sus. Oh, it used to not, but now it does? Oh, that's interesting, actually. Also, the cave. Alright, what about this player? This player, I think- oh, I think this guy's doing map completion. That's legit, that's fine. Excuse me, Commander. Just show us what to kill. We've got a massive barrier to break through, and on the other side, Suwon. Okay. With the void rapidly widening, we need to stop her now. We got a macro that holds W. Ah, well, I mean, yeah, that's pretty easy to do. A little bit of auto hotkey gaming. But yeah, we have no leeches in the south side. Oh, we actually do have this player. But this player might have just waypointed it, to be fair. This might not be a leech situation. Let's see if it is. I think this player might have actually just joined. I think they... Oh, I think they just got in from another map, actually. I think they're loading in. That is innocent, I believe. Stop. Don't kill her. Okay. Now I'm going to check the airship. I believe the airship is a prime leech location. From herself. Meet me at the temple. Let's see what we got. Whoa, whoa, this guy, whoa. Look at this guy's name. This guy's name is Vasto Lord. With all caps, with a space between each letter. That's what I'm talking about, bro. That's a good name. Giga Chad. Oh, that's like an anime thing? Oh, I just thought he had a cool name. Never mind. She's close. Yeah. Be ready. Yeah. Never mind then. I take it back. I'm sorry someone in this goofy ass game with the second update turns out to be also barely one hour long. I have some bad news for you. It's very likely that the second update will indeed be about the same as the first. There's no leeches here, guys. Let's see if this guy activates. I'm watching you. Will he activate? I will actually participate because I will feel bad if I don't. Um, and then I'll be sad. So, so far, guys, we have only a single player who is suspected of leeching. I will say, the other guy who was here has now activated, guys. You know what that means? Yeah. That means that player was leeching the, the pre-event, which is immoral, but I will let them off with a caution. Um, the pre-event is a bit boring, to be honest. So, I'll let them off with a warning this time. But this guy, he's going to jail. He's going to leech prison. The end will come fast. Yeah. Death will be your if this guy, you know what, you know what's actually funny? If this guy, oh shit, I need to play the game. If this guy wants to remain innocent, you know what he needs to do, right? He actually needs to not play. If he doesn't get the rewards here, he's actually spared. And he's, um, he's not actually leeching. But if this guy actually activates at any point, that is a fully illegal move. And obviously unacceptable. He will be deemed a confirmed leech. Watch out for the tail. I have no quickness. I'm crying. We got all the other boons though, so we're good. That oh, that account is the psyop. Holy shit! Awesome, it's you. That's actually big. I could be falling for this, no? He could have 10 other accounts. <laughs> that, re that reminds me of this stupid meme. Do you guys know this really dumbass meme? Where it's like, I think it's like Shadow the Hedgehog arguing with Eggman. And, and Eggman is like, you fool. I have 70 alt alternative accounts. <laughs> it's such a stupid meme. But what if it's actually that? What if this guy is like, Ha, you fool! You were distracted by my main. I was AFKing on my main. And you didn't see my 10 alternative accounts AFK under the map. Waiting for the last 20%. Like, <laughs> oh, 
That's big. Yo, Boris on there with a prime. Yeah, <laughs> you fool. I'm pretending to be AFK to a 1% then auto attack. Yeah. <laughs> that is big. That is, yeah. We could be, we could be getting outplayed here. Yeah. I can't, uh, I can't rule that out. I will infiltrate this map. I think it's not full. You might be able to, yeah. I think uh, there's, there's like a decent chunk of people there, but it's not. I don't think it's full. This one? Uh, yeah, this. This this is very funny to me. <laughs> you fool! I have 70 alternative accounts! <laughs> yeah. I don't know why that's funny to me, but that is my... My sense of humor has been rotted by the internet to the point where I do find that extremely funny. Uh, yes, I do. That is funny. And, you know, I'm tired of pretending that it's not. Yeah. I have no context on that meme. I don't know what it actually is, but that is funny. Yeah. Okay. Honestly, we take this death. We take this death as an opportunity to investigate. Oh, wait. Wasn't this one of the suspects? Oh, this was one of the suspects, actually. What are you doing? Oh, no, they're moving. They're innocent. It's fine. They're innocent. Cleared of all charges. Innocent. Splat. Why is the game lagging? What the hell is going on? Big res, here we go. We got someone. Oh, that guy was full dead, actually. I, th I thought that guy was down today, but he's full dead. Unlucky. Now, we're watching this Umir's character. If this guy... There's still someone AFK. Wait, did I get baited? They move, but they're still... They're not, they're not playing. Oh, shit. Guys, we've got a complicated case. They're still on the airship. What are they doing? What is this? Yeah. <laughs> Watch that tail. You know, when I see XDD Tree, I just feel like Magrist, he wants people to leech. I think he, he would prefer it if the entire map was fully AFK and not participating. I don't think he wants people to play. Yeah. Run! She's about to snap at you. <laughs> you know, <laughs> guys, please put XDD tree in the chat. If you leech, not because you want rewards. But because you actively want to grief the community. That's, I think that's where things get interesting here, actually. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Interesting. Very interesting. We are not doing the tail. I mean, I guess, I guess that's not that important. I'm just here to spectate the event and make it fail. <laughs> okay, dude, holy shit, the tail makes the boss take no damage. It sucks. We should have done the tail. Why don't we do the tail? This is lame. Oh! Okay. <laughs> do you guys see that connection? Fucking hell. <laughs> Wait, this is actually not free, is it? We're already six minutes in. But this is not going to be, this is going to be, what are they, oh, oh, they didn't, ah, oh, they didn't do, they did like, um, they did groups for the mini bosses, okay, yeah. I was thinking, like, what are these subgroups? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. This, yeah, we, we, guys, this is actually bad. We're kind of in trouble here. We actually need these people to stop fucking playing the game. Holy shit. Umis, we need you. Nelfakora as Dotter, we need you! Play the fucking game! No! no. <laughs> no. Wait, are there people dead AFK? Before you are all 
Okay, no, no, okay, no, no, okay, no, it's fine. They're, they aren't AFK'd. I'm investigating this player. What are you doing? Holy shit, a lot of people died. Investigation commence. You do, we will always have an answer for it. Oh, they actually- Oh? What is this guy doing? Nightmare aspect. Fully dead. I'm gonna res him. What about Evil Mouse XS? Umir still hasn't moved. Well, I, right. Evil Mouse XS. What's going on here, buddy? Oh, Evil Mouse XS. Core Ranger. Te oh, oh, now that is suspicious. Ten stacks of Dragon's End Contributor? Dead on the ground. This guy only has four stacks. Hmm. I like how I could do Look, <laughs> the mobs are trying to stop me. Like, what, what, why, what are you doing, bro? Stop reviving this guy. All right, here we go. Res obtained. He's just going to die to the NPCs again. I'm leaving him to die. If only his armor could break, he'd be punished. Oh! Oh! What is this? Okay, right, hang on. I... We're going to watch this player. Are they going to come in at the last 20%? Because bear in mind, they are... They were actually only semi-AFK. They were moving around the map. This could actually just be a leech. Or a, a, like a, a, a leech move. Okay. Based. We approve. Okay, chat. Quick question. If you guys want there to be more leeches in the game, please put XDD tree in the chat. If you want there to be less leeches in the game, put Dan's game in the chat. <laughs> Bro. We need to kill the tail. I, I I mean, at the end of the day, I respect what the comm wants to do, but this actually is going to lose us a lot of time. The it's too much to bear. If the comm doesn't say go for it, I'm not going to go for it. Actually, no, honestly, it's fine, actually, because we've got the defiance bar. No, it, it's, it's fine, actually. It, it's fine, it's fine. Well, it's kind of not fine, though. Jesus, this is slow. We have 10 minutes. It's fine. It's fine. I, I, I think it's fine. It's not going to be free, though, is it? It's, it's 10 minutes to go, and it's 40%. We have sped up a little bit, though. I, I think we had a very rough start. I think our phase one and phase two were very, very rough, actually. Um, this is getting a lot better, actually. This is much better. I think we're fine. I, I think it's fine. Yeah. Do not fear your state. Yeah, the, th the three boss split is going to take us a while. You're definitely not wrong there. You're absolutely not wrong. Uh, but it, it should be all right. Feed upon the loot. Gormandize the rewards. Feast onto the gold. Leech... Upon the game. I will ascend. This is what iron we did it. The three bosses when the leeches wake up. Wait, did he move? No, he's still in the same spot. This guy hasn't moved yet. So actually, could be innocent. Not gonna lie, could be innocent. 100%. Because he could just be fully AFK. And you know what? That's fair enough. That does happen sometimes. Not gonna, not gonna go too hard on that. However, there, I, there, I think there is still a player AFK on the airship. That is a little less excusable. I 
Unacceptable. That's what he wants you to believe. Yeah, thing is, the reality is he's already been tagging the boss with like five of his alts. And it, like, I'm getting distracted by his main, right? Like that. <laughs> That's where things really get exciting. Alright. <laughs> Dude, that bug is so troll. Like. <laughs> I mean, that's uh, that's just unfortunate. Oh, that's, that's not good. Let's go. Is the guy on the edge? I'm going to check uh, after the, the next phase. Alright, the moment of truth is coming soon, by the way, guys. The moment of truth is coming. If if this guy activates at 20%, yeah, there's still two people in the fucking airship. As well, yeah, what was this? Unbelievable. Shameless. Absolutely shameless. And evil... Okay, guys, we need to... Okay, we've got multiple suspects here. Chat, I need your help. Keep track. We need to check Evil Mouse XS, Serto El Coloso, and also, uh, what is this character name? I don't know. And Umiz. We have four suspects, guys. Four suspects in this Dragon's End. Innocent until proven guilty. Bear that in mind. It is always innocent until proven guilty. Nelfa Cora um, is also a suspect. Ooh, this is a good burn, though. No tail, and we got the Defiance Bar. That's big. The event will succeed now. Yeah. Yes. And you're attacking four bosses by tagging on to the next one. Is that is uh, isn't that considered leeching? Not gonna lie, that is a slightly scuffed thing to do. But in my defense, uh, I was actually doing a lot of DPS on all of those and giving boons. So yeah. But I'm not gonna lie. Yes, that is definitely leeching behavior. Well, 100%. Like, that's the chat Garant thing for the uh, the legendary armor, right? Like, I think that tag? Yeah, that one's really good. Yeah. That's a god level leech. Mushroom booty. I thought this was going to be an, a link to, like, Sedius' art post or something like that. Wait! Wait, whoa, 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 whoa! So, uh, dude! Evil Mouse XS! Sorry was AFK real life, bro! <laughs> Based! Based! He's back! Giga Chad! Holy- This guy is a Giga Chad! Yeah. Okay, okay. Alright, I'm checking the airship. Okay, Umiz. This guy actually just might be AFK. He could be innocent. Okay. It's me, Orin. Look out. Okay. Go go. I, I actually want to help with this. I uh, I I need to help. Ooh. I land. Let's go. Oh. Let's go. It is time. Dest okay, we need to go to Frost. Ooh. Oh, boy. Wait. I'm a little worried. I'm gonna go help the frost one. It's this one, isn't it? Guys, we only have four minutes. Holy shit. This is not... I should have played Herald. This is kind of my bad. I played Heal Tempest. That probably wasn't the play. I am actually gonna swap to Alak DPS. For the last phase. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Wait, why can't I change build template? Oh, it's because I'm gliding, isn't it? I'm sorry, Where is- 
Where is my Alak DPS build? They're all unnamed. I don't know which one is which. This is terrible. Is it this one? This is burning. Wait, what is this? Is it this one? I think it's this one. This is Flame Leech. Fucking Flame Legion runes. I guess that'll do. No. It's over. Uh, I'm glad you're enjoying the video, Pondrian. You're, you are welcome. Let's go. Yeah, I have no relic, because I haven't- I don't have the legendary relic, so... I'm too lazy. There's only void. Two minutes! Jesus Christ! This is not free! Ah! Get me the fucking target on Su-1. Oh no! That is bad. That is really bad. Nope. Hey, we need this. We do not have stability, do we? That's, I mean, honestly, subgroups would be good here. I'm not going to lie, guys. Not having subgroups is not helping. Oh, no! Tail! It's over! It's over! It's fucking over! It's GG! Guys, Dragon's End EU is over! It's a break! Full breakdown! It ha we have to do the tail! We have to do the tail! Has to be done! I have to try and revive these um, brave souls. Boss won't work anymore. Boss won't work. Suwon fails on EU. Wait. Where's Umiz? Oh, wait. Is he here? I bet he's fucking here. He's gone. Did he leave the map? I can't see him, guys. Oh, maybe he DC'd, to be fair. Man, it's really hard to find people. I'm also in the air. It's over. It's not working. It's taken too long. And I I'm just It's over. We failed. All of you. The void's starting to take hold again. Well get back to the quarry before you're totally blocked off. It's over. To be honest. I hate to say it, guys. I will let you take some responsibility here. Uh, if I'd played Herald, we probably would have won. That's how it is. Unfortunate. Unfortunate. Um. Oh, he's still there at the top of the map? Wait, what? Wait! Uh, no! Half is- Bro! He was here! He flamed other people in the squad for being AFK. 
and he was AFK the entire time. Vassalord based. Zero CCXE weak squad. Dude, this guy is a badass. I knew it. It's done. Zero. <laughs> Do you think... Uh, how many... Okay, oh, how do we do this? So, you... Think we failed DE because of AFKers? How many people do you think were AFK? This is bad because I'm lit. The bad thing is, guys, I am literally on my main that is my name. It's possible he's gonna. Be a little suspicious of this. I will, uh, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, this might not work. <laughs> this is not like, you know, NG far away whispering him. This is, yeah, it's, it's, it's Mighty Teapot whispering him. So, you know, that it's, uh, uh, he, he might be a little, little suspicious. Honestly, though, guys, okay, actually, quick check, guys. Do you view this as Giga Chad behavior? He actually went in a leech hiding spot, leeched the entire event, and then flamed other people for being AFK, even though there weren't actually, there were like two or three people being AFK uh, in, in this one. There wasn't that many people AFK. Right, so you guys think that's Zaste? That's uh, Zaste, Giga Chad? Uh, like, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think he's tongue in cheek. No, 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 no. This guy was straight up AFK. No, 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 no. No, this is not a tongue in cheek story. He was literally AFK. Yeah. I'm watching us. He knows. He knows. All right. Listen up, Umez. Explain yourself. Okay. Explain yourself. You were AFK during this entire fight. Okay, and then you, you say half is AFK when the event is about to fail. Okay. <laughs> I was working out. What? But you, bro, that you, you like, you can't do that. You, you, you can't flame other people for being AFK when you go AFK. Like what? <laughs> That is a highly illegal move. <laughs> yeah, that's how it is. It is what it is. Muscles are thinking, brain is dead right now. Don't mind me. It's fair enough. It's fair enough. Caught. I'm afraid. We have to pass a verdict. Umez, you are guilty of the crime of leeching this dragon's end. Despite the fact that working out is good, and, you know, you do get credit for that. That's good. Stay healthy. But you are Guilty. And your punishment. <laughs> your punishment is that you have failed this dragon's end. And now, the sentence. This is the sentence, guys. You must lead a successful dragon's end, including the pre event. <laughs> yes, the punishment fits the crime, my friends. That's the reality here. Full 
pre-event. The full two-hour cycle. <laughs> and you're not allowed to AFK either. I don't have a... Wait, what do you... I don't have a commander tag. I will AFK. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. All right. Honestly, confess. Tell me, Yumez. Do you leech events regularly? How often would you say you leech events? You're already caught. Okay? If you cooperate with us, we may be lenient on your sentence. You can put in a good word with the judge, which is me, by the way. Confess your sins. Every... Oh my god. What events do you leech? Which ones do you leech? Tell us. Is it just Dragon's End? Or other events involved? Wait, 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 okay, wait, I wanna be, I want you to be clear here. You AFK Dragon's End daily. Hmm. Nah, not daily. Okay, not daily. Alright, fair enough. Fair enough. How frequently? Yeah. What? Every two hours. <laughs> Giga Chad. I leech this event every two hours. Without fail. On a different account. Yeah. Wow. Impressive. Impressive. This guy lives in Dragon's End. He is Dragon's End. The same account. Wait, wait, wait. Hang on. Wait, wait. Are you being serious? Are you actually leech this event every two hours? Why? Wait, why? Why do you do that? I'm here to what? What? No, this is a flimsy excuse. You're here to watch AFKers? What do you, what do you mean by that? Like, what, what is this? Okay, like... <laughs> What's going on here? And say at the end, you're here to watch the AFKs and say at the end all is AFK, while also being AFK yourself. Interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. I tag up for Dragon's End and purposefully organize the squad into inefficient subgroups, give wrong instructions, and sow confusion to make the event fail. Hmm. But real talk. Do you actually leech a lot, or is this a one-off? I want to know the truth. No more jokes. No more japes. Okay? What is the truth here? Do you leech often, or is it just like a random one-off? And also, what other events do you leech? Okay. From time to time, little leech... From time to time, I leech. <laughs> okay. Uh, hey, uh, if anyone can hear me, Miner's Folly is under attack by a void infection. Interesting. Oh, I could really use some All right, I feel emboldened. We caught one, guys. It's time now to go to another leech hotspot. Um, do we have a dragon storm coming up soon, or something like that? We have a situation here. Wait, where are you at? What's going on? Wait, th maybe this guy knows where all like the insane leech spots are. That could be crazy. Uh, pinata. Now, pinata leeching is barely even leeching because it's barely even event. Like, what is that a leech there? It's not even. It's not even real. Maybe there's like a bunch of. I mean, I was gonna say like night bosses. I mean, I guess night bosses is, like a little bit leechy.
Yeah, I'm going to Matriarch. But Bill, Bill kind of leeched this. They put, like, the NG turrets there, but it's not really the same thing, to be honest. Fake leeching. Yeah. And also, I want to get like the... I want the people who do it on like 10 accounts. I just don't really see people in the wild, you know? I want to see that guy who's actually leeching on 10 accounts. I just feel, I feel very hard done by that I haven't been able to see that yet. Yeah, I, I, um, I see, I went to Tequadal. I didn't see anything. I have heard about Tequadal as well, that people do, like, the NG turret stuff there. But I just haven't, um, to be honest. Hey, you're welcome, you miss. And you know what? You're forgiven. We all leech from time to time. Dragon Soul in the morning? I haven't. I never get up in the morning. It sucks. So wait, are you guys telling me that people leech off hours, like non-peak hours? So I'm playing at peak hours too much, and that's where the real leeching happens? Yeah. Yeah. Before, uh, wait, it's full. I assume someone um, with like six alts on public DS. Ah, oh, that's interesting, but only um, uh, in the morning. Okay, the plot thickens then. So there's, uh, do, the, do you think, okay, hang on, okay, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. do you think it's because all of the, there are less maps going at off hours, so they all, it's easy to get them all into the same map, or they always get all into the same map? I wonder if that's what's going on there, because of course people are at work or at school, so there's less people playing the game in off hours, so maybe... It's not that there are necessarily more leeches or less. It's just that they end up more concentrated. Yeah. That could be the case. The velocity is uh, too high for some of the Dragon Storm. You'll end up on different maps. Exactly, yeah. You'll end up on a different map, and that's just no good. Well, I mean, it's I guess it's fine, right? It's not like the end of the world if you're on different maps. You can just tab in between them. I guess it's a bit annoying when they go at different speeds, though. Did Aina ever acknowledge uh, leeching is a problem? Uh, no, I, I don't think it really is a problem. Like, outside of something being kind of annoying, right? Um, I, I would say that... It really sucks that it's upsetting to players who tag up, right? I, I think people are like uh, players who tag up are kind of annoyed by it, and that is quite bad actually. Like anything that damages um, leadership players, I think is just inherently quite damaging to the game. So that's certainly not ideal. Um, but yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, like it's not really, a, it's it's not really a problem to be honest. Dude, I have no quickness. This sucks. This is lame. Buna! Oh. Fire overload. Let's go. I should have summoned my little fire elemental there. Didn't summon him. The elemental was not summoned. Go elemental. Honestly, this build's pretty hype, honestly. I ones I I like the uh, Ellie Alacrity builds. I think they're pretty good. You know I knew this build would eventually be good, you know? I, I am on record, guys, saying eventually Alak Tempest, specifically Alak DPS Tempest would be good. And look at it now. Its boon radius is a little bit scuffed, but other than that. It's pretty good. But yeah, look. Where are all the NGs? This sucks. I feel like I want to start leeching. I'm going to break up my multi-box. 
If these people aren't going to leech, then maybe I will. Do they buff Glyph Elemental, by the way? Um, do you remember having it stun break? I think it's always had a stun break, actually. Oh, no, well, oh, Elemental Power. Pretty sure that's been a stun break for a while. Eating some unholy mixture of Viper Green and Selego. Didn't even bother putting on the website because of it. That is true, yes. Um, it was a shame because I actually quite liked that build. It was mostly the Celestial gear that was cursed. We probably should have just put it on the website, but with, you know, suboptimal stats. Wait, dude, I just I just deleted someone's message by accident. Fuck. I just clicked on them and I, I cleansed. Um, is, is, is alt or attack more to be than some uh, peepos? Oh yeah, you can 100% multi-box and out DPS the vast majority of players very easily, actually. Okay, I'm checking Kainang. This is apparently another very serious uh, infestation, if you will. When is Dragonstorm? Dragon store. Wait, hang on a minute. When is convergence? Isn't conver convergence is in eighteen minutes, right? I think. So we can check that as well. Is the hammer temper still good? I believe it's basically very much equivalent to the other weapon options uh, for tempest. It's like a side grade rather than like an upgrade. Uh, I, if I had to guess, I actually don't know the numbers, but I, I imagine hammer probably does like slightly more DPS and then like. The setup with Warhorn, um, or Focus, or whatever it is, is probably a bit uh, more utility, pretty much. Skywatch? Wait, so people leech Skywatch? Wait, how do people um, leech that? What's the what's the gimmick? Oh, I've heard this is actually... I, I think you're right. Let's go check that. Is it going now? Oh, it's not going now. We'll do that one next. So, actually, guys, clue me in on this. I am out of the loop. I am way out of the loop here. And I need you guys to clue me in. Um, okay, let me actually quickly load this up. Plenix sent me this image. And this is an image of the Skywatch Archipelago map failing. Okay? And he told me that it actually fails quite often. And obviously I believe Plenix. Um, can you guys confirm... That it actually does fail quite often. Because, yeah, this event, uh, this is... Pl Plenix has told me... He's told me that he's failed this event multiple times. He's openly told me this. He said that it fails quite frequently. Yeah. I confirm. Last time we were there, I was four months ago. I, because I have never seen this event fail, and honestly, I have no idea how it could even fail, because the event is a meme. Fails more often than other metas. What do people die to on it? Like, is it when you have to kill them at the same time? Is it that mechanic that trips people up, or what? Yeah. Yes. Whoa. Holy shit. Is that Tengu's battle cry there? Low DPS, bad spreads. Interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. Leech. Wait, do we have a... Wait, I mean... I, I think we need to go help this event, actually. I think the south event might just fail, actually. I need to get over there. I'm going on the skimmer. Boom. Do we count only people who tried but failed or even empty maps that um, never tried? Uh, I'm talking about people who tried but failed, yeah. So, like, that Dragon's End. We definitely tried there, but we failed. That's, like, a, a legitimate failure. Yo, Green Dead, Tier 1. Uh, wicked. Would it be a ton of good to the raid bosses and destroyed missions? Um, probably not, because I think that will probably be a lot of work for not a lot of gain. Um, I think it would be better to look at the system and try and identify why you'd want to do that and implement that. So, specifically, you should probably be able to open any raid boss you like, right? Like, that would be um, the thing that I would say should be added to the game. You should be able to open any raid boss, uh, as opposed to having to, you know, basically get locked out once you've done it once. Um, so you can go and repeat a boss to practice it if you want to. What do you think about the last World of War beta? I think it was really good, actually. I think it was pretty decent. 
I didn't, um, it, it didn't feel that different, to be honest. And that's why I am a little bit disappointed that we aren't getting alliances. Not because of alliances themselves, but definitely because of leaderboards, competitive structure, um, and kind of the competitiveness. I, I feel like it didn't really add a lot of competitiveness, to be honest, to the game. And that was kind of what I was hoping alliances would do. It, uh, to be honest, it didn't feel very different to me in terms of how World Versus would actually played out compared to, say, today, now that we're back to normal. Um, but it, yeah, seems like a good system. I, I definitely don't hate it. I really like the fact that you can just join a guild and you'll basically get transferred automatically or you have the ability to do that without paying gems. I think that's really good. It means that I think it's much easier to play with friends, which is always really good. So I, I, I'm in favor of the system, but it, I, I am a little disappointed that it is going to essentially be lacking some of the things that I do, I, I would really value in, in World vs. World. Damn thugs, never miss so, yeah. Add on that expands on this menu. Uh, what is this? Let's see, what have we got here? Uh, this one. Um, that's probably difficult uh, because how would you make it issue a command, right? Um, without doing really hacky stuff, probably not. Um, if you do like, re if you hack the game, you absolutely can. Um, but without hacking, uh, it would be blech, kind of whatever. Uh, we're super happy to be back on our home server. Yeah, that's because the um, nobody's playing around the new system yet, right? So when when you're back on your home server, you've probably got like a bunch of commanders who play together um, and uh, a bunch of people who play together, but they're not necessarily in the same guild. Um. But when you have world restructuring, all of those commanders that kind of make up your home server, they'll all join the same guild. All of the people who play together and kind of chat in map chat and so on in World vs. World, what they'll do is, is that they'll make a mega guild and everyone will join it. Because most um, World vs. World servers are like made up of a bunch of guilds that let's say have 100 members in them or maybe like 50 members even. Like there's, there's lots of, you know, guilds that play as a guild, 20 people, 30 people, boom, get in there, fucking send it, right? Um, that's very common uh, for that to be the case. Uh, but what the new system is basically going to mandate is that all of those guilds are going to merge, right? Uh, and they And maybe they'll be in their original guild too. Right, and they'll rep that guild. So let's say that I let's say that I wanted to represent um, Mystic Builds while being on the same server as Hardstuck. You can do that. You just have to set Hardstuck as your World versus World server, and then you'll be on that the same cluster together, basically. But you can still rep that guild and have your own guild identity, right? Like within the larger cluster as well. So you will be able to basically recreate that server experience. Not quite to the same extent. For example, um, servers that have very large communities, uh, Gandara will be a good example of this on EU, and something like Maguma on NA will be a really good example of this on the NA server. Those communities will be broken up. And actually, I'll, yeah, I, I think ArenaNet would admit this, and I think I definitely will as well. That's a, that's a downside. That actually sucks, right? Like those communities will no longer be able to uh, stay together. Right in very large communities uh, in World versus World, and that is a major downside of the world restructuring system, and that's the trade-off that ArenaNet is making here, um, with moving away from the server architecture and moving over to the guild architecture. They want more flexibility, better matches, higher match quality, better matchmaking, all that kind of stuff to make sure people have more fun in the game mode. But they are reducing the ability for players to kind of conglomerate together uh, as much. You won't be able to make. A group in the same way. So that's the trade-off that Arenet's making with the system. Uh, left thing on, thanks for the tier one. Boop, boop, boom. Everyone's hacking the game and sending packets. Just whatever you want this morning. Well, I mean, I I, I wouldn't advise it. I mean, uh, yeah. I, I think Arenet... There, there are some problems with moderation in Arenet, for sure. I do think they need to ban people who do naughty stuff. A lot more, but they seem to struggle with moderation in general, right? Um, it, it's it's not easy to moderate this stuff, uh, and there's a lot of you know, a lot of stuff going on, right? Like, yeah, I don't know, is what it is. A third borderland. I mean, I think a third borderland could be on the menu down the line, yeah. 
And that could be quite cool, actually, because it means that, um, essentially, everyone will, like, rotate around every week. You could, like, rotate the Borderlands every week. So, like, one week you can be, you know, the jungle Borderland. Then you can be the Alpine one. Then you can be the desert one. So it would, like, rotate around, which could be pretty cool. But I guess it could also, uh, right now it's depending on how well you do and, like, where you place in the matchup, obviously. You take the three to the south, and I'll take the uh, I have an MO that has uh, somewhat, so it's going to be super good moderation. And it's still better than WoW's. Um, to be honest, I think they... I don't know much. I, I'm not familiar enough with like how WoW moderation goes. Uh, I, I think WoW really struggles with botting and RMT, that's for sure. I'm not sure about cheating, though. I actually have no idea um, uh, about like uh, how Blizzard handles um, hacking and stuff. But yeah, RMT is essentially unbeatable uh, at this point. I think it's really difficult. Um, it's really, really tough. Uh, same with, um, like, especially in vanilla, right? Like, Blizzard are really struggling right now with dealing with uh, botting and real money trading within uh, Season of Discovery. It, oh, no, honestly, even the other versions, like Classic Era, it is fucking ridiculous. Um, so I was watching this guy, um, Premier League player, guys, in World of Warcraft. This guy got caught buying gold on stream. It was really fucking funny. Um, and he was doing a GDKP, which is a gold dragon kill points raid. Basically, you bid on items and the items go to the highest bidder. This is It's like a system for pugging raids in World of Warcraft. And they were selling items for 50,000 gold a pop. For some context, that would be like... Selling an, selling an ascended drop in a raid for 50,000 gold in Guild Wars 2. And I actually think that vanilla WoW gold is hard to get. So it's more like 100,000 gold. That's how inflated, um, that's how inflated the economy is in classic era because of RMT uh, and botting and so on. Um, because again, yeah, that, that's like, again, selling an ascended item for 100,000 Guild Wars 2 gold. It's not the same value. Yeah, I'd say vanilla gold is actually slightly slow. It, it's a fair, it's like a fair bit slower than Guild Wars 2 gold. Hyper Phase 2? Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm really sad they mangled the the male gear for my shaman. They removed the strength and agility because fuck you. They wanted to make it not best in slot for warriors, but now they fucked it up for my shaman tank, and I'm, I'm really sad about that. Hopefully they change their minds and unfuck it. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. The, fist, the epic fist weapon is based. The uh, weapon skill hands are also incredibly based. Yeah. No, I'm not talking about Wrath. I'm talking about Era specifically. I don't know about Wrath. I think Wrath is also pretty inflated because of um, that. But that maybe that's a little bit... I don't know. you got the token now, so maybe that actually helps a little bit. I'm not sure. Uh, new Hero Towns on Wednesday. Oh, uh, and they didn't show? Yeah, for sure. Uh, I think it's going to be really interesting stuff with the SCV PvP event. Um, and also, I really like what they did. I really, really, really like what they did by updating the old dungeon items. And they're already updating the raid items from Molten Core, right? That's actually really cool. Um, I think uh, I like that definitely necessary obviously with the power creep they're introducing into the game But yeah, really exciting um, a bit disappointed in the shaman runes to be honest because I'm playing tank shaman right now because I like shaman I'm a huge role player um, Definitely sad about that uh, They appear to be fairly mediocre although it seems that the runes this time are a little bit less exciting um, Than the phase one ones, but we haven't seen all of them. So it is what it is It is what it is SOD leveling has defeated me, Zeus. Don't break. If you break to level 25 in vanilla, then you'll break to anything. you need to stay on track. It's gonna take a bit of a hike to get to the next breaker. Follow me. Major getting a five second stun. Yeah, that's gonna be fun in PvP. Yeah, I believe a deep freeze or whatever. It's coming into the game, isn't it? I broke at level 12. Interesting. Wait, so wait, that's the Zevras, right? Isn't that the Zevras? You broke to the Zevras? Break. 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 
Yeah, Wrath has the token. They added it to, to it. Yeah. Way too many Bear Dick and Zebra throat collection quests. I mean, there are a lot of them, yeah. So it's I can I can understand why people end up breaking. Dude, I like how I'm getting rewards just because I applied boons to these guys 30 seconds ago. This is based. I love this. This is amazing. I can just do nothing. Token is coming to SOD, calling it now. Uh, I think they want to control it by trying to reduce the incentive. Like, a really big incentive for gold buying was 100% GDKP. Um, so... Uh, removing that will probably help. Will it help with gold buying overall? It actually might. Um, one of the quite clever things they did in Season of Discovery is they made it way easier to make gold. Like, gold is very easy to get in Season of Discovery uh, because you're able to basically do quests and you get, like, max level gold rewards um, for doing the quests at the level bracket. So gold is way easier to get and that definitely reduces the incentive to buy gold. This is the way that you fix gold buying, by the way, guys. You don't fix it by... Um, you don't fix it by targeting sellers, you do it by targeting buyers, and not even even banning them. I actually don't think banning gold buyers is a particularly good way of preventing people from buying gold. One, people always think, well, I won't get banned because I'll do it clever and I'm, I'm super smart. I'll do it covert, I won't get caught, right? That's how people always think about stuff like this. They think it won't happen to them. Uh, even though, realistically, quite a lot of people probably do get banned for buying gold in any MMO, really. Um, that's not a good way to do it. The way that you actually solve gold buying is you reduce the incentive. You reduce the desire for people to buy gold, um, which is a really big problem in vanilla. Like vanilla is a very grindy game. Um, if you only want to play end game, like the way vanilla is set up is that you have to kind of play all of the game if you want to play any of the game in a sense. So if you want to like raid, you've got to farm consumables, right? Like you've got to go get your PVP gear. You've, you know, you've got to you, you kind of have to... It, it's very time-consuming, right? And that obviously incentivizes people to buy gold uh, a lot. Because in the, these days, right? Like, these days, people basically play MMOs for specific reasons. People don't really play WoW for the whole WoW experience. That's why retail's ended up the way it is. Retail WoW... It, it's kind of funny, actually. A lot of people who play vanilla actually should play retail. They, they they would prefer retail. Retail is basically the, the, the game they want, uh, but they kind of don't want to admit it, or maybe they're just too bad for it because retail is actually hard and vanilla is fucking easy. Um, I think a lot of people actually want like a very easy version of retail. That would be like their ideal MMO, like very easy raids, very easy to get this, very easy dungeons, right? Um, and vanilla is kind of the closest thing you get to that because the game is very, very easy. You can get this super easily um, and like it's not time consuming to get good at. One more to go. But yeah. Someone to stick around and keep the breaker secure. You must reduce the competitiveness, uh, make it more uh, casual friendly. I totally disagree with that. Uh, reducing the competitiveness would be one way to do that. Well, actually, no. I disagree. I you're not wrong. If you made the game less competitive, less people would buy gold. But it would also make the game way more fucking boring and dog shit. Um, to be honest, uh, because um, competitiveness is exciting and fun, and don't. You never want to solve a problem by making your game worse, right? And reducing the competitiveness of a game in general is going to make it worse. Yeah. And yeah, Darren's buys gold in Run vanilla as well. Can't, it, it, you're, you're actually right. This is why solving the gold buying problem in vanilla WoW is so difficult. Because the entire game is basically about grinding gold. That's the really big problem. So in vanilla WoW, and, and honestly in most versions of classic World of Warcraft, gold buying is essentially unbeatable uh, because the game is grinding gold. So when people don't want to do that, when they only want to play like a specific part of it, they're obviously going to pay to skip it. Like there's no way around it. Like the WoW devs are actually right about this. The only really way, the, uh, the only way they could really solve gold buying is the token. However, the token is terrible. Um, in my opinion, I think it feels super bad when you can buy gold in any MMO and I think the classic community doesn't want the token But realistically, it's the only good solution to actually countering buying gold is by selling the gold yourself So that players who don't want to do it can skip it Yes I you know, I'm I think about this occasionally. It's it's so so interesting. Um, 
so interesting to me. Like, how would you design a game where people wouldn't want to buy gold, um, but also still have, like, a, um, still have, like, a <sighs> player economy? Like, how, is it possible to devise a video game without microtransactions and with a player economy that doesn't incentivize buying gold. It might be impossible. I, I don't know. Um, I don't know how you would go about doing that, but I'm not, I'm not sure you can. Oh, guys, okay. Everyone was right about this, I think. Yeah, people were definitely right about this. Check this out, guys. Although, to be fair, they have actually completed their side of the event, so them waiting there is fine, and I guess we're done now as well. Don't have gold, but use mats as a currency. Um, P.O.E. Buy currency. Buy P.O.E. currency, divine orbs. I can do that immediately. Yeah. Uh, Path of Exile currency. Do you want orbs? Wait, the site is fucking dog shit. Why is it taking so long to load? You're not going to get many sales on this shit site. Holy fuck. Blessed orb. Cartographer's chisel. Chaos orb. Chromatic orb, divine orb, eternal orb. Dude, eternal orb? What is the price on this? This would better be rare, guys. These guys are selling this for like 300 quid. That's ridiculous. Uh, it's a legacy currency? Oh, I, guess it's, it's, I guess it's kind of rare because it doesn't, it doesn't exist anymore or something. Holy shit, these guys have got everything. I'm on this web- I'm not gonna say the website name, obviously, but they've got it all. They've got like every MMO here, what the fuck? Dude, these guys are, uh, they're going crazy. Wow. Mm. Got everything. Insane. How dare you leech? I never leech, Darkbringer. With no actual tradable currency that's based on a barter system. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's, um, I don't know how you do it. Because in any, if there's, if grinding is in any way, if anything is transferable, it will incentivize people to buy it. You, I, I don't know. I don't know how you do it. Because uh, the, the, the token, WoW token and gems is basically the solution that allows you to have both. Because gems just cuts out the middleman, right? It means that now nobody, why would you, why would you RMT in Guild Wars? You, you have to be an idiot, right? Why would you do that? Like, why would you ever buy gold in retail WoW or Guild Wars 2? You'd be an imbecile. Uh, it doesn't make any sense. Like, you're just risking your account and the price is barely going to be cheaper, right? Like, yeah, sure, if you buy gold from a third party in Guild Wars 2, it's probably a little bit cheaper, like, maybe you save a couple of quid, but your account might get fucking deleted, right? Or your gold might get deleted, right? Which is really bad. Uh, it's just not worth it. Um, same with retail. Wow, you have to be an idiot to buy gold in that game. Just buy a WoW token. Uh, that WoW's gold buying is hurting the economy. Well, uh, Guild Wars and other modes are able to maintain a healthy economy despite um, gold buying um, being inevitable. Well, it's because you can't buy gold directly, right? Um, that's the thing. Like, in, um, in classic WoW, all of the gold is not legit, right? Um, it's, it's basically being added to the economy. Um, rather than being transferred. The reason why systems like the WoW token and gems work without completely destroying the economy is because um, they don't add anything into the economy. Uh, when, it, when, you're, when, you, when you buy gems, it changes the price of gems, right? We know this, right? Like whenever people are buying like crazy, it massively, you know, spikes the price, right? So it gets more expensive to buy gold. You have to spend more real money if you want to get gold out of it, right? So that's why it works. The problem with botting in older versions of World of Warcraft is that 
the game just wasn't it just isn't designed to handle that type of uh, of interference from from like an outside source like uh, it just wasn't designed that way people are like adding insane amounts of gold into the economy 500 gold 50 that's actually insanely cheap holy shit man that's really cheap 15 pounds for 500 gold that's actually insane i thought it was going to be closer than that that is way cheaper than buying it in game wow uh, you shouldn't do it, though. In fact, you'd be an idiot to, because you might get banned, and it's not worth it. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, Guild Wars 2's economy is set up in a very clever way as well, particularly the trading post tax. Um, the trading post tax is very good. It was a very, very good call for ArenaNet to add that into the game. It was hyper-intelligent, if you will. And also, you'll notice that um, buying gems with gold... Uh, when, basically, whenever you make a transaction, you get fucked in this game. If you buy gems with gold, you lose a huge amount of value. And when you buy gold with gems, you also lose a huge amount of value. The TP tax is also in the buying and selling of gems. I believe that's actually not the case... I I don't think that's the case with the token, which is actually a misplay by Blizzard, and that probably contributes to the um, the inflationary effect that uh, some of these uh, things have in the game. Although that's also kind of vertical progression, like the number the number just goes up, right, in WoW because just that's the way it goes. Then the economy in WoW does vaguely work actually, even with the token. Didn't Anet hire real economists to manage the game economy on launch? Every MMO does this. Absolutely, every MMO does this. You have to if you want to have any kind of player economy and trading system within the game. It's not just uh, Guild Wars 2. It's literally every MMO. Dude, Telegraph though is scuffed. You can make a profit of buying tokens low and selling high. Yeah, that's impossible in Guild Wars 2. It, it can't, well, technically speaking over like a very long period of time, it can maybe happen. Um, and if you do, if you buy it when it's like mega, mega low and then wait till it mega spikes. With the expansion you can, but um, yeah. Huh. Oh yeah, the garrison inflation was really bad because that was just introducing so much raw gold into the game, right? Huge mistake. Like, eh, you should never have anything that does loads of raw gold. That is, uh, that is not what you want. Raw gold is the enemy of your game. Guild Wars 2 got this right. They use items. Items are almost exclusively the use of, um, is, is how you do commerce in this game is with items. It was very intelligent of them to do this. Nice. Partially G because they just make the mats obsolete along with the tier. Yeah, exactly. That's basically how they solve it. Um, like, whereas Guild Wars, they have to be a bit cleverer because tier 6 blood is never going away. Uh, same with Ectos and Mystic Coins. But, they're, they're, you know, this is why Ana is also clever with reusing those materials to keep them relevant at the same time. They have to constantly add new sinks, otherwise they just pile up over time as players unlock them. Uh, but, yeah, the Guild Wars 2 economy is as you, it's very intelligently designed. But yeah, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I think gold buying is ultimately essentially unbeatable uh, in terms of like how, how could you ever conceivably get rid of it. I really think you can't, um, to be honest. The only way to do it would basically be to make everything account bound and not allow any transfer whatsoever. Um, I think one thing that you can do to prevent it, and I think this is kind of true in retail, um, in retail WoW, is that almost everything that's actually valuable in that game is account bound. Um, so that really helps, in my opinion. Um, you know, you can't, you can't go to like a vendor and buy gear. Of course, the extension of this is player services, like players can sell you loot, right, for example. Um, and that, and this is where things get really complicated, right? That's only a problem because of the WoW token, really. If the WoW token didn't exist, you'd have way less player services. You still would have it, obviously, but it would be way less of an issue. It's really complicated, so it's a very difficult issue to fix. Because, for example, uh, the thing about WoW, WoW, especially retail WoW, um, player services, that's where the, um, the gold goes, right? Like, people buying boosts. People buying boosts. Like, a, a boost in retail WoW to clear the Mythic Raid is going to set you back hundreds of dollars, right? Like, and, and people pay that all the time. I was watching, uh, before the WoW token, RNT was still a major issue. 
um, for services. I mean, I didn't say it didn't exist. I said it was it becomes way more of an issue when you have this. But yeah, obviously it's an issue, but it's way less significant um, of a problem when you have to kind of go through a backdoor mean to get gold. Now anyone can buy gold uh, and it's very accessible. It's completely safe. Uh, and that really inflates the amount of like player services. But yeah, arguably it was worse. Well, you could argue it was more toxic, but the volume was lower, right? You could argue that it's very cursed when people are doing it through third parties whereas i guess you could say that it's less damaging if it's not like that i guess maybe a little bit but sure uh, it, it's semantics not irrelevant yes rng loot is the main uh items being affected by massive inflation um probably uh, what do you think about not having a player to play trade mechanic besides mail? I don't know if I'd use it often, but it would be nice to have like him well. Uh, that's done to for this exact reason. It's to prevent people from RMTing. The mail system is pretty good for that uh, as well, to be honest. But it's to uh, it's very it's for economic reasons. It's actually it's not for RMT. It's because they want you to whenever you trade, they want you to pay a tax. They don't want you to be able to um they don't want you to be able to transfer items tax free. It's for economy reasons. Not really RMT because mail is really good for RMT still. Buying challenge word runs was cursed. Well, I mean, yeah, it's insanely cursed now, right? Like boosting is insanely prevalent in in retail WoW, right? It doesn't really affect the game in my well, it doesn't affect it in my opinion, but I think it definitely does for some people. Our train Discord servers to avoid TP decks against TOS. It's not against TOS, no. Uh, but Anet doesn't like them, obviously. Um, like trading Discord servers are objectively bad for the game. Um, because again, it, it, they are essentially skipping the fee, um, a lot of the time, which is not good for Anet. Because whenever, um, whenever you do a trade like this, you are deleting gold for the, from the economy, right? Like every single step, every single transfer, you're removing 15% of that. Boom, poof, gone, right? That's good. That means that you don't end up with like a billion gold just floating around all over the place. But it's not against TOS. It's at your own risk. Uh, MMO economies. Well, I mean, you know, it's because MMOs are supposed to be kind of a mirror of real life, at least in a sense. Skipping the system, uh, design in the game. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. Um, skipping the system is not what the game wants you to do. Because it wants to delete that gold. And gold not being deleted is a feels bad man. How much gold is there from waypoint calls? It's definitely a lot. It's a high number. Call for MDI? We did not. We didn't really try though, to be fair. Uh, that has uh, resisted inflation as well as um, Guild Wars 2. It's extremely well designed, yeah. The Guild Wars 2 economy is very good. It's one of the things that if I was making an MMO, I'd absolutely copy this. The, the way that this operates is really fucking good. Um, yeah. The game would actually be in a much worse spot if um, it wasn't designed this way. It's a very... It's kind of a subtle strong point about the game, but it's absolutely a strong point of the game. If people are inclined to skip the system, the system itself is flawed. I mean, I'm inclined to skip paying taxes, but it doesn't mean that taxation is a flawed system. Like, yes, some parts of a good system will be, will kind of suck to individual actors, especially if you think about it in the short term. But in the long term, absolutely not. Like, to go with the, uh, to go with the tax analogy, like, it would be really great for me if I didn't pay taxes. But if nobody paid taxes, the entire fucking country would, would not work, right? So it, it, long term, it's good for me. Like paying taxes is good for me because it means that the society that I live in works. Even though up front, it's obviously a mild inconvenience, right? 
for that to happen. It's the same thing with the with the in-game tax, right? Like the game is it annoying that you pay 15% on basically everything yeah sure it's annoying but it will be way worse if you didn't like if you didn't then the entire economy will be fucked and the game will be not nice to engage with should guild see provide optional subscriptions in a lost art bible or gems no like what i mean they monet look everything in this game is monetized already like what what will be the purpose of such a thing They've already, they did kind of do this with one of the things that I really don't like, actually. Where is this fucking stupid shit? Uh, like, with, like, the weekly thing you can buy, you could argue this is moving it. Yeah, this shit. Okay, weekly Black Lion uh, supply package. Look how bad this is, by the way, guys. 400 gems for two keys, a heroic booster, a guaranteed die unlock, and five transmutation charges. What a terrible deal. Oh, man. I actually don't like even looking at this. This upsets me. This upsets me because, to be frank, ArenaNet is above this. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. It's not, it's not giga value. It's, it's anti-value. It's zero value. Yeah. I'm glad I'm not paying a sub fee. Honestly, I'm sad I'm not. Um... I, I'll take a sub fee any day over stuff like loot boxes creeping into the game. Poor imitation of pay to win games, uh, time gated deals. Then hero skills, the gem store. Wait, hero skills? Um, oh, hero, oh, hero points. Yeah. Usually some games have those either way, don't they? Nope. Nope. Not in the West. Anyway. WoW doesn't. Final Fantasy doesn't. Hell yeah. They know the Black Lion chest drop race is making the statue uh, shopping. Well, to be fair, the statue probably is good overall though, no? Such it's pretty good. At least you get some kind of bad luck protection. Instead of getting absolutely annihilated. RuneScape does? I think only the new version of RuneScape does, right? Yeah, that was one of the things that actually really put me off the game. Is they added, what is it? It's like the Squeal of Fortune, which is quite funny, actually. I'm not going to lie. That's a very Jagex thing to add. But yeah, absolutely disgusting. Despicable practice. Yeah. It, it, you know, it is definitely my, like, moment of screaming in rage. But there is... I, I can't believe people tolerate loot boxes. I don't believe it. It's such a disgusting thing to have in your game. Oh, oh, whatever. But no, I, I don't think uh, there'll be any real benefit of having like a premium service. I think that only work. That only works if you like really design the monetization around around it entirely, and it still sucks. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Why are these trees in Magress? Why are you spamming the entire chat with trees? Best new feature. What's uh, what's going on here? Why would you do this? Screw subscription crap for games. Personally, I like it uh, because I am... The, I, I can talk about why I like sub fees. I like sub fees because I am a very invested player. Um, and I don't like... Um, I don't like systems in the game being monetized at all. I really don't. And the reason for that is because when you monetize a system, you inherently make it worse. Um, you're going to have to break it in order to sell the fix. That is a, no way around it. That happens every time. It is impossible. You cannot monetize a system if you haven't made it worse on purpose. And as a really dedicated player, um, that sucks for me, right? That sucks for me a lot. And sub-fee games 
uh, are much less likely to exhibit this problem. It's way less likely for a sub-fee game to make its systems inherently worse uh, in order to monetize them as opposed to a microtransaction game. So that's why I like it. Because I don't mind paying uh, 15 bucks for a video game a month because I really value games. You know, I, you know, I play games a lot. I spend a lot of my time in the game. So 15 bucks is nothing considering like how much value I get out of playing a video game every month. Uh, so for me, it works. I understand people not liking that. That's absolutely fine. Um, if people prefer microtransactions, I'm not saying you're wrong for preferring different business models. I'm explaining why I prefer it because I think it makes better games, ultimately. I think um, that model makes better video games. And funnily enough, I actually think um, ArenaNet is actually kind of the exception to the rule here a lot of the time. Um, although they're not immune to it. There are absolutely some things. The most obvious is build templates. This system could have been so much better if it wasn't monetized. It feels so bad that it, 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 it sucks so much that they had to monetize it, to be honest, because it is just worse than what it could be. Um, but in general, Arena is actually really good. I think uh, Arena are actually too good for their own good. They're definitely one of the one of the good video game companies out there, uh, 100%, when it comes to how they monetize their product, to be fair to them. But yeah. It's my, in my currency, $15 expensive. That's why I'd obviously be in favor of localized pricing um, for stuff like sub fees, 100%. Uh, or solutions like the WoW token, where you can actually play the game to earn your sub uh, as well. That would also be a good way of doing it. Uh, or, of course, I, and I'll actually just own this as well. I'll own that that's a downside. Absolutely. 100%. And I will completely concede to you that a really big downside of sub fees is that it makes the game inherently less accessible. You are correct. Absolutely. Yes. That's the downside of it. But I'm speaking from my perspective. And from my perspective... That, you know, that does not affect me because I'm fortunate enough to live in a country where um, my currency is just fine against the US dollar. There it is. True, look at all the games that have held over the ones that, that fall off every year. They'll have monetization systems um, in common. I mean, I, I, you could argue both, to be honest. I think MTX and free-to-play is extremely effective. It's like really, really, really uh, effective. Especially in the mobile space. Next Zero to Hero series is coming uh, probably pretty soon. I'm um, probably going to play Classic WoW first, but we get there. You know, we'll, uh, we'll get there. Bring back Arc DPS build templates. Yes! Is based. You don't like buying storage slots for each of your characters? I do not, no. I don't like doing that. Uh, I don't like having to buy template slots for all of my characters. But it's more than that. It's actually not about the money, right? It's, 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 it's actually... I think this is what people miss. Um, about this. If ArenaNet offered me a single price, or even a sub fee, actually, um, to permanently unlock good build templates on my account, no problem. I am absolutely fine with that. I'll swipe. No problem. But they didn't. They offered me a version that was made inherently flawed to support monetization. That is why I don't like it. Okay? The way this system is set up is inherently, in its DNA, it is flawed. Because of the monetization method. Why is it split into three things? Um, for example, why is gear and uh, traits separate? Why, why do I not have an option to combine those things together? Why is there only eight? It's because it would look really bad if you could infinitely spend money on the game. Why, um, why can't I customize this UI in any way? 
right? Because all of that wouldn't support a monetization method, unfortunately. Uh, it, it would not support the microtransaction um, thing. Uh, why are these loadouts instead of actual templates, right? Why is that the case? Why can't I change a weapon, for example, without having to reset it? Why does that change the template? Why? Because... They had to make a value proposition of making it work with the legendary armory so it will be worth the money, basically, for buying these things. And that is the issue um, with this stuff. It's the, it's the subtlety. It's not the price. I don't mind paying. I don't mind paying to unlock build templates. That is not the issue. The issue to me is the fact that the system has been corroded by the monetization. Inherently. That, and it's not fixable can't be fixed because it is from the ground up fundamentally flawed that's why i don't like microtransactions and i and i actually don't like to bash guild wars 2 on this because in general like i said they're actually good we just happen to be playing guild wars 2 right now obviously right um like that that's i don't want to go too hard on guild wars 2 i want to be very clear this is not a criticism of guild wars 2 specifically this applies to every microtransaction Every game that has a microtransaction has, in its DNA, in the source code, they made it worse on purpose. They took their game that they worked hard on and they were really passionate about, right? And they said, okay, let's make it worse. That, to me, is inherently offensive, right? I, I hate that idea. I hate the idea that the devs take their product, they take their game, and they deliberately sabotage it so they can sell you a mostly fix to it. That feels really bad, to be honest. Like, that to me is abhorrent. I don't like the idea of a business model inherently making a product worse. Which sucks, I think. Yeah. And, and I'll be fair here, by the way. This can happen with sub fees as well. For example, if you have a sub fee... Um, what you can do is you can say, well, let's make our game really grindy. That's also bad. And that should also be called out. I think you see this with games like BDO that are like mega, mega grind fests. I've heard that it actually has changed a little bit. And that's kind of a thing of the past, actually. I'm out of date on BDO, but it can happen. Yeah. It absolutely can happen. But there you go. Some less than others. Of course, yeah, there's, it's a sliding scale. It's not, yeah, 100%. But yes, it's, I thought, I thought uh, is that like, did it use, did it go free to play at some point? I thought, has BDO ever had a sub? I thought it had a sub at some point. Or does it have like a premium thing? Also, I'm going into Dragonstorm. Let's go. It's like an optional sub. Ah, okay, yeah. But yeah, oh, that's the problem with optional, right? Like, optional sub is also like... It basically says, if you don't pay the sub, the game is cancer, right? Like, <laughs> Yeah. Unlucky. You hate to see it. Uh, Microsoft only skins? Actually, no. To, no, it's... And Guru is right here. Skins could be earnable through gameplay, but it's worse than that. It's worse than that. If you sell skins, they have to be better than what's obtainable in-game. Be, do not be mistaken here. If you're going to sell a skin, it can't be as good as what's in-game. It must be better. Has to be. Otherwise, who's going to buy that shit? And that is why, and again... Look, hell, Anet would own this. There's no shot Anet would own this. The stuff in the gem store, in general, it's it's better than what's in game, right? Like the type of cosmetics that you can unlock in the cash shop, they're usually pretty fucking sick. I'm not gonna lie. Um, or you make them exclusive, so you know you can, you know, for example, mount skins don't exist really outside of the um the cash shop. Uh, they have changed that a little bit, and fucking big respect to them, obviously. I actually really approve of that, like the Cryptus Skyscale skin, the um Griffin skin, like the the Wizard's Tower one uh, in the vault. Great, love that. That's fantastic. Big fan of that uh, as well. Um, but yeah, like the cosmetics you're going to see in the trading post are going to be in general higher tier than in the game. So again, it's the subtlety here, guys. It's not the fact that you have to pay for something. 
Nothing wrong with that. I love, I love paying for video games. Yes, I love it. I love paying for video games. It's not the paying, it's the subtlety. It's what happens to the game because you're selling something. Yeah? What happens? Yeah, Guild Rider Warcore. It's the only Warcore skin I use. In fact, it's the only mount skin I use because it's the only one you can really get in game. I don't actually have it on this guy. I have it on my char, though. But yeah. Yeah. That's the problem. It's the fact that if you're going to sell that, you've got to give people a reason to sell it. So you've got to, you've got to kind of hold back a little bit almost um, to... It, it, with the in-game stuff to make sure that the cash shop stuff is attractive. Nice of you to clear out the trash, Did you help? Use the crypt disguise card. I don't think I've even got it unlocked. All that jaw mag energy can't be good for you. I mean, honestly, true. Ooh, a weak dragon. Ooh. Jormag has not yet joined him, champion. You must draw them out. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> We're long past excuses, Private. You made your choice. This the last one's racing up from Wolfzord. There are actually some pretty damn cool skins in Wolfzord, aren't they? Yeah, that is true. Hell yeah. Is a big no-no for casuals? I don't actually think necessarily so. I mean, like, the probably 90% of people who play WoW are giga casuals. Uh, and, for example, I am a really casual... Um, okay, let me give you some context here, guys. I am a very casual TV watcher. Um, I'm the kind of guy that looks at get the final season of Game of Thrones and goes, you know what? Eh... It was mediocre, but it had some good moments, okay? Rather than, like, this is the worst thing ever made. These people ruined the series. It's fucking over. That would be like a hardcore TV watcher, for example. Like, I'm like, eh, you know, whatever. I'm a, I'm a casual TV watcher. But I got zero issue with paying for Netflix. I pay for Netflix. I pay for Prime Video, guys. Like, it's no big deal to me, right? Um, I, I'm perfectly happy to pay that, especially Prime, right? Because Prime's just good. Like, Amazon Prime's just good overall. Uh, but yeah, I'm fine with Netflix, right? Um, because it's worth it, right? Uh, and do I use it that much? Honestly, I, I don't think so, actually. I, I don't use Netflix that much. I'm not even sure if I really get my money's worth, to be honest. I, I, I don't use it that often. Um, but I'm not, I, I don't think that means that, like, Netflix is, like, anti-casual. And it's a little bit different, obviously, because, you know, you, you kind of, you know, when it comes to, like, an MMO, you're paying for one game, whereas Netflix, you're paying for, like, a whole bunch of movies and TV shows. It's, it's a little bit different, but I think you know what I mean, right? It's, um, it's like, I, I don't think paying monthly or, 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 like, paying repetitively for something is necessarily anti-casual. It's something that you might like or dislike, and I think that's fair. I think if you don't like something, there's nothing wrong with that. If you wish that, um, you know, you could, and it, well, I mean, you can still buy movies individually, to be fair, right? Like, you can, you can do that, but, yeah. There is no grind, uh, attachment, uh, in Netflix. Yes, it's, again, it's not a one-to-one -one analogy, obviously. And remove more shows. Yeah, I think the price has gone up for Netflix over time, isn't it? And they sell you different qualities. I saw a very interesting video by Lewis Rossman that they, they do some, like, bullshit. They don't even sell you, like, they don't even give you, like, the proper good quality unless you jump through a million hoops. Honestly, more and more, it seems like all these goddamn companies are just evil fuckers, to be honest. You honestly hate to see it. You really do. Yeah. The WoW community, yeah, this is, this honestly, guys, it's, um, the WoW community is Giga Chad. The WoW community has convinced everyone, um, that their game is the most hardcore shit imaginable, okay? It's like, oh my god, bro, this is so hardcore. Do you guys want to know what real World of Warcraft fucking looks like, dude? You want to see what real WoW looks like? Dude. Real WoW looks like this, okay? A goddamn swoglet, right? Uh, that's what the game looks like. It's a frog. Uh, or it's, let's see, what else we got here? Uh, it's, it's like turning into a goddamn murloc, right? 
that uh, you can get, you can buy like a thing in the in the game right now, and you can turn into a murloc. Like that is that's what the that's what real World of Warcraft is. You just like turn to a frog or something. Yeah. It's actually so funny. People's perception of WoW is hilarious to me. It's like the most casual, friendly shit ever. And people are like, oh yeah, bro. Like, you gotta be a hardcore gamer to p play that World of Warcraft game. Roots for its own demise uh, more than other. Eh, it's the oldest. It's, it's been around forever. Um, and also, I, I will definitely say this. There is a little bit of um, ego in the WoW community. They... As long as Jormag is connected to the power of a champion... How can I put this? Frozen, like... They will keep Primordis when you play WoW... There is no other MMO. Every other MMO fades into the background. Um... It's... You know what it's actually like, guys? B playing WoW is like being an American, right? Because um, everything happens in America, right? And it, 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 WoW is basically the equivalent of that, right? Like, yeah, sure, Guild Wars 2 exists. Like, and yeah, sure, England exists. Like, Germany exists. But the USA is where shit goes down, Okay. Right? And th there's an element of truth this as well, right? Like, the United States is an unbelievably important country, right? Like, stuff happens in the USA, everyone watches, right? When something happens in the States, everyone watches, right? Um, for example, when there's an election in the United States, the whole world is looking at that. Not really the case for the UK. Uh, I don't think so. Not not to the same extent. Or like any other country in Europe, right? Like nobody's looking like who's going to win? Is it going to be fucking Keir Starmer or Rishi Sunak? Nobody fucking cares, right? But everyone's looking at the US election. It's kind of like that with World of Warcraft, right? Like, wh like WoW is like the only game that exists uh, in a lot of ways. Like, and everyone's looking at it. And it's true, by the way, right? Um, To an extent, right? Everyone's looking at World of Warcraft. Everyone is um, looking at that game constantly, right? Look, hell, like, it, it, answer, answer this question, guys, right? Answer this question. Um, who do you think talks about who the most? Do you think Guild Wars 2 players talk about WoW more? Or do you think WoW players talk about Guild Wars 2 more, right? Yeah. E exactly, right? Like, fucking, we t constantly talk about World of Warcraft. All the MMOs are like, oh, World of Warcraft, oh, World of Warcraft, killed my dog and salted my crops. It is constant, okay? It is constant. Uh, and then if you ask a WoW player about Guild Wars 2, they'll go, oh, is that game still alive? Right? Like, that's how it goes. And I'm obviously being hyperbolic and silly here, but you get what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Use the prisms now. The champions are hanging on to dragons. More than fire. Yeah. Do you know why that is, though? It's because there was actually a moment in time when Final Fantasy was a big threat to WoW. When WoW was having its, its like, really big rough patch before they decided that making the game unfun isn't a good idea. Um, you know, yeah. Final Fantasy was getting in there. It was actually, you know, fucking, you know, like, like, at, like a mosquito, like, you know? Draining WoW dry. And yeah, people obviously started getting a little bit crazy. Yeah. Yes. This might take a couple Very hours. good. Stay strong. That's how it is. Why Final Fantasy? I'll tell you why, actually. It's very simple. And again, the game director... Um, agrees with this statement, he's even said this, um, that when they set out to create Final Fantasy, they wanted to create the Final Fantasy version of World of Warcraft. Um, the reason why uh, Final Fantasy so successfully capitalized on the mistakes of World of Warcraft is because ultimately the games are quite similar. Um, they have different settings, of course, and uh, it's a different IP, but ultimately the games have a lot of similarities, a lot in common. So if you're a WoW player, a very obvious choice um, to go and play an MMO, if your MMO sucks, or you're not enjoying it right now, the obvious choice is, is, is Final Fantasy, 100%. And um, 
And uh, Final Fantasy very, you know, capitalized on that really well by having a really good phase. You know, it was doing really well and the game was really good, um, while WoW was in its weakest as well. So that's how it is. Yeah. yeah. More its own thing. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure these games are evolve over time as well. Isn't Guild Wars 2 gameplay more similar to WoW gameplay? I haven't played Final Fantasy, so I can't say. But weirdly enough, I would probably actually suspect it, to be honest. Like, WoW gameplay feels very Guild Wars 2-y to me. It's very clear that World of Warcraft wanted to make the game a bit more action-oriented, uh, as opposed to the tab, uh, the, the, you know, kind of your traditional tab target style. The game is pretty action-y um, overall. I would... The, one of the reasons why I... Um, I feel like I was able to learn Gil uh, World of Warcraft so easily is because actually, yes, it is pretty similar um, in terms of like the, the way that you the way that you play WoW, kind of like from a, a top down perspective, is actually very similar to how you go about playing uh, Guild Wars 2. The big difference is kind of like the almost like the the, the systems, right? Like there's no boons in uh, in World of Warcraft. Not, not really, anyway. But you kind of manage um, a lot of unique modifiers, right? Which is kind of like boons, but it's only on you, not on other people, right? Like you're you're managing a lot of um, buffs, basically. That's like a really big part of how the how the game operates. But yeah, it's surprisingly similar. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, was your first hot girlfriend? That as time goes by, wasn't that hot? Um, but if, if we're going to play that analogy, then you you trade that MMO in for a younger model, okay? But then you then you actually the realize that, weak. holy shit, um, you know, my ex had a really good personality, okay? And I mean that in the, the, the literal way, not the other way. Holy shit. My ex was putting in the work to make this relationship work. Sometimes, anyway. Maybe not all the time. Because 100%, like, if you if we want to follow... This is actually a, a kind of a pretty a pretty cringe analogy. But it, it might be better to do it with cars or something like that, right? Like, in fact, I will. Because doing it about, like, people's physical appearance is weird. Um, other MMOs have fancier bodywork. They've got... Um, they've got... They, they, you know, they, they look sick. They've got all the features in them, right? You know, they've got the air condition. They've got the seats that are heated. They, they give you a back massage right while you're in the car. But you know what, dude? World of Warcraft's got one hell of an engine, right? And that's where a lot of the other MMOs kind of fall down a little bit, right? Is that... <laughs> is that they've got all the fancy stuff. Guild Wars 2, awesome systems. Really well-designed game, in my opinion. The combat is awesome. The classes are fun and, and, and different to your normal MMO fantasy. But it doesn't have the engine. It just doesn't have the goddamn engine. And World of Warcraft, it's a bit of rough around the edges. It's a little bit scuffed. You know, you're absolutely right. Uh, it is a bit scuffed. But goddamn, that engine is insane. When that thing revs up, holy shit, it's good. And that's the World of Warcraft story. But they're both good games. Do buffs still disappear when you die in WoW Rays? I always despise the downtime. Well, I mean, it's like one global cooldown to get the buffs back, to be fair. But yeah, there is a bit more down. Well, I mean, there's not much downtime, to be honest, in raiding. You just like res everyone and go again. Yeah. There weren't any leeches here. It's This sucks. This entire operation's been a failure. always liked about Guild Wars 2 uh, combat though. Uh, yeah, honestly, the proc. The proc versus non-proc thing. I actually... I don't know. I kind of like a little bit of both. I like... Um, I like procs um, when it comes to attacking. I think that's fun. I like stuff like, you know, you throw a fireball. Um, you know, uh, th th my favorite one was Mage. Um, Mage, it still has this, right? Like, if you land two crits in a row on Mage, your next Pyroblast, like a really powerful spell, is instant cast. Right? Boom! 
that's that's cool. However, defense, like you have a 30% chance to parry, terrible, horrible mechanic. Um, stuff like you've got um, a 30% chance to take 20% less damage, terrible, so annoying in my opinion. That's just really annoying when you have like unreliable survivability. But when you've got like... Um, I, I like dynamic rotation. That That's kind of fun to me. I think that is good. I, I can definitely understand people not liking that. I think it's, it's definitely personal preference, 100%. Uh, but I like a little bit... I like a little bit of... Um, a little bit of RNG in the rotation. I think it's fun. Uh, a little bit of RNG in your offensive potential. As long as it's not too extreme. If you've got like 20% swing, that's really rough. Right? So let's say you're doing a rotation and you've got like 20% variance. That's a problem. But if there's like a little bit of variance within the you know like say a, a, a three minute rotation that's fine yeah yes what big achievements are you proud of in guild wars 2 um honestly it's the tournaments the things that uh, i'm proud of in this game are that my youtube content my twitch stream it is um uh it is I think the speedrun was pretty good as well, actually. The uh, CM speedrun. I was pretty happy. That was fun uh, to do that. Uh, World vs. World Guild in HOT, 100% in terms of, like, in-game stuff uh, as well. That was good. Uh, Mystic Builds. Mystic Builds was cool. That was actually really fun um, as well. Uh, that was that was a good time. So, like, the old guilds I've had, I think I'm... Uh, I think we're pretty good, actually. A bit degen, but not too bad. Um, and yeah, definitely the tournaments though. In particular, uh, Elitist Raiding Party 3, I think was pretty damn good. Uh, Masters of the Arena 2, I was pretty happy with. It was, it was nearly there in terms of what I'd like, for sure. I have P off an HT. I want to buy you the Sotor EOD. Which one will be better? Um, it kind of is what you're looking for, to be honest. I'd say EOD's got more content. Like, a, a, a significantly more content. Uh, Soto has got less content, but it's, like, the newest version of the game, right? And you get, like, a combat feature. But the combat feature is not as good as EOD. EOD, you get more elite specs. EOD is better. Boom. I think Gilsey scales their new CMs without elite specs since Soto has none. Nah, there's no way. That would just make them a complete meme. Uh, but, yeah, that's uh, that's the deal. I got gift of Aurene that DS. Yo, nice. Very good. Why do they have that 10 seconds of eating well fed at this point? I'll tell you. Um, this is something that I kind of think is giga chad about Blizzard. Blizzard, they are committed. You will roleplay in World of Warcraft. You will enjoy that well fed. Okay? Oh yeah, you will. You'll enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> those swirlies? Oh, those AoEs being red on a red background? Oh yeah, it's a lava boss. It's firing red AoEs at you. Enjoy that roleplay. You will roleplay. <laughs> oh man, that's funny. What amounts of a cast time in WoW? They should probably just remove that. It's a bit unnecessary. It would actually kind of change the balance of the game. They'd have to be careful about that. But yeah, it's a bit unnecessary. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So leave it in PvP. It'll be relevant in uh, M plus as well, I think, actually. But I mean, yeah. We relevant M plus, relevant PvP. Uh, not relevant open world, really, but, you know. Mob stacking, hover interrupt. Yeah, I mean, nameplates can be a bit, bit cursed sometimes, especially on the big pools, that's for sure. Focus target can help with that, though. Yeah, yeah I think it would be cool if uh, mounts were instant cast, especially with, like, dragon riding as well. That would be pretty decent, I think. Time boom to insurmount. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, I mean, it, it is relevant. Absolutely. Yeah, it would be relevant. Uh, so they have to be a little bit careful with that, but they could maybe do it. I don't know. 
que é isso? Que é isso? What annoyed you in Guild Wars 2, Soldiers? <laughs> but yeah, those are things that I'm proud of. Like, I'm, I'm definitely most proud of uh, the stuff I've done on my stream, pretty much. Because that is, um, that is the things that I consider to be good. That's what I consider to be uh, high quality. And the YouTube, obviously my YouTube channel is epic. Epic. Okay, Drakar, Dragar. Condi, Alacra, and Vindicator. Nice, that's big. CC. I will never CC. I am not a CC. I despise Org, so when it's Guru giving me presents right before Divine Toll hits the roots. I didn't pay him, he's just really generous. Ah. Honestly, give me Ebon Might on pull. Do it. Ah! <laughs> Yo! We leeching boys! Combo leech. That's actually a big expose. Skane gang, SG. Snab guild leeching. I, I don't think it's the fake one either. Combo leech. Very nice. Very nice. That's a huge expose, guys. N wait, 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 what do you mean, nah? What do you mean by that? Just finishing my dinner. Ooh, okay. Acceptable. That, that's a, that could be an excuse, though. That could be an excuse. Sus. There's watching. It's stealing magic from the lost spirits. Uh, Dragar. Now get in there and cut off the source. I'm gonna do a portal. I'm gonna do a portal on the second one. Boom. I'm gonna go through, then I'm gonna take a portal and port everyone. Easy. Daily reminder, guys, that Viviloof used to run eight-hour meta train every day. When are you coming back and doing that, bro? Daily eight-hour meta train. If someone's already blocked all the people from NA, why recruit? No, he has been blocked by all of the people on NA. And on EU. Maybe I'd do it to win MDI, Metatrain Warts. Ah, yes, Metatrain Warts. You know what's actually really funny is that um, you and Rated have both said that you will be doing TGP Warts, which is pretty big. You've both admitted that you will play Augmentation Evoker. And Rated is going to be playing Org next season. Feels good. That's not a thing, is it? Oh, no, no, no. Sneb actually has, but well, not his main, but his ult. Yeah, his his ult has been mass blocked. Dude, this this guy is fully AFK. How does he think he can get away with this leeching behavior? Yeah. <laughs> oh, 
well, he's not good on speed keys, but on high keys. Funny enough, I actually was seeing playing speed keys purely for the survivability and, like, it, I guess it can heal a little bit to keep people up as well. Um, yeah, it actually, it was played in some of the fastest teams. Not every team was running Augmentation Evoker, but the no heal comps were running Augmentation Evoker in the MDI as well, yeah. It's very demoralizing to enter an Everbloom 28 knowing that Chronic will leech the entire key. Yo, dude, 28 Everbloom is fucked up. That, car, that key is hard, actually. Although you have some ranged DPS. That, I think that definitely makes it uh, a little bit less cancer, that's for sure. So that's the good news. Yeah, for, our, for the Cope Comp, Everbloom is unbelievably horrific. You play Stormgate? I'll probably try it at least, yeah. Oh, wait. Did I almost thought he he, he was uh, he joined the fight, but he hasn't yet. Third boss will be a nightmare. Yeah, I mean, third boss is going to be very, very rough, yeah. Third boss is rough on no matter what. Although, our comp is okay. Do you guys have raid shards, Eddie? If you can get raid shards, I feel like it gets way easier. To be honest, if everyone has Raid Shard, I think um, keys like that are way better, especially third boss there. Because if you can just alternate, the, if you can get the Raid Shard in there to replace a personal set, it's so much fucking nice. So much nicer. Because like Rated has a Raid Shard and Vivi have one, it's really good. It, honestly, we're kind of screwed though. It's kind of annoying for me, like having Raid Shard makes stuff like the Tree Boss so much easier on um, Dark Art, for example, for me. Uh, and bosses like Razan as well, actually. It's really nice to have the Rage Heart. Uh, oh, hang on. Let me do a portal. Let me uh, help everyone out. Let me out. Boom. Oh my god, I fucking griefed. Okay, no, I ungriefed. Huge. Yeah. Was ended by a pack of plants uh, and some dudes. That dungeon is a living hell on tank. Um, no joke. It is really, really annoying because the caster, the problem is like if you, um, the casters, when they get stopped, they'll all sync up their casts. And if basically any of them go off, you're going to die. Uh, it's not nice. How do I survive rise? What do you, what, uh, do you die to? What boss or like what, uh, what part? Yeah, they do. They just gun you down. They do a lot of damage. And they have 45-yard range as well, so they're actually really annoying to kind of kite in line of sight. It's uh, very annoying to deal with those. That's why the, the route that we go for, uh, we typically skip a lot of the naturalists and cultivators. We just do cultivators, because cultivators aren't really a problem, but like the menders and the naturalists are. And if you do Menders and Naturalist, they have to be really close together so you can CC them easily. And having ranged kicks there is huge. You you want uh, if you want at least one range on that key, uh, because otherwise the second boss is miserable. Um, and also, honestly, a lot of the trash pulls are pretty miserable without at least one ranged kick. It makes it way easier uh, to deal with, in my opinion. So like, having Mage, and obviously, ma well, honestly, Mage is really good there. Because Mage has the range kick, and you have Mass Barrier, which is really good. Or Org, actually. Org is really good, too. Because Org has the range. It's, it's like a semi-range kick, but also makes you really tanky as well. Time loss battlefield is a pain. I know I'm doing it wrong. Uh, are you tanking? What, do you, what, do you, what are you? What are you? Uh, okay, hey, Lauren, thanks for the raid. Really appreciate that. Yo! Um, so, Morchi in the battle. So... When it comes down to uh, surviving Morchi, just do not be behind the boss, right? So you don't get frontaled. And here's the big one. Here's the, in my opinion, this is, oh, yo, 2 us 14 you're the sick. Holy shit. That is a dance moment. Here's the big one. You know when the ads are about to spawn Sognus and they're going to run at you? Um, do not let them touch you. Pre-position in front of one of the traps. So your ad immediately, right, immediately, immediately, immediately runs into it without ever reaching you. That's what's going to get you, right? Uh, yeah, you can frost mage them um, or, or whatever, right? Like, But that's like the key thing that you want to do. 
Uh, and then when it comes to like the Morchies, oh like the Morchies out the hat. Yeah, honestly, the way you can do that, just turn your UI off, right? Like, um, turn your UI off. Or disable nameplates, rather. Like, just disable nameplates when that happens, it makes it way easier to see which one it is. Uh, and then as a Windwalker on Time Loss uh, Battlefield, um, honestly, there's just damage going out there. Make sure you don't bait the frontals into the middle. Basically, um, if he, if the boss kills any of, like, the ghosts fighting, what happens is, is he gets a stack of a buff that makes him do ray, uh, group damage every single time he auto-attacks, which is going to very, very quickly kill you. As a DPS player, your really big priority is going to be stunning and stopping and killing the, uh, axe thrower or the archer as quickly as possible. So if you're on Horde, it's the Axe Thrower, it's the Archer if you're facing the Alliance. They apply a really nasty bleed. So as a DPS player, you want to immediately CC those, right? Um, and prevent it from casting the bleed on anyone. Otherwise, it's going to do very, very heavy damage to you. Also, don't think you can get clever and tank the Blade Storm. It's not a smart idea. Unless you're really, really tanky, it, just don't do that. Uh, it's not going to work out. And also, um, when you... Lure the boss for the same reason as the frontals. Lure it around the edge of the arena so he doesn't blade storm any of the ads. That will not only murder your tank if too many ads die, it will also murder you too. Uh, but yeah, the big thing there is the frontals. Don't kill stuff with the blade storm, so don't go through the middle with the blade storm. Same with the frontals. Um, and kill the ads fast. In particular, the axe throw, like the archer thing. Kill it quickly. Dude, did the dude? I feel like the SG guy ran in there at the last second as well. I need to check the vod. I was I got distracted by giving people advice. Should I bait him into his own faction during the blaze or the opposite faction, which adds buff him? Uh, it's just if any yeah, if he kills the opposing faction NPCs in general, they're going to be fighting each other. They'll be like an oppo. They'll be like um. You know, a horde warrior battling an alliance one. So you you don't want to bait them into any of them, right? Like you you don't want that. Like do do not kill like the ghosty ads. You need to kill the the ones that actually exist, right? Like he summons like the 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 caster one, the melee one, and the archer one. Kill the ones that actually spawn when he does like for the alliance or for the horde. Those have got to die. And you have, if you have any kind of um, hard CC, do that immediately. For example, as a monk, what you could do is you could uh, paralysis, for example, right? Or you could like ring of peace the archer towards you so you can kill it really quickly. Or you can use any of your stops, right? When it's when you see it casting the axe throw, boom, paralyze it. Or ring of peace it so the cast doesn't go off. Or uh, leg sweep, right? Like you'd use your your uh, your AOE stop, right, to to prevent it from casting. Because if that, that's what's going to get you, especially on a tyrannical key, is if your healer gets hit by the bleed or a DPS player gets hit by the bleed. So that's the uh, the big one. What do you recommend for beginners to make gold for legendaries? Uh, strike missions, open world farming, and then work up towards fractals. And do the wizard's vault. Do the wizard's vault shit. It's OP. Busted, my friends. Look at that. I've nearly done the weekly, guys. I have to kill five five more supply caravans in World vs. World. Then I get 10 laurels, a celebrate. Well, you get 450 astral acclaim a week. That, that is ridiculous. That's busted. That's, in, that's unhinged, guys. That's crazy. Wild stuff, my friends. Absolutely wild stuff. Incredible. But yeah, that's very good. Cute gamer girls on fire as usual. Boom. Who will win, guys? Ultimate showdown. Wicked frogs versus cute gamer girls. There's a lot of drama there, guys. A lot of drama. A lot of uh, a lot of beef. Yeah, that's literally the name of the guild, guys. Seriously, the name of the guild is cute gamer girls. You can't just lol at that. I think this is a joke. I think this is some kind of uh, some kind of meme. Um, imagine if NA had a team, RIP. Well, NA could make a team. You could literally make a team, Narsen. The rules allow you to get 10 peepos and train them up and play the tournament. Yeah. Boom. There's no dragons then. It's over.
Mm. But yeah, that's how you survive uh, Rise. You know, I'll tell you a secret. Um, and this, maybe this is comforting, maybe this is horrifying. I actually think Rise bosses are very easy. Um, I only think, I think the only really scary bosses in Rise, it's actually Tyr. I think Tyr is by far the scariest boss. It's very easy to run out of room. It's very easy to get one shot by the Soak. Uh, and your tank can die as well. It's, it's, it's quite dangerous in a lot of ways. Tank can die to the frontal. Um, you can fuck up the baits and cover the arena. And the soak can kill you very easily. End boss is actually not that scary, um, to be honest. Like, Chrono Lord Deus, you can definitely die to it. But it's not that scary, even on Tyrannical, uh, I think. But yeah, it's it, only if people are, like, noob. Right, like you should on, on any like remotely high key, like a weekly eighteen, you should never be dying to Chrono Lord Deus. Like I can see people dying to tier one hundred percent. Like that boss can be dangerous, um, but honestly, once you kind of get the trick, once you like figure out how to strategize and do Morchi and uh, Battlefield, it's not that bad. Um, it's not that bad at all. Also, if you're tanking Battlefield, move him into the middle a little bit. Makes the baits easy and makes them makes the ads spawn near him. Makes it easy to deal with too. Oh, just, I mean, in general? Oh, well, I mean, I would like to do a challenge mode invitational style tournament, but, I mean, I, I'm going to need money for that. I'm, I'm not going to lie, for CMI, dude, <laughs> I'd want to be paid a lot. Like, running a tournament like that is, is pain, right? Like, that is... If I was writing an invoice for what I would charge to run something like Challenge Mode Invitational, uh, yeah, if I was writing an invoice for how much I'd charge that, it would probably be like, if I'm feeling generous, four thousand dollars. Like if I'm if I'm feeling very sympathetic towards the people who are wanting me to run that, it's four grand, a hundred percent. Yeah, that's what's gonna that's what's gonna cost. It won't cost you that, don't worry. Uh, it'll, I'll, I probably will do like a, I probably will do like a crowdfunding thing, like a, a some kind of like goal. Maybe I'll even have like a goal on stream, like a a donation goal or something like that. But um, yeah, I mean, it's uh, I can't do it for free. I cannot do it for free, my friends. Have you heard about the wow doxing situation? Uh, no, and you know what? I'm not even sure if I want to know, to be honest. Uh, anything that involves doxing is just, it, it, it is psychopath level shit that just, sh yeah, just shouldn't even really be talked about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You love to see it, guys. You love to see it. Or maybe you don't really love to see it. I, I know I don't. Is that the guy who made the WoW e-girl tier list? Wait, what? I'm not even sure what I want to know. How can most players in the other do less DPS than auto-attacking? Uh, by not auto-attacking? How do you like participating in this MDI's time trials? Are you closer or far away time wise than you expected? Actually closer. Um, I was expecting us... Uh, actually, no, that's not true. I think we're about where I was expecting. Nah, we were about where I was expecting. To be honest. We were. Um, we were. Because... We didn't do any preparation. We ran a really bad comp. And we also barely played. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I was, I was actually surprised at how easy the Everbloom was. Um, I was, I, I was surprised, I was surprised both ways. So, I thought we'd be a little bit closer on Murazon's Rise. And I thought we would struggle more than we did on Everbloom. We fucked up the Everbloom because we tried to do, like, really, really fast pulls. And, and that would have taken us a long time to practice, actually. Um, but it wasn't actually as hard as I thought. I, I think if, um... If we played every day and just grinded our hearts out 
I would say it would have been fringe possible for us to qualify. I, I think it was actually doable. Um, if we played like six hours a day grinding those two keys, yeah, I think we probably maybe could have squeezed in just barely. Mm, maybe not, to be honest, actually. I think our, our strategy and composition was pretty dog shit, uh, especially the comp. It was fucking awful. Um, so maybe not. We would have been, I think we would have been pretty close, though. We I think we could have done the Everbloom times. We definitely could have done the Everblooms. Yes. What is this? I gotta grind your gears. Nice. Incredible. I think uh, MDI is also just not something we're very well equipped to deal with because we've only done high keys. We haven't done fast keys, really. So a lot of the pulls, a lot of the strategies that we use are not optimized for speed. They're optimized for survivability as well. So we don't, we haven't really developed the skill set to do speed running either whatsoever. Um, and uh, I actually think that TGP, I'm really interested to see how well we'll do that. I think that we actually have... Um, some possibility to actually do to potentially be able to make something happen in the great push i think because again i think that it's a skill set that we are better at um and it's also something we're going to prepare a lot more for and re-roll for as well do you think anet will overhaul the ui um ah, i would i wouldn't say never never say never uh, but I think it's very likely to be an uh, unlikely to be an overhaul. I think it's much more likely to be an incremental set of small changes that will add up to an overhaul. Uh, but uh, a UI stuff is definitely a little bit tricky for Arena. But I mean, they're they're trying to, you know, do what they can. Do you think there will ever be guilds with more raids and a scaling M plus like system? I could actually imagine a universe. Um, I could imagine a universe where. Um, Where they added an M plus system, like tier five fractals that scale infinitely. I could see that. That would actually be an interesting thing that they could do. And that I don't think is impossible. Uh, and by the way, it would be probably, um, well, I guess if it's infinitely scaling, it doesn't really matter. But I would just like remove potions there. Like potions don't work. Uh, that's not going to save you. Uh, uh, instabilities don't work. Or other, um, you know, the, the singularities, that doesn't work either. Get the fucking shit out of there. Uh, like, all of the overpowered stuff that kind of, in my opinion, kind of makes the game worse, um, wouldn't work in tier 5. I don't think they'd do that. That's what I would do. I would just make it not work. But people probably wouldn't like that. What's the theoretical key that being on WoW, do you know? It kind of varies from season to season. Like, right now, the very, very top keys are looking like plus 31. I imagine 32 is probably possible. Uh, maybe even a 33 on some of the keys, on Fortified, on Tyrannical, I, you run into hard limits way quicker. A lot of the bosses spiral into like eight minute long boss fights um, this tier because of the way they work. And also, um, uh, also they just one shot you as well. So Tyrannical limits are, I mean, some of them, I'm not even sure you can do some Tyrannical keys on 30. Like uh, there is a team trying to do a 30 Everbloom that is going to be right on the edge of possible, I think. If they're able to um, do that, it's that it, it's probably 31. It is impossible, I would say, uh, on Tyrannical Everbloom. But yeah, it kind of varies depending on the key and de on depending on like the season as well. Yeah. So yeah, that's probably what you can do. Echo were barely able to kill uh, Throne third boss on 30. Yeah, I, I imagine 30 Throne is theoretically possible, to be honest. Um, but very hard. I imagine... I think there's actually a bit of a world's first rush for that, actually. Uh, there's a lot of teams trying to time 30 Throne. I think 30 Throne is more realistic than 30 Everbloom. 30 Everbloom is probably a bit of a stretch, I would say. Um, like, But it's it, it could happen. 
31. Yeah, 31 is, uh, yeah, I'm not sure about that one. Like, uh, maybe a little impossible. Yeah. It's shown there's no TGP this season, better format. Yeah, it's, um, it's interesting. I think they're both good. Uh, I think they're both good for different reasons. The problem with, um, MDI is that you definitely have to know a lot of, like, very specialized techniques that aren't as relevant um, in, that aren't as relevant in regular play, right? You kind of have to go out of your way to practice MDI, whereas you don't really have to go out of your way to practice TGP. That's kind of the difference here. That's, um, one of the issues with raid tournaments in Guild Wars 2, although not really. I feel like the raid tournaments in Guild Wars 2, they're basically MDI, but I think it's actually okay, because the skills that you practice in a regular raid clip, a lot of the time, that's what you'll actually be doing in a raid tournament anyway. The big thing is that you, you, do full clears a lot of the time, or individual bosses, but I think a lot of guilds also do full clears, so it's kind of the, the same thing as well. It's like not total overlap. Um, there's not total overlap there as well, uh, but yeah. And MDI is definitely cool, because people come up with really crazy stuff. Snowcrows are going in WoW. Um, there's a variety of like really good guilds in uh, in World of Warcraft. Like, the, the guilds that get worlds first a lot, it's Echo and Liquid are the two setups. And then you've got, uh, there's a lot of other like really solid guilds in like the top top 10, right? And all that kind of stuff. At Angels, Lamau. Wow. That's rough. Yeah. Luaron destroys Angels in debate. 1v1. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what's crazy, actually, is that Luaran is actually too casual for uh, World of Warcraft. She broke. Couldn't even play Augmentation Evoker. That actually feels bad. That honestly feels pr pretty fucking bad, man. You honestly hate to see that. Anyway. Wait, were you boys doing keys today, by the way, guys? Long time. So, Did you guys key hard and key no, fast? That's what I want to know here. Wait. You're an idiot. We were. Ah, very nice. Very, very nice. Yeah. Keys. More experimenting. Ah, learning the forbidden technology. Very good. Very, very good. Oh, man. Oh. And do I do a better watch? Because there's a bigger chance that small mistakes can lead to big upsets. I think, you know, this is one of the really interesting things uh, about tournament play. Um, you want, this is so interesting. Um, you want your tournament to be a little bit unfair. Um, a little bit. Um, because if you make your tournament too fair, or your game too fair... The better player will always win. Um, and that can actually be boring sometimes uh, when that happens, actually. Which is why, yeah, stuff like um, MDI is very exciting. It's the same reason why the raid tournaments are exciting to watch. Um, it's because the, the, a worse team can win by playing better on the day. Um, that is important, actually. It is very important. Uh, for that to happen. Uh, TGP, the best team will always win. Almost always. Like, for example, in the last, um, The Great Push, holy shit. Like, Echo annihilated everyone. It wasn't even close. Um, and that was because they're, they're the best team, right? There's not much of a question about that. Like, Echo's team is superior. But in MDI, occasionally, other teams actually do take games off um, Echo, right? Like, I believe it's even been fairly close sometimes. And a big part of that is because any tiny error can completely throw things out of whack. Or um, a, a very small optimization, like a, a secret, like a little bit of secret source, can completely change the game. Yeah. Um, so that is pretty cool, to be honest. I have Killrog. Was the eye of Killrog here? What do we got? Kill him to maintain threat. Click. Holy shit. Yeah. 
the Georgie Swin non-stop got boring to watch. Yeah, uh, that, you know, this is one of the really difficult things with group games, um, to be honest. Like, <sighs> when you have, like, the mega team, that is a bit of a problem. Um, I, I think usually it's lack of incentive, though. Being able to perform um, uh, with consistently also skills, being able to lose one of the three. Yeah, sure, that, that maybe, but you know what I'm trying to get at here. It's like, um, you, you don't actually want the the best team to win every time, right? Like, you, you want chaos. You want to introduce volatility into the game um, in some sense. There has to be a little bit of... Um, of not exactly randomness, but almost randomness to it. Because ultimately, that's what it is. Like, you know, for example, guys. Uh, this happened a lot in my tournaments, right? Like, little micro mistakes from Snow Crows has, has cost them dear. Um, in ERP, uh, you know, obviously in, in ERP 2 uh, and in ERP 3 as well, right? Like, some things really went badly for them. Like, even though I think, like, if we're going to be honest here, like, SC is the best speedrunning guild in the game, obviously. Uh, and have been as well historically. But the volatility of the live format, especially when it when you add, like, the no death allowed mechanic, it makes it really fucking spicy uh, when something like that can happen. Because there's uncertainty on who's going to win. Now, the, the way you can kind of have this is also, you just need to make it so the game is really competitive and there's loads of teams on the same level. But that's very difficult to do when the scene is very small. And also in PvE as well, when there's not like direct interaction between the two teams. It's quite difficult to, to make that um, be the case a lot of the time. Uh, I mean, MDI is really good at this because WoW is unbelievably competitive. So there actually are loads of really sick teams. Maybe, you know, not necessarily vying for the top spot, but definitely vying for like the top four. It's really intense. Uh, definitely worse for what World's First is. Like it is in PvP as well as I understand it and also in PvE. Um, so it's, it's really difficult. The Guild, Wars, the Guild Wars 2 PvP scene always had difficulties. And I actually don't really feel confident to speak on this. I don't know why it was like this. But Guild Wars 2 PvP has always had problems with teams... Almost like not enough depth of the field, right? Like not enough good players to make loads of good teams. This has been a, a very consistent problem with the game um, over time, I think. And like what happens is, is like... All of the teams end up, like, as mega teams, right? Like, all of the good players, like, conglomerate onto one team, pretty much. But yeah, there you go. Yeah. Dude, this thing just dropped a thing on me. So the so they go uh, to other games. I mean, I don't think it's just because there's PB and then rotational. I don't think it's just that, to be honest. Like, um, because it works out pretty well in other games like MOBAs, which is kind of similar, right? Like you have, you know, you have the PvP thing. I don't think it happens in other PvP games. I don't know actually why it happened in Guild Wars 2. It might just because it's MMOs, right? Like MMO PvP just was just not really a thing. Uh, so it just didn't really attract enough people to generate that depth of field. I don't know. You also combat so much better than WoW. You know what? Because you've said that, I have to contradict it. WoW combat is so much better than Guild Wars 2. There you go. Now we've both said something. Now we've both made a statement. And we can get angry at each other. Yes. Let's do it. Exactly. Smadge. Smadge. It is time. To the roles, you can improve uh, both simultaneously, whereas in Guild Wars 2, you don't really have that. Yeah, because you got like the... Yeah, you, you're kind of like, well... I guess it's a little bit more fluid in Guild Wars, for sure. Yeah. Uh... Um. 
no it was a bad decision Gil in general ah oh, you know i really want to disagree with that but I, I think i'd probably agree with you for pragmatic reasons but in terms of design i i think it really sucks uh, to be honest, I, I really like how Guild Wars 2 does things, but I think I think we could definitely find some common ground in the fact that it works, right? Like, the more defined roles is very effective. It's a very, um, it works. It makes a game function. That's for sure. Yeah, it's easier, exactly, yeah. It's, it's easier to understand. It, it, it allows people to interact with the game much easier. For sure, yeah. Yup. I think Guild Wars 2 combat worked well on a mobile, like a PvP map. Oh, uh, yeah. I think uh, Guild Wars 2 PvP could actually be a really good um, standalone game. So, like, just Conquest on its own. Could be really good. Guild Wars 2 definitely gives more result and less somewhere. To be honest, um, uh, m maybe this is me being very romantic here, but... Um, I just honestly feel like what happened with Guild Wars 2 is that um, Guild War, the, Guild, the original Guild Wars 2 dev said, we're going to make the best MMO ever. And they actually succeeded. But the problem was, is they had no plan. They, they, they almost, they didn't know what to do with it when they did it. Right? They, they, um, they were like a lottery winner that won the lottery and... Um, didn't understand how to spend it, right? Or invest it, right? Or or, or, or or anything like that. They just didn't know what to do with it, right? It's like, um, yeah. It, that That's ultimately what happened. They, there was no plan, right? And by the way, that's not even me being an asshole. Like, you can see that in the game's development history. There very obviously wasn't a plan. That's not flame. That's just true. There very obviously wasn't a plan uh, for what they were going to do with the game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's a tricky meme. Indeed. No, horizontal rotation, they're ticking time bomb before people get bored and, and move on. Um, I think that's true if you don't release a lot of content. Um, okay, let, let's imagine this. Do you think people would get bored of no horizontal progression if Guild Wars 2 released as much content as WoW did? There's no fucking shot. Uh, there's no way. Like, if they were, like, cranking, um, like, a WoW raid, in, like, every eight months, like, what WoW does, right? And they're, they're doing, like, fucking new fractals all over this, like, adding new M+, and stuff like that. There's no shot. Nobody's getting bored. Um, if, uh, if Guild Wars 2 do that. Even without, even without vertical prog. The guys are insanely difficult, else it falls over uh, day one to two. Um, I, I think, could, couldn't you do... Um, I think there are ways around this, to be honest. Like, I mean, you solve it with difficulty settings, right? You have your mythic, basically. Um, and yeah, the content does have to be insanely difficult, but not on, on every difficulty level, right? It doesn't always... It doesn't have to always be like... Um, you can, you know, you can have something like normal and heroic. Yes. If you're solely reward incentivized. Uh, the thing is, most players are solely reward incentivized, especially in Guild Wars 2, actually. Like, most players are extremely reward driven in this game. Yeah. Oh, I'm calling? Uh, yo. Yo, what's going on, Sneb? Yo. Yo, okay, first, personal update. I got a second call back. Yo, the... let's go, bro. Yeah. That's big. They sent me in. Well, you know, okay, this is kind of cruel, though. They they send me. <laughs> Academia is just so weird. Mm. They send me, they send me like, hey, we want to interview on this day and time. Confirm if you can come. And I'm like, that's okay. in three All days. Right. All right. And then, and then they attached a paper and they said, also, write two pages analyzing this paper Send it to us by tomorrow. Oh shit! I'm like, what? what? I'm like, what the hell? I have like a life. Mm. Like, <laughs> like I can't. Ah. <laughs> uh. Right. So the the stream is gonna be a bit short today. Okay. That's. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ruthless, but mm. but I think it's a good sign because they sent me, 
they sent me an article on loss aversion, okay. which is related to gambling, mm. right? So I think I think she did that because she knows what I'm interested in, and wants to see if I can actually handle talking about it. Okay, seems good. So that's that's cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Anyways, enough of that though. That's just exciting personal news. Mm. I heard that you've been on a leeching tirade. That's correct. Today. I've located many leeches. I actually. I, a, a leech was leeching Dragon's End. Blatant leeching. And th th you'll love this, though. You'll actually love this. Check this out. Check this out. EU Dragon's End. Not that many people AFK. Three people AFK, I think. Dragon's End fails. This guy, who was AFK the entire time, flames people for being AFK. No joke. Wow. Yeah. And he was leeching the entire event. He was doing like an auto run thing, so he didn't get DC'd and just went full leech. And then at the end, he flamed people for being AFK. What do you think about that? Wow. That's that's intense. After the it's... event failed. And also there was actually an SG member leeching Drakkar on E. Who was it? <laughs> um I can't the name again I I would have to go back at the VOD. Someone could probably find it. It's got a clip or something. But yeah, someone was actually a full leech. Oh damn. I, I gotta check the Discord yeah. though to see if somebody's already called them out. That's gonna be funny. Yeah. <laughs> they were on the platform, Snab. They <laughs> they were on the platform and the then they, they were ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro, just making this pizza real quick. Mm. Don't worry, I'll hop down to help you with that giant yeah, dragon attack exactly. everybody. It just yeah, there was another guy leeching there as well. I went up to them, I said, are we leeching, boys? And then they said, oh, you no, know, bro, I'm finishing my dinner, bro. <laughs> they went back in. Wow. Yeah. But actually, this is my... Seriously, Sneb, I'm going to have to say this. I am the judge of the Guild Wars 2 community. I actually judge... Um, I judge the Guild Wars 2 community... Innocent. I don't think that oh. many people actually hard leech. I think people play semi AFK. I like, think that's pretty common, but I don't actually view that as. I'm not going to condemn that. I'm not going to condemn being like. I mean, come on, who hasn't been semi AFK, right? Come on. Like, we've all done that. Um, but hard leeching, I think, is uncommon. And this guy who was leeching Dragon's End, tell me what you think of this. I actually spoke to him after. He said that he leeches Dragon's End essentially daily. Wow. He admitted it. It's kind of inspiring if you think about it. It's mm. like extreme commitment. Yeah. And actually, check this out, Snap. This might interest you. Uh, chat. Chat. If you oh. guys want more leeches in Guild Wars 2... XDD tree in the chat. Or the other thing oh. as well. If you actively leech, not because of the rewards, but only because you want to essentially deny the community from completing events, also put XDD tree. Take a look at this. Look at the chat, Snub. Uh, the funniest part about leeching is it is not new players that do it. It is, yeah, it's it veterans. is old, yeah. grizzled veterans yeah. they that are the leeches. just don't yeah. care. They are the leeches. <laughs> the greatest leeches. They were us the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> Who would have thought? You know, there's got to be some kind of like interesting psychological phenomena going on mm. here. Because I think that people justify their bad actions by... Uh, by saying, well, you know, I've helped a lot in the past. <laughs> mm. So now I leech. So now I, I, I'm i justified in leeching. Yeah. Wow. How do you feel about the fact that so you can't you even grief the Octavine by one burning anymore? Because they all die one burn anyway. Oh, I... Okay, no. Have you done Triple Trouble yet? No. Is it bugged right now or something? Oh, dude. You gotta get... Yeah, look. You gotta get the boys and go do Triple Trouble. Holy. Is I bugged out with the scaling or something? Yes. They call it buttered. That, mm. That's what they're calling it. The, the guilds are, are saying, is your worm buttered? <laughs> mm. 
or buttery or something. Yeah. Because <laughs> uh, uh, it melts. It melts very yeah. quickly. It gets destroyed. Yeah. yeah, it's a weird term, guys. I didn't make it up. They're just saying the worm is buttered or something. It was buttery, buttered, something like that. And then if yes, then they will accidentally kill the worm. So they, they're right now, everyone is incur like the commanders are all encouraging people in the map to auto attack only so they can tell if the worm is buttered or not. Hmm. <laughs> it's the weirdest thing ever. But um yeah, if they don't, apparently people went in the first time when the bug happened and they went to do the burn phase and oh, they just yeah. like the, rifled yeah. the HP down as hero they, failed. They, <laughs> yeah, they failed immediately, yeah, because it just died. Yeah, that, that actually sucks. But dude, you should go do it. It's actually hilarious because if you get one person on each worm um, and you're doing a lot of damage, you'll just one burn it. Uh, but the problem is that if they're not all buttered... Then it fails, yeah. The event goes wrong. Then, yeah, then it fails. <laughs> uh, it's a bug right now. There's a couple of events that are just bugging out uh, right now. There's, 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 uh, this is actually... It, it's it's kind of like a recurring bug, by the way. It's like... It happens sometimes, just all the time, actually, on a lot of things, actually. Um, on certain events in particular. Like on Aetherblade, for example. Sometimes the boss just takes a while to scale and it loses the first 20% of its health it, almost immediately. It happens in a couple of places. But basically... What's happening is, is that the event isn't correctly scaling. Wait, what the hell was that? Uh, and it's happening with Octovine as well. Like, Octovine also just gets one shot as well. Stuff like that. Octovine. Oh my gosh. What's going on? Oh, I just got another interview request. Okay. <laughs> but this is for a job. Hmm. Uh Snebwarts. Uh Yes. Jeez. Yeah, we failed Dragon's End, Snub. We failed Dragon's End. Wait, what's going on? Oh, they YouTube changed chat? the data. Yeah. Dude, I'm I'm going insane. The, 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 I agreed to the 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 date for the interview, and now they just changed it. Mm. Tipo, I'm on and then they also like, changed the assignment. Oh. I watched a handful of players stand in the boss room of the EOD Aether meta and full leech the boss fight. Nice people kept resing them too, just happened on NA. Okay, right, Snab, be real with me here. Do you believe the leeching problem is more severe on the NA server? Yes. <laughs> I'm new to the game, but I bought the Lady Boost. Is there any tips you can give me as I'm struggling with all the different items and stuff? Honestly, this is the best advice I can give you. Um, sell everything. Yeah, basically sell all of your shit on the trading post. Don't sell it to a vendor. Sell it to the tra other players on the trading post. That's big money. Um, and also, uh, look up some builds. Go on the internet and find some good builds for your class. And find one that seems cool and then play that. Don't worry about if people say it's like an OP build or less overpowered build. It doesn't fucking matter. Pick one that you think sounds cool. Boom. Easy. Hell yeah. And yeah, the gear you've got on right now as a boost is perfectly good for ages. It's, uh, they kind of set you up to succeed with that. But yeah. No, seriously, I, I think I've got to go to NA. I do. Because I really haven't seen anything substantial on the EU servers. Seriously, man. I, I see nothing here. Like, well, I see, you know, maybe five people was like the worst leeching I've seen in a convergence. Like five people AFK. You know? But the thing is... Okay, hang on. Uh, give me the details here. So, on NA, what percentage of maps do you think have leeches on? So, like, you know, if you, if you go into 100 maps, sample size, how many maps of that 100 will have at least... at least three people fully AFK? Uh, uh, it's impossible to tell. There's too many variables here. The, the issue is that there's certain times of the day where if you leech, it's less impactful on the people around you because there's just more people engaging, particularly right after reset. 
Um, so there's a chance that maybe some people will kind of blend in there. There's also a chance that people are, they're like semi-leeching, right? They're just not trying very hard because there's people all around them. So I don't know if you can consider that full leeching or not. It's just like, I don't know. You just, they're just not really trying very hard. That's all. It, does, it doesn't have any impact on anything. You're still going to complete it. Um, but I think that the people that are multi-boxing, you're going to see it either right after reset or you're going to see it at some kind of like semi-obscure time where there will still be enough people to complete the event. But they're not going to bother too many people. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's impossible to know this, Teapot, because mm. there's just too many things at play. The Wizard's Vault adds another level of complexity with AFK farming and stuff now, too, because people are going to go AFK these obscure events or areas where there are certain kinds of creatures on like a million accounts so that they can get the Wizard Vault weekly and get big loot. Hmm. Very yeah. interesting. Very, very interesting. How frequently do you... S I mean, just... The thing is, though, I've seen a lot of events over the last three years. I've been doing my full leech investigation. I have never seen a major leech cluster. So, like, five people on one account. How common is that on NA? Say that again. How they, common they, they do well how common is it to see like the big multi box leeches? We're talking like five accounts, hard leeches. Oh boy. What are we what are we doing him? Like, On NA versus EU, I actually I well, I don't know. I, I, this is just my perspective, but I actually see them pretty equally on NA and EU. Where do you see them? Where do you see them? Cuz I've I've been searching this. I haven't seen it. Like what event is really Well, popular? I told you. It's at reset. Uh to quadle reset on EU. I always see mm. this one guy with like 10 accounts. Mm. Cuz I've gone to Dequadle, not on reset though, I guess. But I've done loads yeah, it's of a reset. I've gone yeah. I've done loads of tequadles and I just don't see this like infestation of leeches. Well, it's it's not that there's that many people. I don't I really don't think it's like a super massive problem like people are making it out to Sneb, be. Sneb, I think that it hurt. what? Please what? say on stream that there is an infestation of leeches in, in yours too. Guild Wars 2 is a dirty river full of leeches. No. Yeah. Oh, when dude, you wade I, through I the river, don't think it's that bad. when you wade through the river, you're just covered in leeches. Just, you know, they're all over you. They're stuck to you. Yeah. Do you choose to walk through the river to the other side? Or do you just <laughs> not go into the river? <laughs> <laughs> Yo! <laughs> No, that's Let's perfectly go. legit. There's no issue there. <laughs> no issue there. Yo, do you think we could get somebody to go check this out? Hold on. I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna send a DM. Take a look at this, dude. This is a fucking crazy setup here. How are they even tagging anything? It's like dying instantly. <laughs> this is absolutely massive, guys. AFK farming. These players deal far more DPS than the average Guild Wars 2 player. Far more DPS. What do you even get from this? Do you even get any good loot? I feel like this is so garbage, man. It's like worthless. Like, there's no way you're making your electricity. Do you even make your electricity cost back doing this? I feel like the gold prior is fucking dog shit. That's why you just leech your neighbor's electricity. You mm. run like a giant extension cable to your 20 laptops that are all exclusively running one instance of uh, Guild Wars 2. <laughs> Dude, like all the you make your, NPCs. make your like 69 cents back. <laughs> nice. They keep running in. Oh, he's dead. That's content. You know, I I approve this message. Yeah, these minions, minion monsters. How many are there? I mean, I it's not, it's quite a lot. It's like uh, 
Look, it's fucking quite large, isn't it? Look at all of those. They're like impossible. You to know what's so anything. interesting about this? People do this on their mains. That's what's interesting to oh, me. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They I know do people on that have their... been banned from uh, yeah. specific communities for doing this. They do this on their main. Oh yeah, I mean, all the say, guys. Like, um, that we have actually banned. I mean, a you're doing it right now. Yeah, I mean, well, I'm not attacking. I'm not. I'm not getting any credit. You, dude. Well, I, you know, Holy press shit. one if you think that Mighty Teapot is now complicit in the AFK farming because he is playing Necro and he's standing directly in the center. Do you know? I what, think he's caught. Do you know what the Giga Chad move is? Check this out. Um, you come here on Herald and you pulse boons on the Necros and you get credit from them. No. Is, oh yeah. Yep. Isn't that actually yes. the, the Giga Chad move? Is anyone doing that? I bet they're all... Oh, there is a Herald, actually. Yeah, there is one. Look, there's a Herald. He's doing it. Oh, yeah. And you... look, he's doing the thing. He's got, like, the Perma Pulse on. Yeah, yeah, he's doing it. Yeah, he's got the Corruption uh, trait on. So he doesn't have to... Um, he has infinite upkeep, right? And all he gives himself is, like, a little bit of Torment that gets healed up by having the trait in, um, uh, in, in Corruption anyway. So he takes no damage. And he's just pulsing Quickness out to all of these minions... And that means that he actually just gets full participation on everything. I like it. That's huge. Looks like they're having a really good gameplay experience. Yeah. Yes. They are God. This is the average Guild Wars 2 player. This is an above average Guild Wars 2 player in terms of skill. Yeah, but he's like leeching the leeches. This is actually uh, Giga Chad. Yeah, look at this. People are just doing this blatantly on their mains. That's honestly so interesting to me. How much, um, how much AP this guy has? Oh, I can't add him as a friend. Fuck. Wait, join party? Okay, I'm, 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 I'm requesting to join. Wait, what? Wait. Oh, that's interesting. Is this guy actually here, or is that a macro? Hello. I wonder if that's a macro. Because there's a couple of options here. Um, a lot of AFK farmers just have it on the second monitor, right? So they're like not actually AFK. They're just not paying attention to the game. And they're like, what they're doing is they're multi-boxing, right? And they've got, you know, they've got like 10 accounts going and they've got them on the second monitor. This is what you do, guys. You, well, I'm not sure I should say this, but you use Guild Wars 2 Launcher. You launch 10 accounts, have them, um, what would you call it? Mosaic on your screen. Second monitor, minimum graphics, low resolution, boom, love it. Um, have that going, um, and then you do work on your main monitor, right? Like you, you're watching Netflix, you, you're doing work, you're doing school, whatever, right? Um, and you're not actually AFK. Uh, like all you have to do is basically uh, be able to respond to a GM pretty much. But yeah, that's how it is. Try to leave and regen. I think I'm not sure if this guy is here though. Um, I don't think this guy is here. I think that might be a macro what? they've got set up. Ooh. I, hmm. Interesting. I don't know. Maybe. I'm not sure. How good is the money? It's honestly it's fascinating. It's, research. It, it's kind of bad money. It's like two gold an hour. It's pretty fucking worthless to be honest. Um, it's not great. They look, look, holy shit, look at all the minions, they just surged. Like, one NPC spawned kind of far away, and they just, just went for it. Did you notice that uh, there's there's so many models that some of them aren't appearing? Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, this guy's actually here. He said hello. He tabbed into his 17th account. Ask to interview him. I want to interview him too. Let's go. Yeah. Can you load the champion? The champion would lose. I actually did this last time. There's um, I can show you the clip actually. Um, hang on. Hang on. Carry on. Check this out, guys. I did this on the zero to hero. Oh, sh it's a little short. Check this out. So look at this. There's, it's it's basically the same spot as well. And we actually do go get the champion. Oh, I think there is a champion. Yeah, yeah, here we go. Yeah, here's the champion, J-Boat. Look at it.
Guys, look at the HP. Look at the HP. Watch this. I was openly trying to grief these AFK farmers because it's fucking funny. But then, uh, yeah, the Jade Bow, it's over. The Jade Bow gets completely destroyed by uh, the AFK farmers. Yo, it's interesting in the chat. Yeah. <laughs> look at all the... Look at all the okay, minions. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's funny, actually. Pretty insane. Yeah. Wait, the scale chap? Yeah, they should. They should modify. They should modify that. You know what they should do? Wait, wouldn't this be kind of interesting? Maybe. What if they um, because this would actually be a decent way to solve this. What if they made um that the champions on this map like no, you can't. So. The problem, um, the problem that you're going to run into is that if you make, let's say you make the champion on this map instantly kill minions, right? You hard code it to do that. Like, it, it kills minions instantly. The problem is they'll just go to another map, right? Um, that's the problem. Um, because this, people do this on Lake Doric, right? But I'm not going to lie, this would work anywhere. Right? It's not actually unique. It's not special. You could do it anywhere. It just sounds like the Lake Door is good for this. But you can do it on basically any map, right? Like, what you'd... And, by the way, they do. Um, I think the really popular ones is the unpopular materials. People do a lot of AFK farming for, like, Tier 3 and Tier 4 maps, right? So you see them on, like, the mid-level maps a lot. Just AFK farming like this. Because you get Tier 3s and Tier 4s. Yeah, like Istan as well, right? They can't do it in the Centaur area. I think that's mostly because the Centaurs CC you, right? They push you, so they disrupt them. They wouldn't be able to um, stay in the same spot, right? Because the they, the Centaurs are constantly doing like a charge, right? Oh, may, oh, there is. Is there a spot for it? Is there? A, uh, yeah, I don't know. Wait, ask on where the cannons are. Uh, wait, where where is it? Um, tell me, guys. Like, tell me a waypoint. Which? Be more specific. What do we mean? Iron Marches in the south? Like, uh... Oh, that's Blazer Steps. I'm looking at the wrong one. Oh, yeah. Yep. That's... Uh, which, which one? Um, oh, boy. Oh, this one over here. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Let's go take a look. I'll be right back. I'll be right back. Yeah. Let's get in there. Wait, what's Jester's stream teller, by the way? I am the leech teapot is looking for. The fuck? Don't reveal my location. Leech. There we go. Alright, so what do we got here then? Is it- wait. There's, there's like two guys. Caught. Where's the leeching guys? Where's the AFK farming? Leech. Map. Any leeches here? I mean, there's... Uh, is it just this? Is this the spot, guys? This is the spot? I mean, it's only one guy. There's not even anyone, really. Face 11 tally up to 500. No guy feels like uh, finally getting over a point without paying it. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. Crafting's a bit annoying. Uh, I will... Yeah. Yeah, you're, I mean, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. It is a bit annoying. I don't know if you um, know about this site, but I just you whenever I'm doing that, I just grin and bear it and do Guild Wars 2 crafts.net or whatever it is. I find uh, that's a pretty good way to do it. Pretty good way to do it. Wait, what's wait, what's going on here? Are these people doing guild missions? What is this? Uh video seconds? Yeah, uh, video settings? Yeah, sure, give me one sec. Boop. Boop. Anomaly? Oh, yeah, maybe it's the anomaly. Oh, yeah, it's the anomaly in one minute, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, wait, so, wait, by the shatter, you go, oh, yeah, the shatter of pre is good, because you get the dust, don't you? Yeah, 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 that makes sense, actually, that does make sense. That makes a lot of sense. So 
So, wait, over here? Why textures on medium? You know, I actually have no idea. Why are textures on medium? Wait, why are they on medium? Shouldn't they run high? Oh, no. I don't know. Leech. Any AFK farmers in here? Let's see if we can trigger these. I'm actually wondering if these people are semi AFK or if they're actually using um, bot software or, or like automated like macro software. So I'm, I'm going to be very interested to see if they have some kind of script that like automatically replies to convince um, to convince a GM that joins them or something that they are, uh, you know, a real human or they're actually at their computer. Because Aina actually do like shuffle people. Uh, when they see people doing AFK farming, a GM will like nudge them or give them a poke. Yeah, we need to think of what yeah, what are some good phrases we can we can use? What are some good phrases we can use that might they might have coded in? Because a lot of it will just be hard coded. Cone. I've said cone. Uh, try southeast from Sorrow Sound on Blood Tide Curse. Like I'm going in. <laughs> Good day, fellow Guild Wars new gamers. <laughs> How diddly doodly. <laughs> the likely phrase. That's true. Uh, I'm back. Yeah, Snab. Did you find more? Uh, I'm trying to go on the hunt. Um, make a bot that checks all the leech bots and log everyone out um, every 15 minutes. Easy solve. Well, I mean, the problem is, is that what if there's people who are actually doing that who are actually at their computer? Are you going to ban people from doing that if they're standing at their computer? Should you not be allowed to stand in one place and farm mobs <laughs> while you're playing the game? That's, I mean, it's a good question. Um, to be honest, like, you know, like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Log in the office. I think you should randomly ban people. Log in the office is a minor inconvenience. Unfortunately, it isn't. Um, like, because you're assuming that a human would have to log them back in, but you're wrong. Um, actually, no. Stuff like that doesn't matter to a computer. Um, if you get logged off every 15 minutes, that's nothing if you're running a script. In fact, you can even account for that if you're running a script. It's it's not an inconvenience. Like Stuff like that doesn't really do anything. It doesn't prevent them from doing that. Yeah. Sorrow Sound Waypoint. Where's, where's that? Yeah. Please move that thing from your eyes. Bottom really like crazy. Uh, no. Leave the stream. What are you, what are you even talking about? Is, that the, is there hair in my eye? Maybe there is. But, if it is there, it will remain there until you have left the stream. And I will put it back if you return. Oh. Yeah. Uh, more than 30 minutes. Well, diminishing returns has always been a thing. Uh, they don't want you, like, farming the same shit. Although, honestly, the, the dimension is not really that good, to be honest. Uh, it, you know, you can still farm the same event. You get, like, less XP, right, from and karma from the event. Sorrowful Sound and Bloodthirst Coast underwater. Okay, where is Sorrowful Sound? Sanguine Bay. Ah, uh, here we go. Sorrowful Sound... Southeast, right? We're going in underwater. You have thanks. Apologies. Right, I'm bringing it back. There we are. Wait, maybe this side as well. I oh, don't know. We we got to. There we are. We're good. You should turn it into like a cone that sticks straight up. <laughs> 
mm. your hair. Just make it. That could also vertical. be could be an option. Yes, I am a detective. Honestly, oh man, you know what would feel good? Oh, wait, wasn't I talk? Weren't we talking about this the other day, Sneb? Me going through the list of like everyone I would like purge from the game if I could ban people. Oh. I know I was. <laughs> it, was it was a long list. <laughs> oh, yeah. boy. Uh. <laughs> yeah. No, it wasn't on stream. It was off stream. I, 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 told, I said everything. It was the whole list. Yeah. Guild Wars 2 player tier list. Man, I am so tempted. I really want to do on stream player review for our raid. Um, after we're done, uh, with this raid tier, to be honest, it is fucking content. What's your favorite MMO music track? Um, man, that's a really good question. I think that, um, I think the, uh, Battle on the Breachmaker is exceptionally good. I think Tasker's theme is extremely good. Um, for sure. I actually really like, I really like the... Uh, the kind of heavy distort. I don't know what the name of the track is actually. It's the one that plays in convergences, and it's the one that um, plays in some Soto areas. I think it's actually extremely good, really fucking good. I like it a lot. Um, what else do I like in uh, in Guild Wars? Uh, the Mordremoth theme is really good. That's oh, the Kralkatoric theme is insanely good. The, yeah, the, uh, the, the, what is it? It's the Bloodied Prince, right? Which is Ceres. That's exce an exceptionally good track, actually. It's really good. Uh, and if we move to World of Warcraft, um, I'm not gonna lie, the Amir Drasil soundtrack is absolutely god tier. It's definitely one of the best pieces of music I've heard in any game ever. Uh, specifically the nature theme. Um, uh, the nature theme and Laradar's theme is absolutely uh, brilliant. Almost everything in the in the Emerald Dream is really, really good as well. Um, Echo of Neltharion's theme, which is basically just part of Abarus's theme, is definitely the best track in Abarus. It's really, really, really good um, in that game. And actually, I'm not gonna lie, I've gotta say, um, man, the soundtrack for Dawn of the Infinites is brilliant. It is amazing. I love it. Like, I've told, I think, I, I repeat this, I almost, I almost don't like saying this again, but maybe not everyone's heard this. Like, a huge part of me deciding to actually commit to WoW was playing through Dawn of the Infinites for the first time. Uh, because I, I, I was having, like, this weird, I almost felt like uh, it wasn't real. I was expecting it to, like, get worse. I was like, how is it this good? Why are these fights so interesting? Why is it actually hard? Uh, and they released it day one. Why is it so good? Um, it's insane. Like, the, the soundtrack there is amazing. The boss design is really interesting uh, on, on the Mega Dungeon. It looks really cool. The story is, is cla it's wow, it's Papega in the good way. Um, wait, oh, what's this? Oh, shit. This thing? Okay, I'm going in. What have we got here? We've got this uh, link. Ah, yes. Yeah, th th this is the this is the good song. Yo, Jester in the chat. Wait, why are you broken? What's going on, bro? Rev 
raids are dead. I mean, yeah, it's very immersive. Oh, shit, this guy. Oh! Oh! <laughs> yeah, if you want to, if you want to hear more of that, by the way, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of variants of that, uh, of that song, by the way, uh, Angels, in this. This is the one that I have. I actually extracted all of the files, um, from the game. It's kind of annoying to do, but, yeah. This is like the, um, this is all of, all of that, basically. This is like, Dude. this is the one on, this is the one on Council as well. This plays on uh, Nimue as well. Yes. Wow. Dude, how many people are there? <laughs> what? What's even happening? <laughs> oh, oh, wait, are those all revenants? Yeah, they're all revs, yeah. Oh, oh my gosh, that means any, anything that gets in that vicinity just needs to yeah, it's instantly getting farmed. Wow. What is it even going after? Oh, is that underwater? Yeah, it's underwater. Yeah, it's under underwater. Oh! <laughs> In the depths of the sea lie the greatest fear. The AFK farmers. <laughs> Let's see. And where, yeah, let me start find the Larados theme. Hang on. Oh yeah, this is the this is the Larados theme as well. Oh no, that's Smolderon. Where's Larado? Ah, yeah, this is Larado, yeah. The dragonfly one. The dragonflight theme is is very good, actually. Um, the the music, honestly, the music on Soto really impressed me, and the music on um, Dragonflight really impressed me as well, actually. I I, I think it's been a, a good year for MMO music. I really like the Soto. Um, I I really like the uh, Soto soundtrack actually a lot. It's very good. It's very creative. Um, it's different. And that's, uh, this is something that Guild Sushi does, does pretty consistently, actually. Yeah, they, they've done this with a lot of their expansions, actually. They're, they are very creative. I think Blizzard is as well. Like, when you, when you go to, when you go back to, like, stuff like BFA, you go, wow. It's almost one of the first things that hit you when you teleport to a Mythic Plus dungeon that's in BFA or in an old expansion. You go, holy shit, the music is really good. Um, in these in these expansions, but yeah, the Sotus of it is exceptional as well. Let me see if I can. Someone said the soundtrack I was looking for is Malaise. Let me see if I can find it. Have you heard about the karaoke thing? No. Oh. Oh, it, yeah, it is this. Yeah. It, oh, yeah. Sorry, Seb. Go ahead. I just I, it was the track I was looking for. I think. There's a there's an ad in the LFG right now on NA mm. for raids, and I know all the people that are that are hosting it. It's just very interesting. Leeches. Yeah, 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 that's fucking good. <laughs> I'm TMA. What's going on? I'm reading it. <laughs> wait, wait, what the fuck is this? What what the fuck is this shit, Snab? What why are you linking me this? Look, I, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> oh my god, I'm leaking this! This is horrible! Like, what? <laughs> what? 
<laughs> Wait, what? No, you can't. Like, oh, yeah. It's <laughs> people we know doing it, though. I, I, I can't. Yeah, I'm. I don't. Okay. Yeah, I. I'll just DM you. <laughs> Why would they do this? I don't understand. Okay, I'm just gonna fucking leak this shit. I go fuck. Okay, there is a raid. Is this on NA or EU, Snow? Just to clarify. This is NA. This so is NA. There is a raid guild on NA that is saying that if you sing a song on stream for them, they'll carry you. So you. You. <laughs> you, you <laughs> so you. Yeah, I'll just say it. I'll just say it. I'll just say it. I I I think the intent here is that it's lighthearted. Yeah. But when I think about doing that, I'm like, I have to admit publicly to hundreds of people that I can't find a group for raids and can't do it myself. It's, it's like a, a public. And then I have to admit, and then I have to publicly yeah. humiliate myself yeah. in front of hundreds of people. <laughs> it's not worth it. I'll just pay. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. Holy shit. Uh, that's crazy, actually. That's actually but I, insane. But I think it's just supposed to be lighthearted. I'm trying to give yeah. them the, the benefit there. But I mean, for me personally, it would be utter humiliation, so I wouldn't do it. <laughs> it's just uh, funny. You have to sing a song. Sing a song to get carried. That is fucking funny. Holy shit. Yeah, I, I think it's just lighthearted and, and whatever, yeah. but I... I personally would not do it because it feels really strange because I can't sing and I am awkward. So it would be pure humiliation. Yeah, the bloodied lord. But I think other people just don't care about that. They're I just they're not. just chill with it. The bloodied lord is insane. It's probably my favorite track from the Soto soundtrack. Very fucking high tier. We got That's credit good. for you know, leeching over there yet? No, I haven't, but you can come on a Herald and steal their participation though, right? So there is that. It's very high tier, actually. Yeah, the music in, it's very good, actually. I also like the, um, for the more chill stuff, this song is very good. It's, uh, These Ancient Halls in Guild Wars 2. The Blood has a lot of lost potential. Um, if it were, you know, I, I actually... I don't know what you mean by that, but if you're thinking that they should have gone harder on it, I actually would agree with that. I would really have liked it if they'd actually lent into... Oh man, I'm going to embarrass myself with musical genres, but if they'd lent more into it, made it heavier, almost made it like a little bit metal, right? Um, for the Soto soundtrack. Like, ma yeah, make it actually like a little bit even edgier than it already is. They already did that a little bit. They've got the store. You've got some very heavy percussion stuff in there. You've got some guitar going on at the same time. It has a little bit of an edge to it. I think they should have gone further um, because I really like the theme of it, actually. It was very good. I was an enjoyer. I am an enjoyer of it. Well, I'm not saying they should go Doom. Doom is definitely a little bit too much. Honestly, I would like it. That's fire, actually. That's hype if they did go full Doom, but that's probably a little bit too much for the for, for what people were expecting. Um, but yeah, no, I would be really good if they really lent into it uh, and went fucking hard, right, on some of this stuff. Because Guild Wars 2 do do some pretty interesting tracks, like, especially with their boss fights, they, there's definitely some music that's a little bit out there, which is great. It's really cool when games do that, I think. Um, but yeah, I want to see a bit more stuff like, um, Final Fantasy, because, like, I've been shown Final Fantasy fights, and it's actually, like, a hard rock track or a metal track. That's really interesting. Also, you know what's weird? This is something that I actually appreciate in WoW a lot. Guild Wars 2 needs music with vocals, okay? Even if it's just kind of, um, uh, choir stuff rather than, like, actual words. It is, it makes it sound fucking epic. I'm not gonna lie. Like, a lot of the, um, a, a, a lot of the music in raids, it just sounds unbelievably grandiose, right? Because of, um, uh, because of the, uh, of adding vocals into a lot of the, um, a lot of that stuff there as well. Final Fantasy is very anti-emergence in, in favor of fan service. Um, what do you mean by that? Yeah. Yeah. 
What do you, what do you mean by that exactly? You mean like the music is like almost like misplaced? I'm not sure if that's necessarily anti-immersion. Um, well, I mean, is it? Is it anti-immersion if a game doesn't have an orchestral theme? I mean, I don't know, maybe. Guild War 2 boss, fire cam playing it, what do we got? Yo! Actually, yes! <laughs> um... Final Fantasy music is a little goofy, but I like a little goofy. Why can't we have a little bit of goofiness in our video games? You know what I'm saying? Why Are we is trying that... to say that Guild Wars 2 isn't goofy? Well, I mean, I guess... It, I think You know what? It actually isn't. It isn't actually, Snub. No. Um, World of Warcraft is a goofy game. Guild Wars 2... And I think this actually... You know what? I think this actually plays to the game's disadvantage. Guild Wars 2 does take itself too seriously. Yes, I think so. I don't know about 14. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, pause here. Yeah. Are you telling me that the max height Norn, bare-chested with fairy wings and a giant mustache and bunny ears, is taking itself too seriously? No, I'm talking about how the game presents itself. Like, not what you can do in it. Obviously, you That's can how it presents itself. No, 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 you're wrong. You're really wrong, actually. No, that's totally- What? I... No, you're absolutely no, wrong. No, 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 Absolutely no, I... not. Like, the, the way Guild Wars 2 presents oh, it- The way Guild Wars 2 presents its story and its world is, like, deadly serious. 100% yeah. Yeah, so the, the, you're doing the, you're doing the story and they're like, oh yeah, that dragon over there is super yeah. scary. And then you like one shot it while wearing fairy wings and like no clothes and bunny you, ears and a giant you're not, mustache. You're not listening you, to you're me. Like, yeah, you're like, yeah, take yourself too seriously. You're, you're, not, you're not listening. <laughs> that's not the game. That's the player. Right? Like, I'm talking about the game. This is part of the game though. Like the, the attire that you can wear and stuff. No. I think I'm, that's part of the tone. I, I'm, I'm talking about what actually is the game that can't be changed by the player. Like the, the so the actual the actual expression. Well, yeah, the the, the okay. Well, but the, those are choices that the player can choose from. No. Yeah, but that, I'm not. The, the game not... put them in there. Come on. No, no, no. no. I, when I when I say the game takes itself too seriously, I'm talking about um, the characters, the world, and the story. I'm not talking about the players. Players are irrelevant in this situation. Okay, so if we're just strictly talking story, then maybe I can yeah. somewhat agree. Yeah, I'm, I'm, and I think, yeah, I think as a result of that, yeah, I think the game takes itself too seriously. Um, sometimes, yeah. I think they, do, you know, for example, um, uh, they don't like uh, pop culture references in their game. Like, that's what I mean by they take themselves too seriously. Because they, you know, because you know what? They did this in Guild Wars 1, right? In Guild Wars 1, there was loads of references, right? Constantly to stuff, like to memes, right? In Guild Wars 2, not so much. Um, nowhere near as much, actually. Uh, there are some references to, like, uh, games, like skills are named after stuff from other games, right, and stuff like that. But, um, I think, uh, the, the, uh, like, games like WoW, especially WoW, holy shit, that game is a giant meme. Like, everything is, like, uh, it's almost like a cartoon. It's, like, incredibly over the top. It's a it, hyper meme. You're not supposed to take that game seriously at all. I think Guild Wars 2 actually does play it very, very straight, um, which is interesting because i feel like the game has a lot of potential to lean into some mean potential yeah yes rev manners thanks to the prime and yet yeah, joker was a character that's not serious that is true yeah um and that's and you know what that's why i really enjoyed joker because joker was a meme you've got like the choya concubine yeah that's fun that's really interesting that's cool um but a lot of the time it's like Oh my god, the world is ending. I'm timey. I'm dying of a terminal disease. Uh, you know, uh, I'm Braham. I'm annihilated over the angst of being a teenager. I don't fucking know. Like, you know, that, that's, that's the entire game, right? Yeah. Uh, like that, it's, it's like very serious a lot of the time. It is, it's, you know, it's, it's dark, but in like the, it's moody, right? Like the story is very moody, I feel like. Whereas, um... It, I don't know. I, I, maybe it's because I just haven't played WoW as much, but when I look at the WoW story, I just go, wow, this is a giant meme. Um, you know, you've got, you've got this giant dragon with cartoonishly tiny little T-Rex arms, like, screaming about how I'm going to destroy your giant tree. I don't know. Um, this, you know, this is amusing to me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. Shadowlands is edgier. Yeah, well, well I, yeah. I, I think that isn't that. I feel like that's kind of why the Shadowlands three sucked, though, right? Because it's like, oh, Sylvanas is she? Look, she turned on the jailer because oh, she was manipulated by the jailer, just like she was manipulated by Arthas. Dude, nobody fucking cares, right? Um, do you know what? Do you know what's based in uh, Shadowlands? Okay, uh, I'll tell you. Okay, it's um, it's fucking this shit, right? This is like the only good story in uh, in Shadowlands, guys. Okay, it's it's Garrosh saying that he did nothing wrong. Okay, that's the good story. Okay, like. Yeah. So for some context, it, it, the, the cutscene. Look at this fucking animation, by the way, guys. What the fuck is this? Like what? <laughs> So basically, this guy, for some context, guys, is just unquestionably evil, like murdered uncountable numbers of people. And basically, he gets sent to like wow hell where he's being tortured for being a bad man. Um, and then you beat this boss, and Garrosh basically says, I did nothing wrong. I do it again. I regret nothing. And then after all of that, guys, he just explodes, right? Like, he just blows up and turns into a pile of sand. That is the WoW story, guys. Okay? Like, th that is actually the World of Warcraft story in a nutshell. That's how it works. Okay? Like, <laughs> he's Orc Hitler. He basically is Orc Hitler. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I'm addicted to World vs. World now. Yeah, I mean, Wolves was pretty good. That's understandable. Denathrius? I actually don't know the Denathrius story, but yeah, I heard he was quite entertaining. A kind of a, almost like a Joko-like character, actually. A similar type of character there. Farak's baby arms are the real threat. That is true, actually. Is the story better or the dragon uh, that went to sleep? Th to be honest, the Guild Wars, they actually did improve it a lot. I will give Aina uh, credit where it's due. I actually think they handled it really well in EOD uh, with Suwon. I actually think that was well done. Um, they started trying to fix it. It's funny, actually. Jessica Price tried to fix it. To her credit, I think she did a good job. Um, when they brought in the fact that, oh shit, if we fight Kraukatorik, Aurene is going to die. Like, And you see this kind of like Edge of Tomorrow meme where Aurene is dying again and again. That was actually really good. Um, they tried to personify... They didn't have enough time to develop it, really. I'm not going to lie. Because they, it was in a rush. They realized that the dragon story sucks and they tried to fix it. Um... And they did a really good... They tried to do it with Kralgatorik by humanizing this character a little bit. I actually think the Icebrood Saga story, unironically, was some of the best writing they've done with the Guild Wars 2 Dragon Saga. Very notably, the writing on Jormag, I think, was exceptionally good, actually. It was really well done. Um, it's a real shame we didn't get to see the rest of that. It would have been good. Um, that was actually nice. No, the core story sucked. The HOT story honestly kind of sucks as well. Path of Fire, I, 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 people say they liked it. I thought it was pretty mediocre, um, to be honest. It wasn't my favorite. Um, Living World Season 1 and 2, whatever. Like Scarlet, blah, blah, blah. Living World Season 3 was actually pretty good, I think. There was some good intrigue there. Season 4 had Joko, so it was based. Uh, Icebrood Saga, Jormag was actually a very well-written character. Um, to be honest with you. Uh, and then EOD comes out, and yeah, I actually think they did a good job of it. Um, uh, they did, actually. They did. Yes. Yeah, oh, yeah, that was such a bad twist. Lazarus becoming Balthazar, I don't know about that. That, that was, that was a bit sus, to be honest. That was questionable, yeah. Rylan was a fucking joke, shitty version of Bram. Um What do I think about that? Um <sighs> Rylan was maybe a little underdeveloped. Um uh, pff, what would I say? It was probably a little rushed. I think that you you didn't see enough of the conflict 
Ryland had a lot of internal conflict about Bangar and the path he was taking. I think there wasn't enough time for them to properly flesh that out and actually display that decision making that the character ended up making, um, to be honest. I also think that um, one thing that is really hard to do right, and I think this was very absent in Ryland in particular, is there's not enough doubt. The moment that he was like, ah, yes, Jormag, there's no certainty anymore. This is something that I actually really appreciated with uh, Ceres. It's very good, actually. Um, Ceres basically said... Uh, Ceres is, like, very insecure. I think that's actually a very interesting characteristic to have in the villain. Like, when you're fighting him... He, he doesn't sound very certain of himself. There's almost like fear. Like he, he's anxious when he's fighting you. Because he's got that inferiority complex that he had. Um, from being like the shitty version of Deimos, right? Uh, that's actually really interesting. There's, there's, it actually sucks that Ceres um, didn't, uh, didn't have um, uh, enough memes going on there. Right? Like Ceres didn't have enough... Uh, time to get developed. You, you basically kill him instantly, right? Uh, like, you don't see enough of that backstory. That would have been really interesting to explore, actually. That, uh, I think Ceres is a good character, but again, they, they, they can't get that much into a single expansion. Um, someone leaked Lazarus being Baltar W's coin. He's never commented on it because it sounded like bad fanfic. I mean, it could have been a good guess, I'm not gonna lie. Um, but also could have been a leak, yeah. It's true. The line from uh, Creature at the end of um, Dragon Soul was good. Yeah, it's very funny. And that's what I. That's why I think the Char are probably the only actually interesting uh, race in Guild Wars 2. Because um, the Norn, they're big, fat, drunk humans. Azura are annoying humans. Silvari are, um, you know, uh, hippies, I guess. Right? Fucking New Age humans. Right? Crystal humans. They wave crystals at you and stuff. But Char, they're actually brutal. They're like, yeah... I abandoned my children at birth. Yeah, I should have, I should have fucking, I shouldn't have even, <laughs> dude, I, I, am I going to get TOS for this? It's like, no, I should have killed you at birth, right? Boom. That's based, okay? Uh, like that, that's actually interesting. Like, when you, when you have your, um, when you have your fantasy race, basically just be humans that look different, that is boring. Uh, it is way more interesting when you have your playable race or your in-game faction be kind of inhuman. It is really good. It's like the elves um, in Divinity. That is so cool, right? Like the way that that's set up there, like in, in Divinity. Where like the, you know, the elves in that game, guys, they are cannibals. They consume flesh, Sneb. Do you think you'd seen that coming? Elves eating flesh? Flesh well, eating elves. Yeah, there you go. That happens. It is Watch cool. Out, those flesh-eating elves will get you. Yeah, and they can they do it to like get your memories. It's, it's actually a game mechanic as well. So there you go. Yes. Wow. Yeah, dude, I love World versus World. I'm way into it now. Yeah, you're into it. I, I well, look, I admit I'm very lucky, uh, because I was just like I want to play World versus World, and so. Then suddenly all the world versus world people came into my stream and they're like, I hear you want to play world versus world. I was like, yeah. And then people started sending me like novels of DMs just giving me resources and mm. Grimjack somehow snuck me into like a really good fighting guild and they were just, yeah, it was Destroying. really fun. We were doing massive fights. And I learned a lot too. Like, I, you're going to laugh at this because... There, there's like 20 people in our squad. We're facing like 60 people. There's just red, there's red circles it's all everywhere, over the place. right? It's going crazy. And and I'm like, how come our health isn't going down? Like I couldn't figure it out. It's like I don't understand how we're alive because we're just getting obliterated by stuff. Mm. Then he explained how, you know, you can only hit so many people at once, and when you're all standing together, you kind of mitigate that through the healing. And it was just a really interesting time. Now I'm way into it. Which races were dwarves or norn? Well, the thing is, um, Guild Wars 1 did this amazingly well. It, it only becomes problematic when you have playable races. Like, in Guild Wars 1, the norn were weird. It was cool, actually. Like, 
you know, you spend a large part of Eye of the North basically trying to convince these people that they should unite. And they they, they basically say, yeah, we're Nord. We don't do that, bro. We'll just, we'll just like solo this. No problem. Like that, that's like the entire thing. And the Azura are very alien. Like they're very weird, right? In Guild Wars 1. That's great. It's very interesting. Oh yeah. And they'd all like, turn to bears and stuff like that. There was a lot of good texture to the uh, the cultures of these uh, of, of these different races in Guild Wars 1. A lot of that was lost in, in Guild Wars 2 because they wanted to make the races playable, right? Uh, so they, they had to make them, like, basically just, you know, humans, pretty much. Yes. Does Jormag Dragon is the same frozen dragon in the life cycle of Drakkar in Guild Wars 1, right? Um, pretty much, yeah. It's Drakkar, yeah, not Jormag. Jormag is just up, up in the, 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 you know, even further. Poop. Nike has just said poop. Dude. Okay. I, I love, love the world versus world culture. Holy. Mm. <laughs> People just say like unhinged stuff in the team chat. It's very, and yeah, then everybody uh, just, yeah. Everybody just hits enter, space bar, enter. And there's just all these people's names just kind of like crickets. What? Mm. I love that. This is just funny all the time. What are your thoughts on the fact, uh, Snab, that Nike has once donated to the stream and it was uh it just said cheese multiple times and then somewhere in there at random he hides the phrase gay sex <laughs> i do remember that i was there yeah. for that that was yeah. that was funny sierra <laughs> what, what are your thoughts on that like what's uh what it was just think? random <laughs> yeah uh i i do remember the chat though the chat yeah. lost it yeah Chat was entertained. Yeah. Gachi. Are you familiar with squirreling? Wait, no, what is, what is that? What is squirreling? <laughs> squirreling is where you run off from the world versus world group and you're like doing your own thing. You know, mm. You're a squirrel. Distracted okay. by the shiny, you go and obviously you get obliterated because you're just this lone mm. squirrel in a world full of hunters. What would you rather have in your house? 1k rats or 1k squirrels? Squirrels. Squirrels are actually like interesting pets, apparently. Mm. And there was that guy that made the YouTube video where he put the squirrels through an obstacle course. I find that interesting. Mm. And they're probably pretty good at that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, all the. Dude, it feels bad, man. All the red squirrels got like bullied by the gray squirrels in the UK. It's rough. You hate to see it. That's that's fucking nature, guys. Nature is brutal, you know. It's uh, it's not a good time. Not a good time to be a red squirrel. Yes. Squirrels, your assistance is required. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, Snab, when are you sniffing the syrup? I don't know. When, uh, I guess when I figure out my life a little bit. Because mm. now, there, now there's three interviews at the same time. I'm going to have some options. Here. Actually, let me, let me pose this to you, because this is a very interesting... Okay. I just got stuck in the wall. Uh, anyway. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> rip. Oh, I got escaped. Um, so let me pose this to you. What what would you choose? Would you choose to go to a school that's further away, that has a better reputation, culture, cohort, etc.? It's ranked higher, programs better, better potential future career outcomes as a result. Okay. Or would you choose to go to the school where it is objectively a worse program, but it's still a program? but it's much closer to your home. You are much closer to family and essentially it's more convenient. Okay. Which would you choose? <sighs> to be honest, I would go for the less convenient, but that's, that is, the thing is, that is very much based on where I'm at in my life. I think that's a really difficult... I'm not gonna lie. Look, I'll just hit you with a snub. 
I think that's a way harder question for you than it is for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as much as I hate. Yeah, to there's say a it. lot at play here. Yeah. It's it's not very clear cut. For right? for me, fuck it. I'll I'll go all in. Let's just go D Gen. Hell yeah. Um, but the thing is, you've got more variables to contend with. Yes. In that situation. Yeah, context people, I do have two kiddos and a wife yeah. and a dog and a house and all of Yo, these things. So Plenix thanks to the right and, big man. Ooh, Plenix. Yeah. yeah, when I'm talking about far away, I'm talking about two hours versus six hours. Yeah, so it's so, like this is a lot, right? It's it's significant. Yeah. I guess it's not like across the country or anything. So hmm. I originally I was gonna pick convenience, but I'll Nobody's joining it. my uh, dragon's uh, end. Join my dragon's end, chat. Get Earth in here. Guys, world jo world oh, main. I'm on raid mode, dude. Awkward. Oh my god. Join my dragon's end, chat. Leeches only. It's going to be only leeches. Yeah, dragons. context people. Oh, yeah, PhD program. PhD program. Not uh, not undergrad, nothing like that. Yeah. PhD program. And I am from Western Canada, Alberta. Yeah. Boom. Hey, good night, play. See you later, man. Yeah. Yes. Actually, that's see, a good... See, it's... It's close. It's, it's very divisive. divided. It is going to be divided, very, yeah. yeah. I, I think that's the thing. I think that it is going to be very much dependent on each individual's kind of uh, preferences, their life situation, and so on. I think it's uh, non-trivial. And yeah, there is... Yeah, yeah, I, Mur I'm Murakai having a hard time Grothmar. with it. Yeah, Murakai is in Grothmar, by the way. Yeah. It does depend. Six hours would be across the country in the UK, and then some... Yeah, I mean, six hours is, uh, well, is crazy for... Well, if you if you live in a tiny ah, we've got some good. fellow Albertans. Well, let's just say there are only a few universities in Alberta, so you can probably figure it out. <laughs> we'll just say that I'm looking at the biggest universities in Alberta, and that should give you a good idea. Ah, oh, that's a good opinion. It's time. I'm doing a PhD in consumer behavior. I'm most curious about researching influencers and advertising campaigns that have to do with products that are maybe morally ambiguous, such as gambling. And you know what's going to happen? And honestly, I, I hate to say this. Sneb is going to end up being a marketing consultant on some fucking mobile gaming garbage. And all he's going to do, all he's going to do... And I hate, I, this, this feels bad. He's going to be selling us fucking loot boxes, man. On your iPhone 17. It's rough. Yeah, you know, my goal would be to get loot boxes banned in Canada, but that's a pretty lofty goal. <laughs> and I would like to ban um, influencers, celebrities advertising these like gambling mechanisms uh, in public channels. So, for example, it's illegal to, to have, like, a professional hockey player advertising alcohol. Uh, and that's because they are impressionable. Or, they, they rather, they impress upon children these ideals. And we don't want underage drinking and stuff, I guess. Even though it still happens. Anyway, that's another story. The point is that these same hockey players are allowed to go and get millions to to endorse these gambling platforms for sports betting, which absolutely destroys lives. It's fun and all, but uh, at the same time, people do get a little carried away. Ooh, woo ya. Wait, why do we have woo ya and oh yeah, woo ya, baby? It's a good question. We're not unbanning the trees, guys. The trees serve their purposes. They cleansed my community. And for that, I am grateful. But it is time for the trees to fade back into the forest. Yeah, it's true. I don't think you'll ever be able to beat the gambling fiends because they have a lot of power and wealth. 
I mean, look, we've normalized gambling so hard that in Alberta, um, there's like a, there's, I, I don't know what it's called. It's like a grant. It's not really a grant. You basically can apply to volunteer at a casino and get all the proceeds of the night. So think about this. These not-for-profits and charities who help vulnerable people go to a casino and take advantage of vulnerable people so that they can afford to help vulnerable people. Isn't that just a little bit backwards when you think about it in that way? <laughs> hmm. Isn't that just like a little bit off? But here's the thing, everybody does it. Figure skating clubs, little hockey, Timbits kids do it. Um, Not-for-profits that teach literacy and education. Is, isn't that just a little bit interesting that we are so, that we, ju that we just don't think about it that way? Everybody's like, oh yeah, the best way to raise money is to do the casino thing. You just have to have people volunteer to watch, you yeah. know, to, to serve people who are heavily addicted and spending all of their money and are in a vulnerable situation. Yeah, yeah it's scuffed. I think there's similar stuff on Twitch, right? Like on Twitch, I get, uh, I get gambling ads all the time, actually. I don't know about other people. But yep. I get gambling as constantly, which, if you think about it, is hilarious. Um, it, it's really funny to me, right? Like, people complain about people doing, like, you know, fucking unhinged shit on Twitch that's inappropriate for kids. There's fucking gambling ads on Twitch, bro. Are you kidding me? Like, that's, like, way worse uh, than this. You know, I I've, I've held this stance, guys, the entire time, you know? People were always like, oh, yeah, I'm so big mad at, like, the booba streamers or whatever. Dude, I they were... Suspiciously silent on the fucking Gamba streamers. Gamba was so much worse. Holy shit. When you had people like XUC and Train gambling millions a day? Oh my god! Right, bear in mind, especially with XQC, That's who's scary. got a pr pretty, pretty young audience, right? Let's be honest. Um, that is unhinged. Right, that's the case. Uh, and now they do it on kick, which I guess is just as yeah. fucking bad. Uh, but at least it's been cleansed from, um, you know, Twitch, I suppose, at this point. Yeah, I had to send in a video to the researchers explaining what I wanted to research and why I thought it was important and stuff. And I just talked about how, how inoculated we are against this and how we don't realize just how bad this is. Like, it, okay, imagine, imagine if these streamers were were doing and this i think this actually does happen in some really fringe cases but imagine if people were doing alcohol endorsements and they were just like getting wasted all the time <laughs> Jesus. and like and Damn. and it was just really bad right and they were doing like embarrassing things and like pissing on themselves <laughs> they were just like terrible in like a terrible situation well, it's different because we're only, we can see some sort of physical ramifications if somebody is doing that with alcohol, but with gambling, it seems maybe slightly more innocuous because we don't necessarily see any sort of physical ramifications, at least not to start. But it's the psychological, and yeah, it's the psychological part that's really scary because you're, you are really damaging the mind. Um, like, uh, they say that people who get addicted to gambling, they can't sleep at night because all they think about is, like, the next high for trying to win, right? Or they're in, like, turmoil because of the losses. I think that's a very scary thing. And we have, we have made this so common in our society that we've exposed children to it through buying little mystery boxes at and obviously there are layers and levels of gambling right but we look at something like opening a pack of pokemon cards can you really confidently say that's not gambling what about buying a mystery box that has like some action figure in it what about buying sports cards then there's sports betting and then there's betting on there's loot boxes and video games. This is where things just get really intriguing to me. How do you justify all of this? Yeah. Like, how do you how do you say that that's okay, but the gambling ads are not? Or it's, sorry, that the gambling ads are okay, but the alcohol ads are not. It's really difficult, I think, because you end up in this ethical situation with like, how much do you have to restrict this kind of thing for people? For uh, realistically, a minority of people who can't engage with it healthily, 
Um, I think alcohol is a really good example, of course, because most people can engage with alcohol in a pretty healthy way. And you just run into problems with those who don't, right? Um, for whatever reason. That's when things really go wrong. I think that's, uh, it's even the same with gambling. I'll even bite the bullet and say that's true there as well. Like, realistically, like, a lot of people can engage with gambling pretty healthy way. Um, but when it goes wrong, holy fuck, does it really go wrong. Jesus Christ. So I think the way you, you have to handle this stuff is just as much education as possible. Like, you need to make sure that ads like, you know, if you have any, if you're advertising a product that can potentially be, you know, potentially not work out super well for you, uh, you've got to be really transparent about risks and all that kind of stuff. And you just need to educate people about how to navigate these situations as best as you possibly can. I think that um, the way to tackle a lot of these issues is is kind of with the consumer, um, to be honest, like teaching people how to navigate uh, situations that potentially are maybe not that good. It's like, um, it, it's the way I see it is kind of like, um, the, the way you would combat scams is not just by, um, you know, making scams illegal and trying to lock up people who scam people. Like, you know, fuck the people who do like, you know, the, you know, like the email scams, all that kind of stuff. You want to make sure that people are equipped to deal with that situation. Like, uh, I, I can actually say an example that's actually kind of a little bit, close to my heart on, on this one, is that um, this was really fucked up. Uh, this is when my grandfather was very ill. He was basically at the end of his life. One of one thing that happened in, in, the, in basically the last year and a half of his life is he got a, he got a scam email, right? And the thing is, he didn't... It, it was people trying to trying to say that his computer had 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 a virus on it and stuff like that. And it was like compromised by fucking hackers and all this kind of bullshit. The problem is he just didn't understand that it was bullshit, right? Um, and he, he basically wanted to destroy the computer, even though when me and my mom told me, yeah, it's a scam. Like, these people are fucking idiots. Like, don't listen to them. Um, he just didn't understand why anyone would lie to him like that, basically. Um, which which is kind of sweet, but also kind of depressing at the same time as well, to be honest. I think that's the type of thing that you need to do. Like, people need to be educated like how to process situations like this and given the tools they need to survive in environments where stuff could potentially fuck them up. It's a little bit different when you're diff when you're dealing with like actual um, addictions because obviously that's that's like very extreme, right? Like if you if you some people are just going to be very susceptible to being addicted to certain substances and definitely gambling, right? Like some people's brains, oh boy, they love it when you hit that gamba button, right? Um, and I guess you you know like for for example I think I'm one of those people Seb this is a thing I love gambling uh, it's one of the reasons why I don't do it <laughs> um, because I do love it it is fun yeah um, same I really enjoy it uh, but I guess I feel like I have been privileged enough in my life that I kind of have the skills to know. I shouldn't do this. It would be a really bad idea for me to do this because I like it. I like it too much. And I'm, I'm going to burn all my money, right? If I end up doing this, right? Um, and yeah, I really wouldn't want to go too much into this. I'd have to be really careful. If I was going to go to a casino or something like that, I'd have to, you know, really think about it and prepare. I'm going to take exactly this much in. And when it's gone, I'm out Right, and, and have some discipline because I'd want to keep going. I know I'd want to keep going, right, um, with this stuff. Uh, and that's why I don't gamble. That's why I don't buy loot boxes because I do like them. That's the thing. And I'll admit this. This is why um, I am so... Uh, why I'm so aggressive when I talk about microtransactions and loot boxes. Yeah, I'm the mug in, in this. I'm that guy. I'm the guy these companies are trying to exploit. So I'm obviously, you know... I'm not exactly happy about that. Yeah, absolutely. I'm the fucking whale, guys, in this situation. Um, and it bothers me a lot. And yeah, I am fortunate enough that I've been in an environment where I've developed the skills that mostly keep me out of trouble from these things. But not everyone has that, right? Not everyone's had the the same, you know, type of education and, and upbringing that I've had that have, has mostly given me the tools to, to deal with it a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> You can't say that with kids. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's why, realistically, you probably shouldn't be exposing kids to gambling stuff. Because, yeah, it, you know, you can't... Kids are not going to be equipped to be able to navigate situations like that. It's the same reason why kids... We don't let kids drink. Because it's just not... not It's just not a fucking good idea, is it? Right? Like, yeah. 
Anyway, that's that's what I want to research, and I think people are quite intrigued by it. I think they're like, wow, this is a... Well, because whenever I talk about it, I'm basically exactly like I am here. I just, like, pop off, right? I, <laughs> I just... I'm really passionate about this particular subject. Mm. Yes. No reason to gamble. We well, don't gamble to win money, right? You you gamble because randomness is kind of fun, uh, to be honest. Yes. This is why I I refuse to engage in sports gambling, though it is so in my face all the time yeah so you every see it a lot. time yeah that's what i see oh, ads for on twitch it, i see it on ads on twitch constantly for oh, sports it's, it's not sports even betting. just there though it's in mm. the sports like mm. you're you're watching the sports and they're like and brought to you by insert platform here look at the odds of this oh you know we think this player is gonna hit over 20 points this game and i'm just like man i can't even enjoy the game like the spirit of the game is lost there are people so addicted to this, they go to the game and they're staring at their phone. They paid $400 for tickets, they're staring at their phone. They spent, they, they bet a grand that this guy is gonna hit over 20 points and he's at 18 and they're like freaking out. And it just ruins it for me at least. Maybe some people think it adds some value to the game, but man, I don't like it. I, it's just constant. I just wanna, I don't want to hear the storylines about whether or not somebody got points. I want to hear the storylines about the, the rivalries and who's going to win and why. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It, it's just kind of wrecked up for me. Yeah. I don't know if you're a super big sports guy, though. So I, I'm like a huge mm. basketball fan, and it just has killed basketball for me in mm. lots of ways. That feels bad. Yeah, I think that's what it is. It's because people like it, right? Like, it does make it high stakes, and, you know, there's, there's something on the line, right? I think it helps you become personally invested because you literally are personally invested in, in the outcome of the match, right? But, you know, I think Sneb is right, though. I think you can be personally invested just by, you know, being interested in the teams. Like, that's definitely how I interact with, certainly, esports. I'm not definitely, uh, I'm not really into, like, real-life sports in that same way as I am in with esports, but yeah, absolutely. Like, I, I love watching... Uh, you know, players that I enjoy watching in StarCraft, like, face each other, like, you know, is someone going to be able to finally beat Serral, right? Like, you know, how is this going to go? Maru versus Serral TVZ, right? Or, you know, like, Sneb does this with Warcraft 3, right? Because, uh, I mean, this happened very recently, I right? In, in the in the very the very um, match you sent me the other day, right? That was basically, wasn't that the first time someone beat Happy at a live event for, like, two years or something like uh, that? In four um, years, Yeah, 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 yeah. So, okay. like, a very, very long time. That's exciting. Like, you don't really need gambling on that, right? That's inherently exciting. Because there is this guy. You know this Todd? Titan. Do you know who Todd is? Of course, yeah. Yeah, Todd. I I don't know the full story, so I don't I don't want to say too much. But my understanding is that Todd said there was no way that Forty <laughs> beat Happy, and and he he bet. He's like, I will dye my hair blue if, oh, well. if this happens. So now everyone's going yep, to his stream, and they're just like bothering him about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess he's got to do he's it. Then. A couple people. He's got to uh, yeah. yeah. He's, he's, he's going to have to die as I blue that, I guess. Yeah, he's, he's going to have to die. His last, I don't know if he's taking it hard or what, but he seemed kind of mad when somebody asked him about mm. it the other day. But uh, he, his last stream was blue hair waiting room, so I kind of think that maybe he's just in on the joke now and it's all good. I don't know. Yes. Oh, oh, this is a very important thing. Gambling or really any addiction can be very isolating. And especially gambling is now just on your phone. You don't engage with anybody. There's a, there's a difference between sitting on the couch with your with your like best friend and being like, I bet you, I bet you dinner that they're gonna win this game. And there's like, no way, man, it's never gonna happen, right? Like now now it's like a social thing, but uh, I think the way that gambling is done now is very isolating. And as you get more and more consumed by it, it becomes lonelier. Unless you're winning. I, I, I actually, that's maybe that's the big point is when you're winning, everybody's your best friend. When you're losing, we have guest Sneb lecture on gambling. Honestly, that will be big. You know, me and Sneb, we actually talked about this a while ago that we should do um, 
a podcast, but not about Guild Wars 2, just about basically whatever. Maybe we should. Okay, I'm yeah, not sure if Seb's got show. the not sure if Seb's got the time for that, but uh, yeah. Oh, I'd do it. I'd do it in a heartbeat. I would do it right now. Let's go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I seriously would though. I've I've wanted to. Oh, Nike, you've got an interesting one here. Check this out, Nike. We have fat little pay pig in the chat. What? Now that is interesting. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Honestly, you should pay pig this stream. It's time. <laughs> it's time to engage in the pay pig. <laughs> <laughs> That's big. We need a new British personality to run a podcast about the gaming industry. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's true. Pay pig now. Yeah, I mean, you definitely should. I have opinions on every topic. Man, you know, this is such a fucking meme, but I, I, I think Nike on all of the politics podcasts would be so fucking good, actually. Holy shit. Like, that's where Nike's next streaming career. He should break into, like, the online politics space. That would actually be unbelievably based. Okay, oh my god. He'd probably get banned, I feel like. Uh, but it would be good while it lasts. Nike debating destiny. Nike versus Jordan Peterson. Nike versus Ben Shapiro. That's what I'm fucking talking about. Okay, Dude, like, destiny yeah. and Ben Shapiro. That was a good debate. <laughs> I, I really enjoyed that. <laughs> yeah. I like forget forget about whatever they talked about. It doesn't even really matter. What does matter is the way that they engaged with each other. I really respected that, and I learned something new from both sides, and I, I think that's what debate is for. Yeah. Good. That, you know, it, it is good to facilitate actual conversation for sure, yeah. Uh, a, a lot of, especially a lot of online discourse is people like screaming at each other. Gets a little bit unhinged. Um, so yeah, it was, it's definitely good to have like some, uh, like some, you know, some like, actual civil conversation. Uh, where people actually try and listen to each other and engage with the topic. It's really good, yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Shapiro would never have agreed to a Thunderdome debate. Would have been funny though. I mean, it would have been extremely fucking funny if they just were screaming at each other. But it would have been not very... It, it would have been shit, let's be honest. Presidential note from eight years ago, and it's why it's all yelling now. I, mean, I think it is a little bit funny when politicians do kind of go hard on each other that way. It is a little bit funny, but yeah, maybe not uh, super productive. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's like that. I think the UK is quite famous for this, right? Like how rowdy Parliament gets. That's uh, almost like a British tradition, which I'm not going to lie. It is very funny um, when the politicians start like roasting each other a little bit. But yeah, if it like devolves into like complete screaming, then yeah, it's pretty lame, to be honest. Not very, uh, not very interesting to engage with or watch. Alex Jones was unhinged. Yeah, Alex Jones. Alex Jones was also. Hey, dude. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, but Alex Jones on the recent podcast about January sixth um, was insane. I mean, I actually, it was just Alex Jones, right? It, it, it wasn't. It wasn't like out of the ordinary. It was. It was his usual. You know. It was the usual Alex Jones stuff. I'm not gonna lie, Alex Jones. Alex Jones made that entire conversation just so much worse. Well, so much worse in terms of like how productive it was. He basically prevented it from being productive. I mean, it was funny, obviously, when he, you know he's just fucking going crazy. But it's not. It's like, well, whatever. Um, wait, what? What? What did they win the prize for, Nike? Actually, no, I didn't know that. And also, what? What? What was it? That's big. Recognize him. Ah, yes. Welcome to the squad. Welcome to this Dragon's End. <laughs> what What is really interesting, and I, I think this is very important um, with, with this, is that uh, it's very interesting to see how different people are when they're talking to each other versus talking to their audience. Right? I, I think that's really good. I think... 
Having two people in conversation who don't agree with each other and are actually engaging in good faith, it kind of, it doesn't exactly make people moderate as such, but it, it makes the entire conversation less unhinged. People are like less extreme when they're actually talking to people who disagree with them, which I think is actually pretty good. Yeah. All right, what do we got here? We've got science. We launched the Vesuvius Challenge to solve the ancient problem of the, well, what was this? Uh, Herculaneum Papyri, a library of scrolls that were flash fried by the eruption of Mount Vesuvius in 79 AD. Today we're overjoyed to announce that our crazy project succeeded. After 2000 years, we can finally read the scrolls. Yo, that's actually crazy. Holy shit. Wait, how do they do this? Wait, oh, wow. How on earth do they do that? So they were able to, like, um, reconstruct this, even though it had been, like, completely obliterated by, um, by fire. And the lava and stuff. That's pretty cool. I wonder what, um, I'm very interested, like, what kind Wait, of technology they did to accomplish that. But are you saying they unburned things? Wait, what are you talking about? Well, yeah, it looks like, um... The there were the uh, there was these this library of scrolls that was like obliterated by the Vesuvius eruption and looks like they've kind of been able to reconstruct them in some way. Wow, that is incredible. Yeah, that is. Incredible. I'm looking at this now. Yeah. Jeez. Oh, they were just sealed shut, so they couldn't open them without destroying them. But they were they were able to. They were able to figure out a way to do that without destroying them. Well, I mean, that's still pretty cool. Do you ever just look at this stuff and go like, man, I had a hard time getting my jar of honey open this morning and mm. these guys put together an ancient scroll. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, you know, I think they're, um, if you ever want to feel better about yourself, guys, or, or you want to, if you're ever feeling that like the world is doomed and it's over and, you know, the world's going to shit, to be honest, just look up scientific developments. It always makes me, you know, I, I, I think it's honestly just marveling at what can be done with technology, I think is incredible. Um, definitely with stuff like uh, medicine. I think it's awesome. Like, uh, like how much better we are at making people better these days. It makes me, you know, it makes me feel a little warm and fuzzy inside, guys. I don't know. Maybe that's cope, but I, I always uh, enjoy watching technological advancements that benefit humans worldwide. It's very nice. Or a variety of good things that people are doing to improve society. Feels good. Um, just watch the plot. Do you want to feel better about your uh, own intelligence? I mean... Eh. Flat Earth. It's an interesting meme. <laughs> it's a good one. It's a good one. Are we blasting? We're always blasting. Flat Earth is a little bit scary to me. Same thing as anti-vax. That, that just makes me fucking depressed. Like, uh, I don't know. It's, uh, I, I don't want to, I don't want to fucking see that. I just pretend it doesn't exist. <laughs> I'm joking, obviously. Moon landing deniers? I mean, isn't that, I, I feel like moon landing denial is like really bundled in with Flat Earth stuff, to be honest. A lot of the time, anyway. That's... Oh, yeah, why are we yeah. playing Stormgate? Is, I think I think it is. Is Stormgate yeah. out? Uh, Yo, there's a beta. Is, is there's Stormgate? A, the beta is yeah. There's like an open beta. I think if you um if you pre-ordered or why something. Why are we not cannon rushing? Well, I think you had to pre-order to get in, and I didn't pre-order. Oh yeah, I won't it's, do it's that. It's something like that. Yeah. yeah. No. I I I basically just don't like pre-ordering games anymore. I I do it with like Guild Wars Two because I've just played this forever, but I don't trust anymore. You know, I think pre-ordering is generally gotten kind of bad yeah pre-ordering scuffed is fucking cursed that's how it is yes holy crap okay i'm a, i'm defending stone mist castle right now and there are a billion ferguson crossing people there are many nameplates they cannot be stopped Oh, they found me. I can't wait for my AI waifus. Honestly, 
You know what the, the, you know, the fuck thing about AI, guys, is that AI will take over, and then instead of learning how to draw hands, it will just make us all have seven fingers, and then we're, then it's really over. It will, uh, remake us in its image. Dude, our commander, we had, like, a commander, and... We were obviously getting absolutely annihilated right now, and he just said, Okay, I'm done, and then left. <laughs> oh, man. The next fractal is with the final update of the uh, expansion. So it's in a little while. Uh, and Optimus and so we're one perfect body we clone everyone from. And I think this in general is actually just a really weird thing to think about, right? Because we already basically um, screen babies before they're born for some genetic conditions. I think there's like, there, there's a way that can end up really fucking weird, if you ask me. Like, I, I could imagine a universe where like, oh yeah, do you, do you want your baby to have blue eyes, for example? Like, uh, you know, or, or, or like, it's some really weird stuff. I, like the, I feel like there's some potential for unhinged kind of dystopian, scary shit happening, to be honest. Uh, yeah. That's nice, no? Well, I just, I just think it's just gonna be weird that- I mean, I don't know, maybe it will work out, but also maybe everyone just looks the same. Isn't that- wouldn't that be weird? If everyone, like, picks the same characteristics for, for their kids? Isn't that kind of weird, no? <laughs> like, a bit weird. everyone just ends up looking the exact same- everyone's got, like, the same- face, basically, like, the same eyes, the same hair. Like, isn't that weird? Uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe you guys don't think so. Maybe you guys think that isn't weird. I don't know. I feel like that's pretty weird. Like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, but yeah. Fo oh, I'm good. Funny enough, it is a little bit like Guild Wars 2, oh. isn't it? Because everyone fucking plays goddamn human female meta, right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Everyone plays. Oh, oink, oink. Body oh, oink. <laughs> Lilla's pay pigs the stream. Okay, with uh, the 10 gifted subs. I appreciate that. Honestly, like, you know, fat little pay pig has lost the competition to Lilla's. Wait, what the fuck is this shit, Nike? What, what, what am I reading here? Like, how do you even find this stuff? Like, <laughs> what is this? <laughs> yeah. Wish list. Exactly. It is Yo, you only have You only have the wish list. Yeah. Dude, you only have to wish list Stormgate to get in. You don't have oh, to shit. actually like, oh. pre order. Oh, never mind. Well, never they mind. Oh, they I, are I so consumer friendly. That's I big. Like that. I'm going to actually download that now, actually. Let's get in. That's exciting. Yeah. Wait, how long is this beta? Because I'd love to play it this weekend, but. Um, it's probably for a pretty long I think it was. I think it opened recently, so I imagine it's for a while. Oh, dude, I didn't do the subgroups. Guys, just move yourself. No problem. It's all good. Just move yourself, guys. I got kicked out of Shroud and I'm still on staff. It's completely fucking over. I give up. It is over. Yo. Pompa. You know, I took a bunch of philosophy classes when I was in university, and they were some of my favorite classes because they just made you think very deeply. I often think about this one topic that I had to write an essay on, and it was, can you ever prove if you're not just in a dream? We watched, we watched, we watched Inception, and then we had to write about that. And sometimes I think about that still, and I'm like, mm. I don't think you can. No, you definitely can't. <laughs> I think uh, that... What I mean, if this is all a dream? Well, I, I think, you know, the other really weird one is like, how, how, do you, how do you know you're not the only consciousness that exists? Oh, yeah, that's a scary one. That, that's, yeah. sol that's the, you know, the, the question of hard solipsism. Like, how do you know that? The answer is you don't. You just assume that. Uh, it, there's a, there, and it, you know, when you start picking away at stuff like that, it's, it is a little bit weird, right? Like, you start realizing there's a lot of things that, ah, well, you know, you just kind of say, fuck it. I'll just assume that. Are you just a brain in a vat? Yeah, there's no way to know. Are you in the matrix right now? There's no way for you to possibly know that. Like, you couldn't possibly measure that in any way. You don't have a sense organ that can detect reality, basically. 
the simulation. Yeah, the simulation, the brain, and the bat, they're all basically the same, right? Like, they're all the, the same question. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck, Nike? <laughs> and yeah, the, 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 and I, th I think the conclude. I don't know. I don't know how most people would read that. I'm actually curious what you would read on it. Like, the way that I would answer that question is it doesn't really matter, right? Because you're having a subject. If we're in a dream or not? It doesn't matter, yeah. It doesn't, it's not important, yeah. You're yeah. having an experience that's real to you, and at the end of the day, that's probably the best you can hope for. Um, Have you the heard the lamp the story? What's the lamp story? Yeah, hold on, I'll find it. All right. All right. <clears throat> I'll, I'll. It's a bit of a read. Uh, am I okay to read it? It's, it's, do it. Read us. Tell us a bedtime story, it's, Snab. It's a good one, though. Okay, hold on. I gotta kill this guy, and then, then I'll be okay. Okay. I mean, I'm in a fight that I'm going to lose almost certainly. Yeah, I'm just gonna run away. I bravely ran away. Mm. Okay, here it is. Let's go. All right. Wow, the font is very small. I gotta mm. fix that. Okay. <laughs> so it's from Reddit. A parallel life awoken by a lamp. Okay. My last semester at a certain college, I was assaulted by a football player for walking where he was trying to drive. Note, he was 325 pounds and I was 120 pounds. Well unconscious on the ground, I lived a different life. I met a wonderful young lady. She made my heart skip and my face red. I pursued her for months and dispatched a few jerk boyfriends before I finally won her over. After two years, we got married and almost immediately she bore a daughter. I had a great job and my wife didn't have to work outside of the house. When my daughter was two, she, my wife, bore me a son. My son was the joy of my life. I would walk into his room every morning before I left for work and dotted on him and my daughter. Doted? Dotted? Doted. Doted. One day while sitting on the couch, I noticed that the perspective of the lamp was odd, like inverted. It was still in 3D, but just wrong. It was a square lamp base, red with gold trim on four legs and a white square shade. I was transfixed. I couldn't look away from it. I stayed up all night staring at it. The next morning I didn't go to work. Something was just not right about the lamp. I stopped eating. I left the couch only to use the bathroom at first. Soon I stopped that too as I wasn't eating or drinking. I stared at the lamp for three days before my wife got really worried. She had someone come and try to talk to me. By this time, my, my cognizance was breaking up and my wife was freaking out. She took the kids to her mother's house just before I had my epiphany. The lamp was not real. The house was not real. My wife, my kids, none of that is real. The last 10 years of my life are not real. The lamp started to grow wider and deeper. It was still inverted dimensions. It took up my entire perspective and all I could see was red. I heard voices, screams, all kinds of weird noises, and I became aware of pain, a lot of pain. The first words I said were, I'm missing teeth, and I opened my eyes. I was laying on my back on the sidewalk, surrounded by people that I didn't know. Lots were freaking out. I was completely confused. At some point, a cop scooped me up, dragged or walked me across the sidewalk and grass, and threw me face down in the back of a cop car. I was still confused. I was taken to the hospital by the cop, seems he didn't want to wait for the ambulance to arrive, and given CT scans. I went through about three years of horrid depression. I was grieving the loss of my wife and children and dealing with the knowledge that they never existed. I was scared that I was going insane and I would cry myself to sleep, hoping I would see her in my dreams. I never have, but sometimes I see my son, usually just a glimpse out of my peripheral vision. He is perpetually five years old and I can never hear what he says. The end. Yeah, pretty <laughs> interesting stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The lamp. Yeah, yeah, it, <laughs> yeah. It, it is a little bit like Vanilla Sky, isn't it? Yeah, that's true. The lamp thing is scary, you guys. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Like, in some sense, I would say stuff like that actually is real. Like, you know, if... I don't know. If, if you woke up tomorrow and you were a, in a totally different version of reality, did what happened happen? I don't know. Like, I feel like in some sense it kind of did. Dude, it's terrifying. Like, if this was all a dream, like if I looked at the lamp and suddenly the lamp like freaked out and I realized that I, that, you know, I just woke up. How do you move on with your life? Mm. You know, like, ah, oh, man, that's scary. If every experience you had was but a dream and you just awoke right now. 
Whoa. It's fucking crazy shit. Yes. Yeah, you can just go get punched again. There's a, <laughs> it actually it reminds me of uh of this. Uh, some people might have seen it. It's a UK show called Life on Mars. It's like a police procedural kind of meme, but a guy has an accident and he 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 wakes up in in 1973, basically, right? He's gone back in time, essentially. Uh, but it's not real, right? Like, it, well, it, it turns out that it kind of is, but that's not important. And basically, at the end, he manages to go back to the future, but he says, fuck this, this sucks. So he jumps off a building to go back. It's a classic TV, classic bit of British television, guys, okay? Life on Mars, ashes to ashes. Very good. High tier. Well. Uh, yeah. I think that was one of the best classes I ever took in university. Philosophy of film. We watched bits and pieces of movies and we had to talk about the, the philosophy within them. Interesting. Mm. Yeah. I can't was remember dream. any of the other films I watched, though. <laughs> Everyone was a dream. He's like, cannot even score a beautiful woman in my dreams. Haha. -ha. Well, I mean, I don't know. Maybe oh. you just haven't got to that part yet. But yeah, you could be in yeah. a nightmare. That's also true. Like, and it's, uh, there's no hope for you. Yeah. You gotta do what I did. You just, I, this is how I met my wife. I was, I had been quite sick for a week or so. Mm. And then my friends wanted Double to dragon. host a party. So I, no, actually, I was just uh, regular sick, but um, yeah, now I've forgotten everything because I can only think of Double Dragon. Anyway, my wife just like walked into my house because she had been invited by some of my roommates and she looked at me and she said, oh, hey, how's it going? And I said, good. And then we fell in love. Nice. <laughs> that was it, really. Yeah. Then, then she sent me memes, like political memes, mm. on uh, Facebook. And I was like, huh, I like that. I think that's funny. And then we went on a walk, and I got a lot of steps in. There was a lot of walking. And then we went on another walk, and then we went on a date. And on the date, she burnt the cookies because she was very nervous, and she accidentally put tinfoil in the microwave, and it started on fire. Hmm. That's when I definitely knew it was true love. <laughs> and this is also how then Snap she... joined the alt right. Yeah, actually, the most important the most important thing in our relationship is she said, "I've never seen the third Lord of the Rings," and I said, "What the fuck?" What? <laughs> yeah. I said, "I said, are you joking?" And she said, "No, I don't." Re okay, I actually don't remember if it was the third or any, but it was one of those. And I looked at her, and I just had, like, absolute disgust. And I, I actually said, I said, we actually can't continue dating unless you watch this movie. True. Yeah. That's based. That is how, so, it, yeah. We all would have reacted the same. We then proceeded to take an entire weekend and marathon all of the movies. And, uh, yeah, she knows they're good. But then she told me that she'd never seen Star Wars. And I was like, what is wrong with you? Oh and so we were then forced to marathon the Star Wars movies. <laughs> yeah. There you have it. Interesting. Uh, Wait, did you play the pop... What is the popcorn game during the movies? Are you aware of the popcorn, popcorn game, game, Snap? I don't know what that is. Nike's still going to the popcorn game. I don't know what that is game. either. I, I do Urban not know if I want fine. that. Okay, Urban Dictionary. <laughs> here we go. I'm doing it. Hang on. Urban Dictionary. The, okay, the popcorn game. What is this? <laughs> I'm looking it up. Wait, <laughs> what is this? Wait, what is this? Mm. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't wait. What, what is what? what the Nobody f actually does that. <laughs> wait, Come who, on. who does this? <laughs> hmm. <laughs> I 
Okay. Nike has so much knowledge about all of these obscure things. Oh. He has the forbidden knowledge. <laughs> Wait, what? What the fuck? Dude, you know, dude, I feel like Fat Little Pay Pig might actually be a Pay Pig. Yeah. He's actually, you know, we've got a live one here. The more you know. Wait, all movie theater popcorn uh, or uh, butter is uh, vegan? Oh, that's interesting, actually. I didn't know that. Although, I'm actually not a popcorn guy. I don't really go for the popcorn, to be honest. Uh, movies. Really? I yeah, love no, movie I, I don't, popcorn. No, I don't go for it. No, I don't, I don't go for it, to be honest. There's a, there's a local movie theater, just like a kind of mom and pop shop kind of movie theater, which are very rare nowadays, anyway. Mm. But they they sell popcorn in these massive bags, and every once in a while they have like a, a deal where you can get this massive bag of popcorn for like ten bucks or something. Mm. And I always go for that. I think that's fun. Mm. And we do movie night as a family. It's good times. Interesting. I believe we're going to defeat Su Wan. I've also got incredibly high into the air. I'm in. Yeah, there's a cinema near where I'm at that was bombed in the war, and then they repaired it. Whoa. That's cool. Yeah. See, we don't really have stuff like that in Canada, right? Because Canada is a fairly, like, new, mm. relatively speaking, new um, civili civilization country. I don't know. Mm. What do you say? Yeah. Like, we don't have a lot of old buildings and architecture and stuff like that. We ha we do in some places, but where I live, the oldest architecture you're going to find is like like the old farms and stuff. Mm. Little shanties. What's the best option for skirmish chests? It kind of depends what you need. Like, um, testimonies are always good because they let you unlock hero points on captures and stuff like that. Uh, you could also turn them into gold, but honestly, they're pretty useless. Um, than that, you can make gold out of badges of honor as well, but it's all a bit convoluted. That's how it is. Nice. I went to a, pu a pub older than Canada. Yeah, the UK is old. The UK is. There's loads of old stuff here. Everything's old here. Old. Most of the buildings that exist where I where I live are much older than me. That is the reality. What is your streaming schedule nowadays? Um, I'm probably going to be streaming about 2 p.m. UK time, and then basically till midnight, like 2 to 3 p.m. until midnight, most days. At this point, that is the plan. It's a big year of grind. I was very displeased, actually, with my lack of streaming last year. I actually looked at my Twitch report. I only streamed 270 times last year. That's a fucking disgrace. Um, so I have to do it a lot more. And I have to make some YouTube videos and stuff. And make some content. And it has to be good. And we're going to play WoW. Uh, it's going to be good. But actually, speaking of which, I am done streaming for the day. I am out of here. It is time nice. for me. I'm raiding Snub. I'm raiding the Goose. Um, good. You're coming in at a good time, people. Yeah. I am defending this tower with my life. I'm going. I want to see Snub leading World vs. World, by the way, guys. Um, if, I need to lead. If Snub should uh, tag up big time, please put XED Tree in the chat. Uh, and also, Snub enable. will eventually. Enable XED Tree, Snub. Do it. You know you want to. And enable Oh Yeah Woo Yeah oh. Baby. But anyway, that's it. I'm out of here. Um, everyone should follow this stream. Everyone should follow Sneb stream as well. Everyone should also subscribe to the stream and Sneb stream as well and give 50 subs and pay pig for me and Sneb as well. <laughs> oink, oink. Uh, maybe one day you'll see the oink? me and Sneb uh, <laughs> podcast where we will 
we will give you our opinions on a variety of things, which will be 100% accurate and never flawed in any way. But anyway, until then, <laughs> I'll see you guys out. I'm, I'm out of here now. I'm fucking done. Enjoy Sneb stream, guys. I'll see you tomorrow, maybe, probably, a little bit. It's going to be great. It's going to be content, as usual. Farewell, my friends. I'm out of here. I'm also leaving because I'm hungry. I'm abandoning Sneb. I've milked him for content. And now I'm just, I'm out. I'm fucking done. Maybe I'll be nice. back, though. I might be back. So, yeah, that's it. Anyway, I'm out. Say to Sneb, guys. He's already here, but you can do it in his chat now. We're going. <laughs> Raid. <laughs>